The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. one. Good afternoon, beautiful people. It is Monday, March 29th, 2021. We have a monster show for you today. Woo! Shout out to Twine for that beat drop here on Sirius XM Channel 82, Mad Dog Sports Radio, Woo! and YouTube.com forward slash The Pat McAfee Show. This is the Monday in which the Elite Eight will begin this evening, which means the Sweet 16 wrapped up this weekend. Saturday saw some games, Sunday saw some games, and I'll tell you what it brought me. Got a good nap in yesterday. Hell hey, yeah. March napness was real yesterday. There was a couple games that were real snooze fest but on saturday what it brought me was a lot of losses mm. okay loyola chicago at damn it. big wig is gone come on not before holding oregon state to under 26 and a half points in the first half which yeah. is a big win yeah. big win so that was my that was how i started the weekend gambling i got this under bet that nobody else knows because the defense for loyola is just so damn impressive i hit for big there then loyola goes on and loses oh no mm-hmm. then big wig doesn't score over his points over under oh no oh. now we're spiraling out of control no worries how can we get back friend of the show stipe miocic is an underdog tonight we will hammer everything we have on him yeah then I fell asleep, woke up the next morning, and I saw the memes all over the internet of our guy, Stipe. He oh. looked incredibly lean. He looked incredibly good. But at the end of the fight against Francis Ngannou, the new champion, he ended up on his back. So lost because lost cause that whole thing. So on Sunday, I said, I'm going to get back. Mm -hmm. I'm going to get back where I get back. I get going there. Gonzaga's a wagon. I should have known that they were going to win by 20 plus. I thought the spread was too much. I'm going to go on the other side. Then the other game, blowout. Then the other one, close. Then the other one, no idea what's going on. (laughs) March Madness has been unpredictable. It has been a bit boring. But tonight, Elite Eight begins, and we're going to find a champion here in Indiana where March Madness is being played. Also, in the NFL news. This weekend, 17 game season is basically confirmed. That'll be uh, voted in this week. We've been talking about this for weeks and I'm not, I'm not just like doing the whole, no, no, no. I'm not doing that whole thing. But as soon as I heard 17 game season, it was going to happen. It kind of got slid into the conversation piece. It was almost like in Washington DC when they pass a bill, it's about something. And then there's like 7,000 pages of shit just getting shoved in behind it. Yep. Some other conversation point stole the show. Maybe it was COVID. Maybe it was a salary cap. Maybe it was something else. And then in that back, there was the 17 game season is coming. Sky judge got a little, there's a 17 game season coming. And we knew that this was possible in the new CBA got signed. We didn't know when it was going to come. Then inevitably with the COVID, uh, you know, ticket and every all those losses go down, they were going to have to add a game. That was kind of like their, you know, their ace in the hole that they had all the time for these media deals. We're going to add another game. Here we go. We got it. Now the players, a lot of players are reacting around the internet saying 17 games. Wait a fucking minute. That sounds like a bunch of bullshit. We knew people were not going to be excited about this in the NFL because if you get to week 17 with, you know, one by 16 games in the regular season, how it is now, you got guys crawling towards the finish. Now, I'm not saying that The playoffs aren't the most important. But when the playoffs, normally a lot of the teams that are there are the teams that have been able to survive health-wise. If you're going to add another game onto the regular season, you're looking at these players, a lot of these players who get hit a lot, a lot of these guys who who get hurt a lot, or not hurt a lot, but in positions to get hurt a lot, they add an extra game. There's no extra bye week. This thing kind of got slid in there. They agreed to it in the new CBA, which I think they were all very concerned about as well, Mm -hmm. how the NFL was able to talk to the NFLPA in this new CBA. And basically, anytime they want to drop this 17th game in there they can drop the 17th game in there so i think the players had a whirlwind of a weekend for us though i think the big conversation should be if you go 10 and 7 you're a shit team yeah. wow yeah. that sounds bad uh-huh <laughs> hey the players hate this okay and i think we are going to be very I, I think interested in seeing 
how many teams make it through the regular season? Are, are there guys resting? Are they changing up what they're going to do during the weeks? Like, this is a big deal. There was a lot of people sending messages to Kamara and other players. Oh, you, you're playing a fucking kids game. Like, get with it. All right, you get to play the game and all this stuff. Uh, you should be playing for love of the game. One more game, you should be happy you get another chance to play. It's like, I understand where you're coming from because when you played in high school, it probably was for love of the game. <laughs> but whenever the NFL decides to stop selling the tickets for profit, uh, jerseys for profit, uh, beer for profit, nachos for profit, instead of just love of the game and maybe just enjoying the show, uh, and whenever the media just gives away, uh, the sh when you don't have to pay for the games, when they're just doing it for love of the game, just for exposure, and when everybody's doing everything for love of the game, then we can have that conversation. But whenever it is a business, which is exactly what it is, that's how you have to view it. I wonder what's gonna happen now with the salary cap though. So. Is every player just going to get um, in pursuant to what they were paid the first 17 weeks, just another check? And then does that check count against the salary cap then? Or are they getting paid what they think the contracts are right now, another week is getting added in, and their salaries are going to drop for how much they are each week? Because then are they going to have to, is the salary cap going to have to be a fluctuating one because each, each player's individual week check is different? I don't know. Why? See, that's a whole nother bag that yeah. is uh, ben eventually going to get in. Because if guys aren't getting paid more money and their contracts remain the same and another game is getting added, you could see how a lot of guys are like, hey, NFLPA, what the fuck did Whoa. we agree yeah. to? Whoa. So this will all kind of get figured out this week. There's some news there. Uh, obviously, March Madness, there's some news there. Uh, a dude took over the internet yesterday after hitting a game-winning field goal. Mm -hmm. We'll talk to him in about 17 minutes. Yeah. Uh, Nestor... Manuel Iguera, the Ooh, Arizona wow. Christian University yeah, kicker. Yeah, yeah. He'll join us cool. in about 17 minutes. 5'5", 285, pounds the football through the uprights whenever he has to. Mm -hmm. Cannot wait to chat with him. I think you'll enjoy that conversation. We recorded it a little bit earlier because he is a student human athlete out there at Arizona Christian. There's some more Russell Wilson stuff popping mm. off. There's some fallout from the trades on Friday. I mean, Monday morning quarterback with Albert Breer had a bunch of shit in it involving the New England Patriots, the San Francisco 49ers at Boston Connor. I feel like Monday morning quarterback has become your go-to read every single Monday morning. A lot of information coming out about the Patriots there. Oh yeah, I enjoy the Monday morning quarterback. Albert Breer does a fantastic job. Uh, there has been a lot of Jimmy G to New England talks, but because the 24.5 million dollar cap it or whatever that's not going to happen unless he gets released and because the 49ers have just been saying hey we're using jimmy g we're going with him for that red shirt you know rookie quarterback to come and learn the offense i just don't think it's going to happen so i think that is the biggest takeaway from the monday morning quarterback what you said there at the end so this interview with albert breer and whoever the fuck it was with mm -hmm. nobody has a clue who it is like maybe shanahan maybe lynch maybe somebody else in the niners organization on friday when they traded up to number three overall, giving up a bunch of things to the Dolphins, it made us automatically assume two things. You're not trading up that high to, do, to draft anybody other than a quarterback. Yeah. You're not going up to number three because you're, you're worried a tight end isn't going to be there. Yeah. You're, you're going up there to get a quarterback. So then everybody was like, okay, so that must mean Jimmy G is on the market. And then in the same hour that they traded up to number three uh, and made it very apparent they're going to go get a quarterback, Steve Weich from the NFL Network talked to John Lynch, and John Lynch said, no, no, no. Jimmy G is still very much a part of our plans. And then other GMs are being told that they are not trading Jimmy G, which everybody said that means right now, that's for the moment. But I guess it's a real thing. I guess the overwhelming consensus now is that the San Francisco 49ers will keep Jimmy G on the roster. He will be uh, a mentor uh, quarterback mm -hmm. for whoever they're drafting at three. And everybody says, look back to when Jimmy G was traded over from New England to San Francisco. They had him learn Shanahan's offense and be on the bench for five weeks. And then when he came in, he went undefeated for them. I guess Shanahan firmly believes in, like, let's not put somebody into a situation they're not exactly ready for yet, especially with this offense. So now that makes you think, okay, is he going to go with Justin Fields, Trey Lance? Is it? 
it Mac Jones? Who is it that's going to go in there, sit behind Jimmy G for an extended amount of time, and then ultimately get their shot as Jimmy G is released from the Niners after this upcoming season because his 2022 contract is one that the Niners owe him nothing, and it is very big. So that's everybody's thoughts on what the situation is. What quarterback will they bring in there? Will Jimmy G be on the roster whenever the season comes around, or is this all bullshit? Or will Jimmy G know that going into the season that his job is to get somebody else better, which is always a fascinating thing because it's your money. You know what I mean? Yeah. That's also on the line if you're Jimmy G. At Ty Schmidt, fascinating NFL storylines as we ramp up to the draft here. Do you think that it's possible, too, that he's almost got, like, house money? Because a lot of people are saying that the 49ers are, again, one of the dark horses. They're not going to be injured. Like, they, they could really make a push to go back to the Super Bowl here. If he does get just one more opportunity to kind of show what he can do, if they get a quarterback, then it's kind of just like a year. Uh, it's almost like a prove-it year. I guess in that Monday morning quarterback, I, I think it was Shanahan. I'm not sure who he was talking to in the quotes that I read, the excerpts that I read. But basically, the Niners understand that their team is a Super Bowl-ready team. Yeah. So if we were to trade Jimmy G out for a guy that we've only seen on tape, that would be very uh, like disrespectful to the rest of the team or whatever. It's interesting because last year, the Niners, one year after losing in the Super Bowl to the Chiefs or whatever, their team got COVID, mm -hmm. their team got hurt, mm -hmm. their team got kicked out of their stadium. Yeah. <laughs> okay? Jeez. That's pretty tough. <laughs> mm -hmm. That is a pretty tough series of events, all the while going through all the other COVID protocols that everybody else is going through. I think Shanahan and Lynch know that their team is very, very good. I guess in that article as well, it was mentioned that the next draft class of quarterbacks is bleak in comparison to this group. So if we were going to get a quarterback when we eventually need it, which is next year, when Jim Jimmy G's contract is ridiculous, and maybe it's time for us to move on. The quarterback for that, the quarterbacks in that class aren't as good as the quarterbacks in this class. So there's a lot of fascinating shit going on. And I think the way it stands right now, Monday, March 29th, 2021, Jimmy G is going to be a mentor to a quarterback until what? Until Jimmy G has an overthrow? Like, <laughs> yep. what, 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 Just when about. is it? Get up. When is it? Until the guy understands what he has. In the backup role, like what? When do they decide who goes in, who doesn't? I assume they'll just be able to fucking deal with it. I guess. Yeah, and they said in that article too. No matter what, he, there's no chance he's on the team next year because, like the Colts, they got to pay Warner, they got to pay Bosa, they got to pay Debo Samuel. So with that rookie quarterback contract that hope that they'll draft this year, they'll be able to do that next year by letting Jimmy G go. Hey, and remember, if Jimmy G doesn't help out whoever he gets drafted. Every sense of the word, Hates the he's guy. a bad fucking guy. Yep. Yeah. That's what people will say. Mm -hmm. Jimmy G is being a little standoffish with the guy who's inevitably going to take his job and his bag. What an asshole. That is, or he'll be so nice to him. It'll be like, oh, great teammate, great teammate. And then as Jimmy G is being shoved out the door, everybody will oh. be like, Jimmy did it the right way, though. Thank you, Jimmy. Yeah. Jimmy did it. Thank he did, you, he, did, Jimmy. He, he did it the right way, though. You know, it's such a interesting thing for these veteran quarterbacks like yeah man i mean i got hit a bunch of times had to go through a bunch of surgeries but here's the keys to the goddamn car <laughs> so you can take my job that's what people expect out of them and then when they don't do that they're like is he even a good teammate is this uh, somebody that you really want it's like i mean that has to be a fine balance now listen i want to let everybody know that if i was a starting quarterback i'd be completely okay letting whoever know whatever, mm -hmm. okay? Because I would have belief in myself. This happened, I watched Vinatieri with kickers. I think I tried to do the same whenever it was kicking and punting with a, like, hey, you're never gonna be able to beat me. So I just wanna let you know, like, uh, anything you need, my thoughts, anything you need to hear from me, whatever I can do to help you. This is a small fraternity here. Not a lot of guys make it. If I can help you, let's do it. But I had the confidence like, okay, this person isn't going to be able to be. You hear that there's sometimes where guys are a little bit older and they see that the franchise is trying to get younger and cheaper yeah. at their position. They get a little bit jaded. They might be great guys, very confident guys, but they're still like, I don't want to fucking, yeah. I don't want to be forced out. Like yeah. this, It's a very, it's a fascinating thing. And that's where it goes back to love of the game mm -hmm. or business. Oh yeah. Because if it's love of the game, just let Jimmy G stay on the team forever then.
you know, yeah. pay him forever. Yeah, that's right. You know, he loves the game, but it's not that way. It's a business, so everything has to be treated as That's such. why it's also interesting, too, because I feel like in his case, like, he, he probably feels like, well, you guys have never given me a fair shake to begin with. You know, I, every t- I, I go to the Super Bowl, and then all I hear about is how you're trying to get rid of me, and now, you know, like, we have a team that's ready to go back there, and you want me to just get another guy ready? Like, fuck that. I don't want to do that. Well, how about this? You go out there, one overthrow. Now, pretty big overthrow. Pretty big. Big game. Now, allegedly... They, yeah, in the, in the Super Bowl. Yeah. And he hits that. How about if there's no push off, though? George Kittle, first half. Yeah. yeah. They probably score there. Much different story as well. So, I mean, Jimmy's little life as a 49er quarterback has been quite a roller coaster. Pretty tough. But the, the thought of them going out and winning this upcoming year, you know, like a Fitz Magic situation. Mm-hmm. Fitz Magic comes out for the Dolphins, he starts winning. Then they're like, well, we made the decision now two is coming in. And everybody's like, whoa, 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 whoa. What if Jimmy G has that Fitz Magic thing where he's like, yeah, I'm bummed. Like, I thought this was my team. I thought mm-hmm. we had a chance. Obviously, go the other way. I'll do it. Then they start putting Jimmy G in, like, in fourth quarters like they were doing with Fitz Magic. Ooh. Like, it, it's, it's – sometimes these situations work. Sometimes they don't. And when they don't work, it seems as when the starter says, fuck you, I'm going. Like Aaron, basically, with Jordan Love. Like, mm-hmm. all right. Uh, now, listen, it's not – it's not what happens. It's how you react. I'm going to go do this. But Aaron left zero conversation piece for Jordan Love to ever come into the game. There right. was never yeah. even a conversation that Jordan Love – now, granted, he wasn't even dressing for most games, but that ever happened. With other situations, with the two and Ryan Fitz magic situation, it was like no matter what Fitz does, it feels like they're going to put two in. In hindsight, that's mm-hmm. what – so will it be like that with the Niners? Will it be like, hey, no matter what – Jimmy G does, they're going to put somebody in? Or is it like, hey, if Jimmy G does his thing, this could be like the Jordan Love situation? It, it, it's got to be the other way, right? like Tua, because if you invest that much in a third pick, like you can't have that guy not dress a, a large... Packers traded up into the one. They, they did, they did, but like they didn't give 20, up. 26 yeah. compared to three, you know, yeah. like they're expecting that guy to play fairly soon, you would think. Yeah, they still traded into the first round, though. Like that, it, not granted, number three overall pick is a very valuable piece, especially in poker chips, and you can move out of there again if they really wanted to, but it's worth a lot. But let's not put it past the fact the Packers did have no over mm-hmm. first round pick, and they said we need to get up there to get another. Oh yeah, pick I mean absolute Jordan. buffoonery. This guy no will not be that. at thirty three or wherever we are yeah, waiting. Need at. him. Need him now. We need to do that. But the three overall, you're one hundred percent right. Well, and what happens with Jimmy G if you know whatever guy they do draft comes in and just shits the bed? Like Jimmy G's probably already like, hey, you're trying to push me out now. You want me back? I mean, I'm kind of done with you guys. It, it feels point. like they potentially won a. Now Jimmy G got paid, right? Oh yeah. Oh. Oh, yeah. Jimmy G got paid. But they they alluded to the fact that they need to pay a bunch of people. So yeah. it feels like they're going to try to get young at quarterback at some point, strictly finance-wise. Now, not for the love of the game, but because the business side of the things, they're going to try to get younger or whatever. It's just, what if Jimmy comes out and fucking just lights it up? Yeah. Kind of awesome. Dices. Well, yeah. What are they going to do? Possible, by the way. Mm-hmm. Oh, yeah. It's also very possible that Jimmy G does not. And I think that's what Shanahan's thinking. There's a chance this guy, you know, there's a chance this guy. It's very very fascinating stuff, though. Um, I think we could go to that interview now, right? Yeah, we should do this. Oh, yeah. Ladies and gentlemen, we got a chance to chat with a guy who captivated minds all around the world yesterday. In the middle of naps while watching March Napness in the first couple games, you went onto your phone and you saw a kicker that had just hit a game-winning ball. Ladies and gentlemen, joining us now, the Arizona Christian University kicker, Manny. Eagle! I assume it was pretty fantastic. I mean, obviously, you kick field goals in a beautiful fashion. Your record st- speaks for itself. The kid barely ever misses, if ever misses. Yesterday for the championship, 46 yarder. How did you feel going into it? Uh, at first, I just got to give glory to God. Without him, uh, this nothing would have happened. So, I mean, Respect. just going to the kick was like, just like any other kick, uh, clear mindset, just being focused, just being ready for the snap and hold, and just do just doing my job. It's a repetition that I've always been doing, and just I'm happy that 
uh, uh, it was on my side this time. Yeah, hey, it's always good whenever it goes through or whatever, you know, and the celebration obviously was epic. Congrats on all of that. Did you play Thank soccer? You. Did you play soccer? Yes. And the, how'd you transition yes. into kicking footballs? Yeah, no, so I started uh, I started playing soccer, so that was like my first sport. So since I was, I can remember, I've been playing soccer. And then all the way going up to high school, I've been playing soccer. I only did one year of uh, football in high school. That was my senior year. Um, our high school um, needed, a kick, uh, needed a kicker. Then I just went just to try out to see, let's see what could happen. And then I got the spot, and just from then it just it was a spiral moment, and then it just kept on going. Okay, so what position did you play in soccer? So I played goalie and midfield. Hey, you always have you always uh, you always had the LPA, huh? <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you always had it. Yeah. Hey, you're a big yeah. body. Hey, you're a big body now. That was a big thing. And do you think, have you always been that way? And do you think that helps? Yes. Let me tell you, let me tell you, because my weight, all right, whenever I was bigger, uh, like 255, 260, I always felt like just like the um, the uh, designated hitters. Like you mm -hmm, never yeah. see any very small designated hitters. You don't see little now, granted, uh, Ichiro can hit, I guess, oh, just yeah. wherever That's he wants. Right. You don't see a lot of small hitters, though. So for me, I always thought like, okay, I'm going to get a little bit bigger here. It was kind of my thing. For you, when everybody went directly to the Arizona Christian University uh, Athletics uh, I think 5'5", 285, everybody was like, this is our fucking hero. This, yeah, guy. Yeah, this yeah. guy is our hero. But have you always been a big body, and do you believe that that helps you? Yes, I mean, I've always been a big body. Um, I think it does help me a little bit, but also um, it could hurt me a little bit just with my leg section and all that. But I just learned throughout the time that I can to like overcome that and just uh, stay – like true to myself and like just le uh, learn how to kick a ball being this big. I watched I watched a lot of your videos of you kicking both at Dallas Cowboys Stadium. I watched you at Sendeja's house over there. I, I've watched I watched a lot of you kicking. I love the way the ball pops off of your foot. I would not change anything if I were you, LPA. Oh yeah. So uh, when I first started kicking, uh, I went to the Arizona Cardinals kicking camp with uh, Luis Sendejas, and then. That was like my first ever camp going. I've been poly kicking maybe for three months or so. Then I made it. And then I finished that camp in the top three. So and then afterwards, Luis came uh, came up to uh, me and my family, just telling me that how long have I been kicking for? Where have I been? Because they haven't seen like me kick or anything. I was like, no, I just been kicking three months. And then when I went, then he sent me a person uh, invitation to his house to kick. And then. First thing he told me is like, I'm not going to change your form. You have uh, natural technique and everything. I'm just going to tweak some stuff. And that's what he did. And I've just been rolling with it. I see you have three years left of eligibility. I think it says on your Twitter bio. Uh, yeah. La yesterday. Hey, yesterday, there was fan bases, you know, from all over the league. So, oh, hey, yeah. let's uh -huh. get this guy in here. The Jets, I believe I saw. Ooh. I saw some people said, uh, we got some kicking problems solved down here at the Jets. Suckup just signed at the Buccaneers, but I believe there are some Buccaneers fans that were like, mm -hmm. get Suckup ah, <laughs> get LPA in. <laughs> it feels like we got some motivation going here, Manuel. Yeah, I mean, that just that just part of the end goal, but it's just uh, to get in the league one day. But just the process, the grind, that's what I love. What is it like playing right now in the spring? Do you guys normally play in the spring? No, probably normally. No, no, we play in the fall. So it's been a whole year around football. So we've been going at this for eight months. So we just been starting since the fall. I mean, it's it's a different experience. It's an exciting experience because it's a full year around football. Doing something I love to do is it's always great. But yeah, it just it's crazy. Hey, the team's good though, huh? I mean, you guys got a good squad out there. Yeah, we just been we just been clicking at every cylinder. It just been. Uh, just been going and then like I said glory to God has been he's been in our side and he's just been helping us uh, win games and just uh, keep our character and everything Connor yeah Emmanuel I saw you on the sideline with the pit vipers I mean the swagger was unbelievable is that every day or do you just break those out for uh, game days it's a, uh, it's a little bit of both I just whenever it's sunny out or whenever I feel like wearing the pit vipers but it's mainly a, a game day thing Look at Ooh. you, dude. Oh. Hey, first Ooh. one off the bus, I hope. I hope you are the first yeah. one off the bus to lead the way. Sometimes, sometimes. <laughs> That's smart move. Zito, what do you got? Uh, do we have a record on longest field goal for you? Uh, I've hit a few 60s before. Wow. Come on. Ooh. 
Ooh. Hey, that's a big ball there, 60 yards. That's a big, big ball. Yeah. How old are you right now? I'm 21. Oh, no. and you're wow. at a Christian university. Mm -hmm. And I would assume it, Glory probably didn't celebrate yesterday as how I would have whenever I was 21 years old. <laughs> <laughs> but congratulations. I mean, Go ahead. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, you're about to say something. I mean, go ahead. I mean, we we still celebrated. We still celebrated in the locker room. We still had fun. We still we did our we sang and everything like that. We had fun. It just yeah, but it just it just and then that's like my first conference ring too. So it just be like that little extra it just felt amazing. Is the season over now? No. So we have one more conference game and then we have playoffs. So April 10th is our last conference game and then April 17th is playoffs. So we're uh, we have a. A spot in the playoffs right now. Oh, so you're gonna get another opportunity. You're gonna get another chance to do that again. Oh yeah, that's my sec. Uh, the funny part is that's my second uh, game winner. I hit a game winner in the fall in OT. And this wow. is the second one I Keep them going. Yeah. Yeah. Everybody that was tweeting about you, those teammates, are like the dude's got ice cold blood <laughs> running through his veins because you know in those big moments it doesn't matter what level you're at doesn't matter oh, if, yeah. you, if you're in the nfl doesn't matter if you're an arizona christian whenever you work your ass off with your team and you get to a moment and there's a 46 yarder sitting there even if it's for sprints after practice there's a moment where you have to execute the fact you're able to do that is massive that's a massive thing what do you have ty man well we've seen the kicking talent now obviously uh but because of this like have you went to your coaches and maybe pitched like hey let's get a couple uh fakes in the playbook for oh, me yeah. to maybe yeah. throw a tutter or rush yeah. one up the gut yeah a couple runs i mean we have we have a few fakes but i'm just not involved whoa what's that about, about? Just, what's that all about I mean, the, the coaches uh they they just, they just worry about that if i get injured or something like that Smart. like because because i'm like an asset in a way um so they yes they rather save me and not hurt me for a trick play and then whenever a kicks, they rather have that kick for me. Yeah, well, let them know. Like, you're a multifaceted yeah. asset <laughs> yeah, come on, though, at this point. You're an international superstar. <laughs> you got bl ice cold blood running through your veins in big moments. I cannot wait to see them put the ball in your hands, yeah. hopefully for the playoffs. <laughs> Is your brother play on the team as well? Yeah, so he's a freshman. He's a, he's a rusher freshman this year. He's a kicker as well? He's a kicker punter, yeah. Nice. You guys are just holding down there for the year. Hey, we got you for the next 10 years here. <laughs> yeah, something like that. I respect it. Well, tell your parents they did a great job. Uh, tell your coach to give you the rock a little bit more. And from all of us to all of you, congratulations on a Sooner Athletic Championship, pal. Yeah. Awesome. Yeah. Hell yeah. Thank you. Appreciate it. Hey, no problem. LPA, Nestor. Do you go Manny or Manuel? Uh, either one. It's either one. So people just call you like you have like seven hundred names at this point. Huh? <laughs> Manny Fush. <laughs> In a way, yeah. In a way, yeah. Yeah. Well, Manny, can't thank you enough for stopping by. Good luck on the rest of the way here. Thank you. I appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, Nestor, LPA, Manny, Manuel, E. Herrera. Yeah! Yeah! At a boy, yeah! man. We gotta get to a break. <laughs> <laughs> you know, he said uh, he's always been a big body. Mm -hmm. Always been a big body. Oh, yeah. I mean, I watch, you go to his Instagram, there's a lot of videos of him hitting the ball. Ooh. Gotta go pop off that foot. 60 yarder. How you doing? Keep moving. It's no yeah. joke. 21 years old. Still got three years of eligibility somehow. Where's Bama? Yeah. Well, that's also his little brother's coming in behind him. You know what I mean? Yeah, here we go. I mean, what do we got? We got an Iguera factory over there at Arizona Christian University. Big thanks to Manny for his time. Yeah, thank you, man. Congrats, Manny. Uh, we got to get to a break. On the other side, we'll answer some phone calls. one 888 mad 6 We did some research during the break. So the players will receive a bonus on the date of the 17th game if they're on the roster that is equivalent to 1 17th of their salary. So we'll not count towards the salary cap. It'll be structured as a bonus for every player that's on the roster that would be 117th. So no guys are losing money adding the game. So 
That's good news. There we go. Yeah. There we That's go. via Marziano of ESPN yep. via the uh, Behind the Steel Curry. Double Yoy. Double Yoy <laughs> blog. We did some research there, though. Because I thought about, imagine if these guys weren't getting paid more money and they were having more games, same money. That means they're playing for less, actually. Yeah. That would seem like quite a snag. And I was about to say, well, the NFL PA needs to fucking maybe yeah. change everything they're doing over there. Turns out bonus, 117th, makes sense. You're not mm-hmm. making more money. No, no, no. No. You're gonna get paid the same performance rate. Mm-hmm. Okay, we're gonna the same performance rate will come again. It'll be a bonus. We won't have to worry about it with salary cap. Deal, deal. Hey, you go nine and eight. You Ooh, might as well oh. just quit. Dude. Oh, yeah. Max, your team nice. sticks. You blow. Yeah. Oh. Ten and seven does not sound that good. Uh, ten, ten and seven stinks too. You gotta be eleven or six. Yeah. Eleven yeah. and six. Mm-hmm. Yep, that's the new standard. What if? I mean, somebody's going to go 0-17. Oh, uh, yeah. Well, I mean, don't. Foxy's already calling for it. Do we have yeah, to yeah. say somebody? We know. <laughs> Foxy's <laughs> making memes and gifts over the weekend. Yeah. They've already done 0-16. Let's be the first to go 0-17. Uh-huh. So Foxy's... Let's Mo- make some history. Motor City Dan Campbell would suit himself up before they lose 17 games in one season. Hey, yep. I don't like that you guys don't think 10 and seven's good enough because I'm sticking 10 and seven in a playoff Listen, win for my life. We don't know anything at this point. Yeah. We have no idea. All I know is 10 and six sounds a lot better than 10 and seven. I agree. Oh, yeah. I do agree. It's probably gonna be a lot of 10 and seven teams. Oh, yeah. yeah. Man, I kind of hope the Lions go 0 and 16 so we can see Dan Campbell suit up for that 17th <laughs> game uh, now. Yeah, they, they go 0 and eight. What are you talking about? Stri- you think they're going to get to 0-16? Yeah. Not a chance. Before chewing kneecaps is already <laughs> strapping it up. Antoine Randwell's lined up at both quarterback Ooh, yeah. and wide out up there. Deuce oh, Staley in Deuce there. Deuce Staley, you're yeah. out of your mind. You think those guys are going to walk around that building at 0-9? No way. No, no, no chance. Give me your fucking helmet. Give me a physical. <laughs> Give me a physical. Can my heart work? Yep. <laughs> All right, phone calls on the other side. This is the Pat McAfee Show, Monday, March 29th, 2021. A lot going on in the world. Cannot wait to hear from you. One at eight, Mad Dog 6. We'll see you in four minutes. I just saw a picture of you getting out of, I think, a 757 that is from Jim Ursay. What was that, and have you ever been in that plane before? I I thought it was like the team plane to fly all of the Indianapolis Colts. (laughs) I uh, Literally, I mean, it's got the logo on it, uh, Pat, and uh, it was awesome. But uh, look, that's just Jim. Pat, I had a wonderful 14 years there. It, I, it's obviously the team that I wanted to play for always. I, I understood the, the, the decision he had to make and no hard feelings. And uh, for him to send his plane to fly me and my son down here, uh, it, it was a great, great gesture. A lot of room for me and Marshall. We were throwing the football. <laughs> so, pretty, uh, pretty, uh, Pretty cool experience. Pretty cool father-son weekend. By the way, as he's moving from event to event right now, <laughs> you are the best, dude. Where are you headed right now? I'm going to the game. I'm going to the game. I got Lynch. I got Fanica. I got these guys in the background. Boys, so, uh, how you? Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations, boys. All right, Peyton. Oh, hey, there he is. Marshall, I hope you enjoyed that plane, pal. Hey, Peyton, <laughs> last thing here. Um, you talking to Tom Brady, you becoming friends with him. I, it was interesting to watch. Oh, yeah, take the photo. Take the photo. <laughs> <laughs> All right, we will wrap this up. Well, I'll tell you, Pat, um, I don't think anybody can do what, what Tom has done. Look, I know how hard it was for me to get on the same page with my receivers, learn a new system, learn new coaches. But I had a full off season. I was injured. I was rehabbing. The fact that Tom has done this in a COVID pandemic offseason no time to meet with his receivers he met with his coaches illegally by breaking into byron levis house <laughs> uh, so besides that uh it's been incredible what he's been able to accomplish and uh he deserves all the credit his leadership is, is what put the bucks in this game today and uh i have great respect for him because i know how hard it is but uh, he deserves all the credit hey how did you know red 18 was coming Pat, I mean, I can't tell you how much I appreciate you telling that story and and just growing the legend. That was about the 18th time I tried it. I was 17 going into that. And, you know, when it doesn't hit, you just keep walking. Nobody ever really tells you about it. So when it hit, I was as surprised as you were. And uh, the reaction from, from some of the 
some of the good old folks there in the casino that night was uh, pretty special. Well, I appreciate you doing that. You made me and those folks in the casino a bunch of money. Congrats on the Hall of Fame nod. Thank you for spending time. Enjoy yourself at the game, Peyton. Pat, thanks, pal. I appreciate you. The, sh you. the Sheriff Hall of Famer, Peyton May. Hey! Hey, listen, tonight, you in the red, you in the blue. I hate you both, and fuck you too. Before I leave here, I'm knocking all you out. Cheers. Oh, let's go. Let's go. Fuck you, fuck you, fuck you, fuck you. You too, fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Fuck you. Bang, and I'm out. Get me out. This is the Pat McAfee Show on Sirius XM Mad Dog Sports Radio. We thank you for taking the time to seek out this small regional show that streams internationally. Here's Pat and the boys. NFL draft season is upon us, isn't yeah. it? Yeah. Oh, yeah. It's possible that you might have Trevor Lawrence's haircut in your pants. <laughs> <laughs> it's true. <laughs> Nice flow. That's why our partners at Manscaped, the leaders in below-the-waist grooming, have partnered with us to make sure you don't gamble on shaving your balls the same way you like to gamble on football or March Madness. All right, <laughs> I like that. For all you draft geeks out there, there's an exclusive 20% off promo code by going to manscaped.com forward slash pat. Will your favorite team go defensive back in the first round? Not sure, but I am sure that with the lawnmower 3.0, you can get your D back, dude. Hey, ah, nice. <laughs> Because of their ceramic blade and skin safe technology, your nicks and snags will be reduced. This is the perfect protection needed for your franchise quarter balls. Okay. <laughs> I want you to look in the mirror. Do you see any nose or ear hairs dangling? 79% of partners polled admitted that long nose hair is a major turnoff. The Weed Whacker nose and ear hair trimmer is your solution. Why not use the best tool for the job? Their performance package comes with new and improved Lawnmower 3.0, the Weed Whacker nose and ear hair trimmer, performance boxer briefs, and a travel bag for you to use when we're done quarantining, and some other liquid formulations like the Crop Preserver and Crop Reviver. Love it all. Ooh. It's a lot. It is. That's quite a bundle. It is. They truly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Your bang for your buck. And for a limited time only, subscribers get not one but two free gifts the Whoa. Shed Travel Bag, which is a $39 value, and the patented high performance anti chafing Manscaped Boxer Briefs. Get 20% off and free shipping by going to manscaped.com forward slash pat. 20% off free shipping, manscaped.com forward slash pat. Uh, M A N S C A P E D dot com forward slash P A T. It's time you turn that team in your pants around with Manscaped. I like that. Here we go. That's what I'm talking about. Shout out to Manscaped, dude. Shout out. A couple Shout out. really good lines in there. Mm -hmm. Talking about the draft, Trevor Lawrence, Steiner in your pants, potentially with the hair flow. Mm -hmm. And they do have proprietary technology that whenever you shave, you can go willy-nilly around your willy-nilly, and it will somehow not nick or snag your willy-nilly. That's right. It's Thank unbelievable. It Thank makes God. no sense how it works, to be honest with, with a you. hemi. On top. Of yeah, 9,000 RPM something they got going on down there. Mm -hmm. Woo. I, I understand that there's a lot of technology that has been created during our existence. Mm -hmm. Internet. Okay. Yeah, of course. Okay, that didn't exist at one point. Microwaves. Microwaves also didn't exist at one point. They've really changed the game. The forming grew. I mean, if we're going to go down the whole thing oh, there, air fryers, we're right. talking cool. about life-changing, life-altering things. Mm -hmm. Not microwave definitely is, you know. Don't, I don't want you to think that I didn't oh, think yeah, that was no, the case. No, right. Air fryers, by the way, yeah. Of How, does that, How does that work? Absolutely, don't game changer. The Air. the ability to manscape yourself mm -hmm. without the looming fear of potential catastrophe is something you never could have imagined. 
Manscaped has accomplished it. Yeah. You really can't put a price on it. Nope. No. Just sitting there right over your shoulder while you're mm-hmm. looking down there trying to pr- uh, perform surgery. Yeah. <laughs> like, oh my God, what's going to happen? Is this thing going to turn into an entire yeah. blood show? Mm-hmm. No. No. Go ahead and do that uh, all willy Do whatever you want. You can do it with your eyes closed. Mm-hmm. Welcome back to the show. <laughs> it also has a light that's stronger than a lighthouse. Oh, yeah. They do yeah. have a light. Mm-hmm. And the, the thing where it sits, like on your, uh, yeah, on your sink, pod. you look so cool. Yeah. It has yeah. a little light on it. Mm-hmm. Whoa, what's that? Whoa, 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 whoa. Oh, that's actually what I shaved my uh, dick and balls with. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> I used to pull uh, nose hairs out of my hand. Now I don't have to. Oh, there's wow. a weed whacker they got yeah. over there. <laughs> you want to try Makes no sense. There's a lot of videos of people uh, shoving wax up our nose. Uh, mm-hmm. And then people doing the whole oh, thing. Yeah. Yeah. No thanks. Don't need it. Just Not put the weed wax. Yeah. And it's over. Same technology as on the ball, so it does not nick or snag. Don't have to worry about it. It makes no sense. Mm-mm. Just like the internet still makes no sense to me. Yeah. It's just bouncing around right now. Yeah. Crazy. Sometimes she just drops out of nowhere. Mm-hmm. Going up Can't and down. Can't get it back. That thing always ready for you to manscape thing. Oh, yeah. Let's get some phone calls. Oh, Trevor Lawrence, not going to the draft. Let's go. Yeah. <laughs> I don't want to sound like somebody that is anti-draft experience because I loved what the draft was down in Nashville. I am a big fan of watching the draft. We'll have a draft spectacular yet again for the first round. But last year, whenever we got a chance to just bounce around, guys were at their home, Zoom calls or whatever, I feel like there's a chance that more of this Trevor Lawrence type stuff happens. I was always very confused that on the biggest day of your life, you've worked your ass off to get to this moment. Huge. Okay. Off-season workouts, now it's like seven-on-sevens, year-round, morning lifts, morning runs, night runs, night lifts, grueling practices, traveling, scheduling. Then you finally get a chance for your dream to come true with everybody you've ever... And they (laughs) ask you to go, like, stand on a stage with a couple agents and then dap up Roger Goodell. I don't know, that just... Whenever I got drafted, pick 222, okay? I thought it was over hours before that when the Cowboys who told me they were going to draft me drafted somebody else and nobody else told me they were going to draft me. So I was like, oh, boy. Thought we had a chance here. Didn't get invited to the Combine. What's plan B? It's a pill. What else? Don't know. Okay, there's a lot going on. But when I got drafted, there was a moment where my dad and I Okay, hugged each other, embraced for like five, ten minutes almost, you know, like crying, like emotional there. Because there was a lot of nights where we're out on a high school football field all by ourselves. Tim McAfee's throwing out his shoulders, getting the ball back. And then when you get drafted, it's like, hey, nowhere near where we want to get to. But this is something that we always dreamed of. And for the first rounder, same exact shit. I know they're getting paid a lot more money and the jewelry is nice and the suits are dope. And at that moment on ESPN is really cool. But for me, I always wondered you know like a little bit conflicted on like real life dream shit just happened okay Mm -hmm. and we're treating it like reality tv almost and then obviously if something bad happens which by the way you've worked your entire life for this moment and then publicly you have to learn that people don't think that highly of you i mean it is just it's quite a roll of the dice i'm very thankful i was not invited to do it but i'm happy that trevor lawrence is saying nah i'm cool i'm not going to do it i'll hang out with my family and friends i'm sure we'll have a camera there i assume they'll negotiate that but those moments and then we went down pugly on those right down the street i mean it was just like uh it was a really cool day those moments are really cool and i'm not saying the draft is not awesome i love the draft and i'm assuming some guys love doing that whole thing but i always was confused on how they got everybody to agree to it basically there was like there's not one person in there that was like i'd rather be drunk with my family or and friends right now you know that's just but i like that trevor lawrence is doing this this is like maybe setting a standard for everybody like hey they can still make a entertaining draft show without you having to be there for potential ridicule or life fall down Mm -hmm. moments you know what i mean they could still come to you shoot you they can make it entertaining have guests on they can do all that shit they don't have to worry about your life crumbling potentially in front of everybody else's eyes which ultimately can it won't happen to trevor would never happen to trevor but i'm just saying that is something that some guys sign up for do you think location and venue matters at all to guys like let's say if it was in vegas Uh, this year barry cleveland no no oh Oh, my god no i just I mean, come on. You know, hey, we like the dog pound. Cleveland's awesome. Oh, yeah. hey, I'm a Midwest guy. I love Cleveland. Bro, Cleveland rocks. Cleveland rocks. Okay, so you're singing. This is like Russell Wilson saying, go Hawks. You believe it. Yeah, I on. love Cleveland. But okay. do you think some of these guys, like if it was in Vegas or Nashville or like New York, they'd be like, eh, maybe I'll consider it. I don't know. Let's do Dubai. 
That'd be crazy. Oh, that'd be good. Yeah, guys will go over there. Let me go. <laughs> 27 hours sure. on the plane real quick. Why not? All right, come on. Well, it definitely has to do, too, with how many people they can bring, right? Because with COVID, they couldn't bring, like, say, Trevor has, you know, a big family. He's got a fiance now, a bunch of friends. He can't bring all those people. I think my favorite draft thing is you never know who's going to show up. I had some neighbors show up that I had not talked. <laughs> yeah. yeah. I had not. Half a plum just randomly showed up. At the room. house. It's like there's a hotline somewhere. Was that, like, hey, just showed up at the Pat house. Pat just got drafted. It, He's at Puglianos. Let's go. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was wild. It was. I mean, there's people that showed up at our house, too, before yeah. we get to play. It was like a pretty cool. Did you guys cater Rudy's? It was a. What's that? Did you guys get some Rudy's over there? Well, Rudy's is across the street. And at that point. I don't know if we got any Rudy's over there. There was a lot of drinking. I had. If there's a camera there. Oh, <laughs> man. The moments that could be captured. Bro, it, was, it, was, it really did feel like most of Plum just showed up there. It was very nice of them to show up. Then the next morning, the classic story goes, Tim McAfee like, woke me up. Everybody in Plum was probably hung over at that point <laughs> and was like, uh, hey, we got to go learn how to punt now. Like, You know what I mean? Like, yeah. You just got drafted. We all celebrated. And you have no fucking idea what you're doing. Like, yeah. Told him you could hold. Hey, we gotta, yeah, we told, you gotta get, we gotta go to work. And then that was also the notorious day where I was told, while I was punting balls, spraying them, I didn't. The NFL punt is just like a two-step kind of like straight. In college, I would catch a ball and I would run to the side. So although it sounds similar, I understand it all is involving kicking a ball. The leg swings are just vastly different. It is a much different. When I was running, if I missed the ball, get on the ground and be able to roll, it was still like a win. Whenever you do the NFL style punt, you have to get a lot more hang time because nobody's allowed to leave the line of scrimmage. You can't really. The reason why you run in college is because it also buys time for your coverage to get downfield. So normally, if you get it there, you can do whatever. In the NFL, you can't do that. You have to fucking bomb balls because only two people are allowed to leave the line of scrimmage before the ball is kicked. So it's a very different different thing and I do enjoy and appreciate the fact that Bill Polian told me on draft day before the Pugliano's party down there and blackout or whatever with the whole city basically down there the whole borough down there uh, I think you're athletic enough to figure it out I'm like yeah Okay, sure. Yeah, sure. So, yeah. But that was in the middle of like a chaotic situation around me while he's telling me that. So it really wasn't until that next morning, you know, when the party stops and the whole town goes back to their homes or their work or whatever. And it's not really like a celebration anymore. It's like more like, a, oh, fuck, we got to do this type thing. This is my job. That now. is quite yeah. a day. You know, that is quite a day whenever balls are just spraying around. And then I was uh, I was actually offered that day to buy the naming rights of the school of Ooh. the field that day. <laughs> <laughs> like, while I'm doing that, it was very nice of them to come out in the middle of that thing. Like, hey, by the way, $30,000, we can put your fucking name on this. That's all it's going to take. Tim McAfee's like, 30 grand, dude. Have you seen this kid punt the ball? <laughs> Sorry, he, he actually already bought an Escalade. So I, an Escalade. I don't think he, he bought an Escalade already, and he can't punt. We, <laughs> we might be in debt, actually, because we made the NFL because we had to buy that. So it's just, you know, there, there's those moments, though, that I think get lost whenever you're – at the draft and doing this whole thing and then you hop on a private plane right to the team and then you do the whole thing like but granted those guys are in a much different world than i was in you know the first rounder so i appreciate those that go and do the whole thing for us to watch but i also am very appreciative of the guys finally saying like you know, I'm going to go do this with my people here a little bit. And plus, you get clips like, uh, was it CD Lamb last year when he grabs the phone from his lady? Oh, yeah. <laughs> That's oh. my phone. <laughs> and then also, what was it? There was a lot of respect. We had a lot of respect for this. They obviously told people there were only allowed a certain amount of people in, in oh, the shot yeah. or whatever. <laughs> so there was a couple of, what, like, kitchens that were just packed. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. And then uh, the, the, the shot would be on the fan. There'd be two of them, like, yeah, you mm -hmm. know. And then all of a sudden, they would keep the camera on for a little bit too long. And there'd be somebody dancing out <laughs> yeah. of the like, no, 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 I'm afraid, I'm afraid. <laughs> Oh, man. It's, then, it's a massive night. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Like, when you get drafted, it is a massive... I don't, I don't know if there's any other moments where me and Tim have had that moment. I, I honestly don't think there's many moments that have... That is a massive, massive day. And if it doesn't work out and goes the other direction, like, whenever the Cowboys drafted the other kicker from USC or whatever. Like, if I had to have been televised during that, that was a bad uh, moment. Oh, my God, that's, that's a bad moment. Let alone these guys that fall in the draft. Oh, maybe it's because, and then they start showing lowlights of the player. He threw 17 picks last yeah, year. Remember, geez. he did do this. It's like your night could not get worse.
oh yeah, good. Let's broadcast it to the entire world. That's how that whole thing works. Well, and that is ultimately why they're inviting those guys, right? Because they want a situation oh, yeah. like Brady Quinn or Rogers, where the guys just sitting around in the green room and Johnny, Johnny, yeah, right? Johnny Manziel, Dewey Haskins Dewey. when he was at his party and he, well, was he pissed off. I, I, I forgot I was going to mention that <laughs> long rant to go. He was charging people in. 50 bucks yes. ahead. It was awesome. <laughs> yeah. Come on down. Yeah. It'll be fun. It was uh, awesome. <laughs> I love it. Hey, listen, get it where you can. Yeah, more yeah. power to him. Yeah. Imagine he was going to be a top 10 pick, right? He, they, everybody thought. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And he's charging people with 50 bucks to get in. Get into Dave and Buster's. <laughs> Extra 50 bucks. <laughs> Hindsight, I mean, kind of a smart move. Yeah, you're right. Because you got to watch. Fine, yeah. Fine, yeah, you're right. He might turn that whole thing around in Pittsburgh. Yeah. What? Right behind Big Ben Roethlisberger. Oh, mm -hmm. And Big Ben Roethlisberger doesn't have that many years left. He knows it. Everybody knows it. Maybe now he'll be like, hey, here's how you run. Here's how you run a ship, by the way. Here's what I do. And just hands the keys right on over yep. to old Dewey Haskin. Just like, just like Drew Brees did to Jameis. Yeah. That's right. This is your team. Yeah. Your city. Your city. You got this. Your records. <laughs> Good luck. <laughs> One for me, two for you, <laughs> three for us, four for them, five for him. Who that? Who that? Who that? Who that said, you're going to be a quarterback? Me. Okay? This is for you. Drew Brees. The NFL is going to miss Drew Brees. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Hey, the NFL is going to miss Drew Brees. He had some moments. That chant, the one, two, the, that mm -hmm. whole thing, when I first heard that in that huddle thing, when I first saw the video, I was like, oh, okay. Boys are buying in, too. Like, yeah. You saw like, everybody mm -hmm. bought in. I love that because there are some of those speeches that I do believe fall upon deaf ears sometimes, and that is a tough go out there. He's still talking. Ooh. Oh, no. Is there a cam Oh, there is a camera. Oh, no. Oh, Jameis, I mean, I think the, he has the most notorious He's one still that eating was, that double. Yeah. <laughs> he did it numerous times last year. They were showing highlights of that mm -hmm. Saints team, uh -huh. and he was coming in eating that double a lot. He was like, listen, everybody mock me. Look at me now. My team. They're in. Let's go to Daniel in Arkansas. Hey, listen, if you're eating dubs, you're having a good time. That's mm -hmm. right. I mean, a little bit. I mean, it's an interesting motivational speech to go with. Mm -hmm. But I don't think I realized how much fun eating dubs was until I saw Jameis doing it all year. Mm -hmm. That is something I would go fight for to have that amount of fun. Yeah. Absolutely. Maybe it is a good fight speech. William Wallace should have added that he one. What do you got, Daniel? Yo, you were talking about eating W's. Guess who's eating W's, baby? Them ball hogs. All right, all week, I didn't hear none of y'all talk about the Razorbacks, baby, yet here we are. Oh, okay. Y'all talked about that, them dumb rednecks from Tuscaloosa. Oh, oh wow. 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 Maryland because the Big Ten sucks. Oh, oh wow. wow. And it's not thanks to A.J. Hawk, and it's not. Oh. It's thanks to that other failed linebacker from Ohio State, whatever his name was, played for the all right, that, was a good call. that was a good call. Hey, by the way, Woo Pig Suey, dude, 7270 over to Oral Bob's, bro. Mm -hmm. yeah. Hey, how you doing? Keep moving. Michigan, by the way, in the Elite Eight. Okay, Big Ten is yeah. still being represented oh, yeah. very yeah. well. But the Pac 12, hey, listen, this Pac 12 now? Jeez. Hey, they know how to play hoops, don't they? Mm -hmm. Wow. They Conference know how to play champions. hoops. Oh, yeah. Nobody was talking about them. Mm -mm. That was a big conversation yesterday on the internet and on TV is the Pac-12 gets no respect. Yeah. Pac-12 gets no respect. I think they're right. That The point guard for UCLA might be my favorite basketball player right now. <laughs> yeah. With, that, with the hair. Uh -huh. Tiger. Like fro slash. He is so smooth, that yeah. guy. It is unbelievable. I bet with the hair, UCLA, he might. He might go in their Hall of Fame. They win this whole thing. He could. Oh, yeah. He is a hell of a player. Put his jersey in the rafters. He is very good. That whole team is very good out of nowhere. Yeah. Now, I slept through most of that Gonzaga game. They, they're just, they're oh. unbelievable, huh? Don't yeah. see anybody uh, beating yeah. them. They're an unbelievable team. Unstoppable force. Right I, I, I saw the Timmy guy. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. I like the move. Oh, yeah. I like the move. It's good. I, but they have, one guy has high socks on. Mm -hmm. Some of them got shorts, mm -hmm. uh, little thigh shorts on. Oh, yeah. Socks. I like I like the way that team vibes over there in Gonzaga. And the coach, every time he talks, he's like, ah, oh, these boys really like each other. Mm -hmm. like, they, they seem to really like each other or whatever. I'm just so thick. Gonzaga is a basketball factory, huh? Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. That's Big kind time. of like the last yeah. 10 years or something, or 20 last years. 20 or so, yeah. Unbelievable. Good but, for them. But they've never been able to, be, the, to win the big one. Yeah. So we'll see because a lot of people are saying the same deal. If there's one team in the tournament that can match up with them, it might be USC. Ooh. Now, I have a question. Is Arkansas, do they have any chance at all? Yeah, I think so. Good ball team. I mean, Baylor 
played arguably their worst game of the year, you know, this weekend and, and still managed still to win. Do. So it's going to be tough, yeah. but they can win. Seems like any more if you make threes. I tried. I tried my best to get into it. And if it wasn't for the massive amount of money that I was just losing, oh, it's tough for me to dial it in. I think I'll watch tonight, though. Like, I think I'll be fascinated going through. Yeah. Hopefully these games are good tonight because you're right. I mean, this weekend, every damn game except for, like, two of them was just a complete blowout oh, well. five minutes in. You know, it's nap time. And I think immediately upon realizing that Big Wig was no longer involved. Sure. You know, first you take Huggy Bear and the West Virginia Mountaineers yeah. out for yeah. me. Mm -hmm. Buddy Beheim, what happened, by the way? Mm -hmm. uh, come on, bub. I bet heavily on old Buddy Beheim. Mm -hmm. Didn't work out, obviously. But then it. you take Big Wig out of there. I'm starting to lose interest. I'll, I'll get it your heart gone. No Oral Bobs either. Oh. Yeah, come on. We do have eight more teams already to make a run. That's right. Uh, hour two's on the other side. It'll be better than this. We'll see you in six. I heard you had six bucks left in your account. Is that accurate? It is. Current balance is... Six dollars. Do me a favor and refresh that. Oh, wow. Oh my gosh. That's crazy, wow. Oh my gosh, thank you so much. Uh, I'm gonna call my mom. <laughs> Let's go, dude! Jaleel, how are you doing on this beautiful day now that you're a new millionaire, Jaleel? Man, it's it's truly a blessing, um, especially um, in the middle of a pandemic. And how did this whole thing kind of unfold here with FanDuel? I woke up Monday morning, got a call. I actually didn't answer because I didn't know the number. So, um, <laughs> fortunately- a Million dollars is calling? <laughs> yeah. Fuck them. Right, right, you know. Hey, this money is not supposed to happen like this, okay? Right, it's just now starting to set in, like, I'm really a millionaire now. Yay! Yeah. 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 How much will go back into betting, you think? Because, by the way, they're giving out another million dollars. Maybe it'll be Jaleel oh. again. Oh. Hey, maybe you go two for Raptor. I'll definitely place a few more bets. You know, I don't know if I win as much. <laughs> it all, but it's truly amazing. Once again, it's, it's amazing. Jaleel, congratulations. Enjoy this. I hope you win the next one, by the way. And if not you, obviously somebody else. Thank you so much, guys. I really do appreciate it. I definitely was not expecting it, man. It's, it's crazy. Vandal, uh, your favorite sports book, yeah? Uh, definitely, definitely. <laughs> yeah, I would assume. What do you do day to day? Are you gonna continue doing that? What do you do day to day? Um, yeah, I, I, I plan on still working. It's gonna be hard not to tell your boss though today, I assume. Oh uh, man. Hey, get over there, Jaleel. Hey, uh, <laughs> hey, how about not? <laughs> how about you get over there now? I think you should go out there. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Julio Harden, congrats! Yeah. Why is football the greatest sport on earth? And do you think football is the greatest sport on earth? And why do you like football? That's a really deep question there, Pat. I know. I think I'd get a good answer out of you, though. Like, I, I think you'd be able to talk about it in a way that I think a lot of people haven't because you've been at the pinnacle of it for so damn long and inside of it, and your brain is a pretty fantastic one. We've learned here over the last few weeks, mm -hmm. obviously. Last few weeks, that's it. That's all the time we've learned that. I think it's the greatest sport in the world for one main reason. It is a true team sport where it is damn near impossible for one person to dominate an entire oh, game. Right. If you look at other team sports, uh, uh, basketball with five guys on the court, I think you've seen multiple players over the years. Uh, maybe one player, or maybe one or two players on a squad be able to dominate and win championships. Baseball, you can have a dominant pitcher uh, and win championships. Soccer, you can have a dominant forward and or goalie. That seems to be a little more of a team sport, but you don't have 11 players engaged at the same time on every play. It is truly uh, uh, a sport reliant on every player on the field to do their job in order to be successful. And I think that's why at times, you know, certain star players can get uh, maybe too much credit and, and maybe too much blame on the flip side because it does take so many players at the same time in three phases to win football games. Uh, and I think that's the beauty and the draw of our sport is that 
something new happens all the time because you are literally dealing with 11 humans on the field at, at one time who all have lives outside of football and there's distractions, there's uh, a reliance on, on coaching, there's a reliance on preparation, there's a reliance on diet and performance. Um, I just think there's so many facets to it that you see something new every single week and I think that's the beauty in our game. Uh, when it comes to the love that I have for it, it's rooted and I think like any uh, any player who's played for a long time, the, the love is not just about our sport, it's about competition. And I think there's nothing in the world for me that fills that need and that hole I have like competition. I think we, you know, if players who play for a long time at a high level, you have that uh, need to be satiated uh, competitively and, and it's a love of going out there and going against guys and being in an environment where you know that uh, nothing is guaranteed. And that's why I, at times I've taken uh, umbrage to people saying that it's easy because it's not easy. It's never easy. And I think that's the beauty in our game is that you see things new every single week. It's never easy. And your only thing you're guaranteed is, is the ability to compete. Uh, I love that aspect of it. I love competing. I love going out there and harnessing the fear of failure where I think so many people who maybe don't love football as much, the root of that is is a deep uh, fear of failure. Uh, that You might go out there and your best might not be good enough and that's not okay with you. The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope, nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Welcome back to that show. It is Monday, March 29th, 2000, in 21 years after the year zero. What happened that year? Is that when he was born? Yeah, that's when uh, JC was born. Mm-hmm. Shout out. Shout, Shout out. out to a virgin mother. Shout out. Father Joe also being like, yeah, I believe it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> you know what I mean? I assume, with me. I assume that was some tough conversations. But anyways, here we are, hour two of the show on Sirius XM Channel 82, Mad Dog Sports Radio, <laughs> and YouTube.com forward slash The Pat McAfee Show. Joining us in about 22 minutes will be um, Mac Brown, head wow. coach of the USC. Hey. Um, former ESPN commentator, formerly of University of Texas, now head coach for the University of North Carolina Tar Heels. Cannot wait to chat with him. The North Carolina Pro Day is today, I believe. Ooh. Ask him how some of his guys did, how the program's doing, what he's thinking about going ahead, and just some life shit. The last time I got a chance to talk with Mac Brown, I forget what incredibly insightful thing he said, but every time he speaks, it feels like I learned something. And when I was in the school at WVU, Texas was obviously very good. This is Vince Young as well. Mac Brown was there. And Mac Brown was just like shoved down. You know what I mean? Mac Brown mm-hmm. was everywhere. It was like Tim Tebow. Like Tim Tebow yeah. was yeah. everywhere. Mac Brown was everywhere. And you, there's some people I think that got a little Mac Brown fatigue out of this thing, you know? Mm-hmm. Then he comes back to UNC and or he was on ESPN. Then he goes to UNC and they're talking about Mac Brown again. And I actually got to call one UNC game when Mac Brown was the head coach. And I was getting a bunch of tweets about how oh of course espn mac brown mac brown mac brown so i had realized that this happened once you talk to mac brown you completely understand why Mm -hmm. that is the case just everything that they say about him is real okay very similar to tim tebow by the way once we met tim tebow we were like oh my god like no gimmick wow literally 
everything that has been said about this guy is real. He acted exactly how everybody said Tim Tebow would act. He acted exactly like that and then some in, in front of us. Numerous times, it's <laughs> like, oh shit, so Tim Tebow's a real per This is actual. I think Mac Brown's that same exact thing. So I think there's some people that maybe weren't fans of him when he was at Texas or maybe just didn't like him for whatever reason. When we talk to him, I fucking love it. Every time I've talked to him, it's been incredibly nice. I mm -hmm. love, I, I enjoy talking to Mac Brown. I think it was a college game day too. You guys had that little the moment. dance off yeah. moment. Yeah, 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 that was awesome. He's cool. He's <laughs> a cool dude. And then, by the way, in the third hour, we'll have AJ Hawk with us. Mm -hmm. And Sugar Sean O'Malley. Wow. Yeah. 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 He had one of my favorite quotes I've ever heard in my entire life for anything. After a fight, knocking somebody out, he said, I only get 15 minutes to perform. I got to do something sweet. And just thinking of what he does as a performance, as opposed to like a sport or like some, now listen, he does think of it as sport. I'm not talking about that, but having the vision, like I only get 15 minutes to perform. Like I only get 15 minutes to make an awesome moment. I only get 15 minutes to create something that everybody can see or whatever. I found that very fascinating. I think he's a big advocate for the vitamins as oh, well. Yeah. And if he's anything like any other fighter I've ever spoke to, I assume very deep thinking, cannot wait to chat with this guy. Incredibly entertaining, mm -hmm. feels like he gets it. And and very good at knocking motherfuckers out. Yeah, I mean, Created very good. two pretty sweet moments yeah. on Saturday night. Two performances. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, he, in what? In what? Yeah, he is. I can't wait to chat with him. Big show today. Um, let's talk about something that ruffles the feathers on the internet. Okay. 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 This, I mean, this more than anything I think we've ever talked about stirs the pot on the internet with a certain sector of nah, the Raiders Derek Carr thing. Got pretty big there oh, for yeah. a little bit. Mm -hmm. But I'll tell you what, this Russell Wilson potentially not being a Seattle Seahawk Whoa. this season. Hey, that ruffles the feathers of the Seahawks, the 12s out there in Seattle. Mm -hmm. Those feathers get ruffled out there. Big time. Now listen, a lot of people have attacked this show for a lot of things. We've been called poor journalists by other sports shows. Mm. The internet has questioned a lot of things. But I will say we are very, very transparent here, right? Oh, sure. yeah. Always. How did we get to this subject? Let me tell you. There was a conversation that was had about the tweet that was earlier. So everything that we talk about, we look into. Okay? Mm -hmm. And if there's smoke, we try to look for more smoke to see if there's fire. The Russell Wilson is not happy with Seattle. Seattle is not happy with Russell Wilson thing. Was reported by numerous people. Now, there's a lot of Seahawks fans uh, that have tweeted me. Uh, and told me that I should be doing my own investigating to see if it's real or see if it's true or whatever. And I do agree that there are shows that are like that. That is not what, I, that's not what we do. What we do <laughs> no, no. is we observe and report. Our yeah. job is to let people know about the shit that all those people that do incredible work with their insider, insider game, they have incredible networks, they have incredible connections, and they have incredible conversations they can start. We're just telling you about what we're hearing with our ears to the ground in the internet streets about said teams and situations. The Russell Wilson Seattle one, by all accounts, Seems like the people that were talking about it before a massive trade was on the table for Russell Wilson, so that meant Seattle was listening if there was a trade on the table. Before that was turned down, and I think immediately upon that deal being turned down, we all go, oh, Russell Wilson's back in Seattle then. Go Hawks start happening yep. again with videos. He's quote tweeting um, contracts that are happening in Seattle. He's back. It seems like Russell Wilson has come out very loudly and said, I'm going back to Seattle with all of his actions. But all of these reports continue to happen. And we don't know who's given the information. We do know that some information had to have been right that was given to people because of the trade that Chicago and Seattle had initially set up. But it feels like all the people that said before then something was happening and something was happening, they're saying, hey, Shit's still happening right now. Yeah. With yeah. Philadelphia Eagles just got into play for Russell Wilson what? because of the oh trades that were made on Friday with them getting draft capital. Yeah, it's not slowing down. So I'm not saying this is definitely happening. I'm just telling you that all the people that were talking about it before we heard an actual trade was happening in Fargo, North Dakota, they're still saying the same exact thing. So we can potentially look for that. But how did we get here mm. is a question that we have to ask. Mm -hmm. How did we get to this point? We asked a 17-year-old kid. Yep. 
okay? Mm -hmm. We asked a 17 year old kid. That's right. Who happens to be a fan of this show, okay? To make a graphic, basically timelining Russell Wilson's experience with Seattle. Let's take a look at that right. By the way, this is a 17 year old phenom. Okay. All right, I just mm -hmm. want to let you. Okay. This graphic is maybe the nicest graphic I've ever seen in my entire really? life. Really? It's pretty That's cool. That's <laughs> one. Put it up there, Foxy, please. Here's what? the timeline, okay? Here's Russell Wilson and Seattle Seahawks' relationship. 2012, 2013, he's drafted 75th overall on May 7th, 2012. Seahawks record, 11 and five. Let's go to the next year. He, uh, they won the Super Bowl. He was third in the NFL for most time sack. You're about to see a trend here. The next year, they lose the Super Bowl. The next year, third in the NFL for most time sack. The next year, second in the NFL for most time sack. The next year, second in the NFL for yards lost due to sacks. The next year, third in the NFL for most times sacked. The next year, first in the NFL for most times sacked. And then this past season, second in the NFL for most times sacked. Jeez. So I think we always, you know, and we were reporting about this, by the way, at Jake K Design mm -hmm. made that. That kid's going to have a billion dollars. Kudos. Yeah. Yeah. Is he working kid, for NFL Live, too? I, I have no <laughs> idea. That's what, what that it looks is. like it's coming. I have no idea what. By the way, there's another one coming that's just like on top <laughs> of that. At JK Design. Shout out, dude. Hey. Shout out. Shout out. Shout out. Uh, but whenever Team 3 comes out and says, now I guess we could put this up. Whenever Team 3 comes out and uh, reports surface that Russell Wilson's camp is frustrated by the Seahawks' inability to protect the Pro Bowler, that was on February 9th. And then obviously Russell Wilson went on Dan Patrick and he said he's frustrated about getting hit too much, but he didn't really say anything that was too devastating to his relationship. But he didn't come out and say, like, hey, what Team 3 had reported isn't true either, though. So it was like kind of mixed messages. Then February 11th, Dan Patrick from the Dan Patrick Show, OG in this game, he reports that the Seahawks management is not happy with Russ and his camp for going public. The current situation is not sustainable. So oh. now we're all mocking Team 3 at this point. If we go back, like, oh, yeah. oh, we're like, okay, so the chef isn't happy with what the Seattle Seahawks are doing. Mm -hmm. Okay. The, uh, the uh, the cardio guru yeah, isn't right. happy with what the Seahawks are doing. The P the publicist isn't right. happy. Like we we kind of mocked that whole thing. I think we did, right? Big oh, yeah. time for yeah. sure. Spiritual kinda, advisor, uh, et cetera, et cetera. Yeah, we kind of mocked the whole thing. Like because mm -hmm. he comes out, he spent a million. Put that first graphic back up from J.K. Look at the third in NFL for most time sack. Third, second, first, second, third, first, second in the NFL in the sack game. It feels like. Russell Wilson's team potentially does have a bit of a gripe. Now, oh, yeah. the offense that they're running last year, letting Russ cook, maybe not feasible for this whole thing. It is going to be interesting to see how, because they said like 70 to 85% of the offensive line is coming back from last year after the offensive line has kind of been dragged through the mud here mm -hmm. by Team 3. But whenever we were going through all the drama of this thing, we might have been a little bit rude to Russell Wilson. Maybe, a little bit. maybe somebody mm -hmm. should have been coming out talking about these sack issues a long time ago. Now, did we fact check the 17-year-old's graphic? Oh, we most certainly we did, not. did not. I assume but he, he did his however, research. He did his yeah. research. <laughs> but anyways, the dude's been sacked a bunch of times. And as this drama continues to unfold, it, it makes you think, like, maybe Russell Wilson does have a right gripe here. And he's been sacked that many times, and the worst they went was 9-7. and seven. Like, they were still that good because Russell Wilson was just putting the team on his back. So 9-7 and seven now is 10-7? and seven? Uh, mm, oh. Or is it 9-8? and eight? I don't know, because 9-8 nine nine. is more 8-8, eight eight, I think. Yeah. Because yeah. huh. if you go 8-9. and nine, Yeah, it's 10-7, and seven, I think. I think you're right. Which is, you know, not great. Not anymore. great, but... <laughs> still 10 wins. My, my ten ten, <laughs> yeah. Still double digit wins. I don't know what to do. But the Russell Wilson thing seems like there's smoke everywhere, by the way. Well, still like, at this moment. Like you said, like Schefter's not going to report that, hey, he might get traded on draft night. He's not just blowing smoke. He's hearing that from somewhere. So, I mean, I don't but know. But why is he hearing it? Who's spreading it? True. Yeah. I mean, there's just, you never know with any of this thing, which is what we need to say again, like we let off this whole thing. We're just telling you what's happening. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That's all. Yeah. But I can understand how you can get upset sometimes because yeah, I might be saying something that makes your team sound terrible. And I just want to let you know, 
It's not our fault. No. It's yeah. your fucking team's fault. <laughs> Shit, the only other guy you can think of that got hit that much is Andrew Luck, and he retired. Yeah, listen, of him. we should have kept him safe. <laughs> yeah, maybe. <laughs> hey, maybe. God. He was unbelievable at the football. Yeah. That guy, he would make stupid plays. But because his belief on football is that no play left behind. You know what I mean? Yeah. He has like the the no play left behind. That led him to get hit in situations that I think a lot of people would have given up on the play earlier, which is what they I think they were trying to tell Andrew. And Andrew like was like, Well, that's not how you play football. Like I, I think there was a little bit of a give and take with Andrew and the people potentially trying to tell him to play football differently because and this is not me, I didn't I'm not hundred percent sure on this, but I would assume people were telling him that he can't take as many hits. And he continued to just lower his shoulder and run people over. And it was awesome. Like, it was was so cool to see. No play was ever dead with him. But ultimately, he took a lot of shots playing like that. Now, could we have protected him better? Most certainly, and should have. And there should have been plays that are like, hey, if this isn't out of your hand, blah, 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 this is where you go with it and that type of stuff. But there are some players who, you know... uh, both edges of the sword, you know what I mean? Mm-hmm. Live by the yeah. sword, die by the sword there. He, Russell Wilson's one of those guys who makes a lot of lot of extra, you know, ad lib plays. Mm-hmm. Could potentially set yourself up for shots there, but that's because whatever was supposed to happen couldn't happen. How do we make those things happen on a more regular basis? Well, they just love the game. And there, I, it's funny you say that because there's that one clip when Andrew Luck was at Stanford where the running back fumbles it. This dude, D-back, picks it up. He's going for six. And Andrew Bang. Luck lays <laughs> yeah. him out. Bang. He yeah. forced a fumble. Bang. <laughs> yeah. He used to bring the hammer. I'm not sure. I'm not sure there's many interceptions he's thrown where he hasn't made the tackle. Because I think, like, if a turnover happens or something like that, mm-hmm. I think he is so pissed. Yeah, dead spree. He is <laughs> so pissed about what was happening. And it, he's a big dude. He's oh, the size yeah. of a defensive end. Yeah. Uh, he used to fuck people up, man. That was awesome. He was a hell of a player. Oh, How about yeah. T.Y. just saying, is he happy? Oh. Every time I talk to him, he almost talks me into retirement. <laughs> I almost retired. I almost retired. <laughs> Oh man! Did you ever see with the linebackers in practice? No, he's no. taking a couple of reps. <laughs> yeah. Hey, hey, hey! Andrew, get back with the quarterbacks now. He, he was, he was uh, Russell Wilson, Seattle stuff though. If I was a Seahawks fan, I could see how I'd be upset about it too. Oh mm-hmm. yeah, because it's just like you know, we got a guy. Hey, we got a guy. We got it. Yeah. Now we got a guy storming out of meetings allegedly mm-hmm. and doing all this other stuff. I mean, what's going on behind the scenes? And then Trent Dilfer says, if there isn't some friction between a head coach and a quarterback, I'd be worried. It's like, all right, so will they be able to bury this? I mean, this is a reality show happening in Seattle right now. Now that all this stuff's come out, too, do you think as like Seahawks fans still envision that he would re-sign there? Or is it like a situation where it's like, okay, well, th- he's probably going to go whenever he – has the opportunity, so why don't we get something in return? Because we can get a lot in return for him. Yeah, you know, I, the three first rounders they were offered from Chicago. Mm-hmm. Chicago. Oh, yeah. And what, a third and two starters. Yes. Yeah. Who we believe now are Kyle Fuller and Akeem Hicks, potentially. Yes. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Right? And yep. those, so those two are going to help you immediately. The first rounder this year is going to help you. But then the next two first round picks are dependent upon. How well the Chicago Bears do, who have Russell Wilson, a quarterback, those two first could really be early seconds or whatever. So to go and get Russell Wilson, who has the capital to do it? Or Slavsky said the Eagles this morning, the Miami Dolphins, even though they traded from three out and then back up to six, they still have four picks in the first 50, although they do not have the third overall anymore. They have the sixth overall. I don't know. That's going to be expensive. Is it $26 million or whatever over two years they'll have in dead cap space? I don't know. It's going to be it's it's going to be interesting because if if Russell Wilson moves, this show is oh, going to Oh, oh, oh God. Oh, boy. Oh, wow. Need it. It'd be celebration time. Yeah. Mm. Dancing on Seattle. Let's go to – no, no, not all of them. No. Oh, no, no. no, just the people that are – Coming at – Coming at yeah. – I mean, I'm getting attacked by this the twelves over it's there. Like, hey, you're not reporting this well, stuff, bro. Well, I'm just reporting what what's being reported. Yes. Yeah. Hey, I'm secondhand. Don't give a fuck. You need to stop. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> it's a Ron White joke. Good joke. Andrew in South Carolina. What's going on, pal? Hey, what's going on, Pat and the boys? Hey, Andrew. Like the attitude. Like the vibe. What do you want to talk about? I want to talk about MCDC's goddamn Detroit line. Let's yeah. go. Let's talk about MCDC. What do you think? 
Yeah, I also like to get Foxy's take on this. I wanted to know if there's a trade value for Jared Goff with all this talk about quarterback going one, two, three, four. What if a guy like Justin Fields slips down to seven? Do the Lions pull trigger on him? Because if you asked me a year ago, hey, for Matthew Stafford, you know, you get two ones, two twos, a three in Justin Fields, I'm saying, fuck yeah. Fuck yeah, dude. Fuck yeah. 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 I don't hate it. I don't hate if they take a quarterback this year. I don't think – and correct me if I'm wrong, guys, in saying this. I asked Diggs this last week. Is Jared Goff as bad as everyone says Well, he is? I do believe he's potentially not great, but there mm-hmm. is moments where he's very good, right? Yeah. It just feels like when he's very good, he requires a certain thing, and I'm not sure if Detroit is that certain thing. Yeah. I don't, I'm not 100% yeah. sure. But whenever Goff – Goff is one of the best live bets in the NFL. Yeah. You can tell early if Goff's vibing or not. Normally when he's not vibing is when there is pressure at his feet. So if Detroit can protect him, he can throw. He Hey, he can sling it now. Yeah. That mm-hmm. guy can absolutely sling it. But I do believe a lot of the things that went wrong is potentially the offense changing. It may be you got to do some things out of pocket and scramble and extend plays maybe. I don't know because I think they lost a lot of their offensive line because they paid everybody and then a couple of their offensive line and left over there in Los Angeles. He became a different quarterback. McVay started somebody else over him in a playoff <laughs> game. I mean, it is, I think it potentially may be a toxic sitch in LA. Mm-hmm. You know, they both said, see you later, have a good one. Maybe he gets a new spot to go to. If they can protect him, he can throw the ball. I mean, that's something he can definitely do. And if I had to guess, I don't think they'll take a quarterback. We just lost Marvin Jones. We just lost Kenny Galladay. We literally have no receivers. There's mm-hmm. a lot of good receivers in the draft. Seven's a perfect place for it. Well, see, that's something that he would, I mean, if you're a pass and quarterback, you know, yeah. it would be good to have somebody to throw a ball to, which, by Me the way, that. tight end, who is awesome. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Get another Hawk. one in there. What's his name? TJ Hawkinson. Yeah, he's awesome. Mm-hmm. So they draft Kyle Pitts, yeah. you know? Part of those two up. Now you have the Patriots <laughs> yeah. uh-huh. and the Lions with MCDC leading a squad with two monster tight ends. Yeah, we love top 10 tight ends in the draft. Hey, Goff can. Hey, Goff can hit a tight end or two here. Yeah, in a McVay offense, are we still getting the same situation with, you know, Bob Woods and Cooper Cup on the outside? Or? Well, I think the big thing about the McVay offense is I think we're all going to be pretty impressed with that thing. Yeah. The McVay offense got like 45 people jobs in the NFL. Yep. Mm-hmm. McVay's offense came in, was so good. If you had happened to get your hair cut at the same barbershop as McVay on more than three occasions in a three-week span, you were getting interviews for head coaching jobs. Yeah. Mm-hmm. yeah, this guy had coffee with McVay in Oakland when he was working with Gruden. This guy, get get him get him a head coaching job. Right get him in here. That's what that offense did initially. Then everybody was like, well, they figured it out. They figured it out. It's not as good anymore. Now that Matthew Stafford is there, I think this McVay offense thing is about to really – I mean, he's teammates with him now. Brockers, I believe he's teammates now with Goff or whatever. Yeah, oh, yeah. Yes, yep. But when he was initially uh, – when he was asked about this, he was like, oh, yeah, this is a whole step up now. Yeah, big <laughs> upgrade. He's a big upgrade. <laughs> yeah. And then he gets straight into Detroit. He's like, I was just, you know, for the fans. I was, he took me to a Super Bowl. Got a promo. Hey. Got a promo. <laughs> what a moment. That's awesome, by the way. But yeah, I think within the building, too, there's a lot of, like – Hey, now we got to – Matthew Stafford is a fucking savage. I'm so happy for him. He is so good on football. I can't wait. They got Deshaun Jackson out there, too. If he still has got a little bit in there, Stafford will be slinging that thing. He is so, so good at the football. All right, let's get to a break. Mac Brown will join us on the other side. Yeah. Yeah. I can't wait to chat with Mac Brown. Oh, yeah. What's your big takeaway from uh, the Uncle COVID season, Mm Mac? He'll give some. You know, Pat? It'll be a full. <laughs> yeah. I think the last time we asked him if he was going to run for president someday. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right? I think yeah. that's how we ended it. Yeah. We'll put the heat on him again. <laughs> we might be interviewing a future sitting president, a current head coach at the University of North Carolina. Their pro day is today. Cannot wait to chat with Living Legend in about four minutes. Be a friend, tell a friend. Mac Brown joins us. Cheers. Okay, so I was uh, elected captain in a week. We played the Lions up in Detroit, and Vandenbosch was one of the captains for them, and he had red contacts. Uh-huh. Mm-hmm. Yeah, he had red contacts in, and we walked up to each other, right? And I think I'm with, like, Mathis and some other people. I don't know. I, I should not have been there. I was just far left or whatever. You know, I'm just on the far left side of it. And I walk in, and we all dap each other up, and then he's there. And I go shake his hands. I look him in the eyes. 
<laughs> and I didn't say anything. I just looked him right in the eyes. And he like dapped me up or whatever, gave him a fist bump. And I just stared at him for the entire coin toss. Like the ref was talking to whoever was going to talk for us. And I was just looking this guy right in the eyes the whole time. And then as soon as we go to leave, I go, that's wild, man. <laughs> I just jog off to my side. Like, in those captain's meetings, I've had some incredible electric moments. We played against the Minnesota Vikings, and Adrian Peterson uh, was the captain of the Vikings. I was captain of the Colts. There was like three other people. We walk out there for this, and the only thing I've heard about Adrian Peterson is how firm – well, I've heard a lot of things about Adrian Peterson. Those aside. <laughs> but I've heard that Adrian Peterson's handshake is a firm one. Like, Adrian Peterson has a firm handshake. It's like this legendary story. So we go out for the coin toss, and I see him, and I'm like, here we mm -hmm. go. And as soon as we go for the handshake, I get in early. I get in very – because the key to breaking a very – stern handshake is you get in early because you got to beat the grip you got to beat the grip so he's like kind of casually shaking everybody else's hands i'm like dapping everybody up like slowly slowly <laughs> and i'm like watching him the entire time and he brings his hand out and i race in to get the netting and your thumb on the thumb and then i squeeze first right so i get like that's like in uh arm wrestling yep. when you get the angle on mm -hmm. so he squeezes back and I give him like a ha-ha. <laughs> like, right? So while the coin toss is happening, Adrian Peterson looks at me while he's standing on the other side. Neither of us were speaking captains. And he goes, after the coin toss, we're doing another one. <laughs> it was beautiful. It was absolutely beautiful. He goes back. He, as soon as the coin toss is over, there's another dap up before we run back. And we did this handshake. He got me around too. I'm my, and that was my drop hand too. That's like my punt drop hand. I thought, my, I thought it was going to be broke. But I was like, those coin toss things, I don't know how you don't shake hands because it's just an awkward situation where you're forced to shake hands almost i actually would have made more money the day i signed than my whole contract with indy <laughs> oh, <laughs> dude. why did you decide to turn down a lot of money to come back to indianapolis for the year true story no book i prayed about it by three o'clock I'm, I'm signing somewhere and then 255 i got on the phone with chris like are we going to get this done like how can we get this done he, he came up with a number and i'm like all right it's all right well, i guess it's meant for me to go to this next team as soon as i closed his message Ursa texted me. I said, uh, there go my sign right there. <laughs> when, he, when he texts me, that's what we got it done. When he texts me, we got it done. Hey, what, did you see my eyes tweet um, yesterday? Yeah, is that when you got the text from Ursa? No, that was a text that I was almost gone. Oh. <laughs> yeah, where are we going to go? Hey. hey. You don't have to tell us, obviously, but I do believe Baltimore was in on something. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then also the quarterback. Oh, that's also what it was. That's what it was. Every day is game day for these guys. It's showtime on the Pat McAfee Show. Welcome back to that show. Monday, March 29th, 2021 here on Sirius XM Channel 82, Mad Dog Sports Radio <coughs> and YouTube.com forward slash the Pat McAfee Show. Joining us now is a head ball coach, okay? Mm -hmm. Head football coach. His record, his overall record in coaching. Tell me if... Uh, this sounds about where you would think just in your head. Okay. He's 259, 132, and one. Hmm. That's a lot of football games. Holy That's a lot shit. Of football wins. That is a lot of days on sidelines. That is a lot of days, you know, teaching. That is a lot of days instructing. He's a college football Hall of Famer. Maybe potentially, if we get a chance to talk him into it, a future president. Now, the head coach of the University of North Carolina Tar Heels football team, Mac Brown. Yeah. 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 Guys. How are you, Mac? How, how's it going, coach? Good. I, I think I'm supposed to say. <laughs> Oh, no. yeah. Yeah, well, that's that's whenever we say we're on Mad Dog. You know, as soon as you hear the dog, it's just like a Pavlov's dog situation. You know, with the uh, the word and the bark. How you doing, Coach? How's the off season going? I'm I'm doing great, Pat. We're hopefully we're working through all this craziness for this year, and 
and all the sadness that, that people have incurred where it was losing people or, or family members or friends or losing jobs, losing homes, can't eat. I mean, it's just, uh, it's uh, uh, so many of us are blessed, but there's so many that are hurting out there. There's a lot of anger in our world right now. We gotta, we gotta love everybody, pull everybody back up and, and, and get back on the right track. Our, our social injustice has been a, uh, a, a real tough year for a lot of things, but but positives can come out of all this. We can't get the people back we lost, but surely we can learn from it. And Sally, my, my wife Sally Pat told me last spring I was pouting and and said, you know, what am I doing? I mean, I can't see the players, I can't see the coaches. We don't have staff meetings. I should have stayed in TV. I, I, I can't do anything. <laughs> she said, uh, maybe you're supposed to be leading. Maybe you're supposed to be stepping up and helping these young people through this and help families and help people. And maybe that's why we came back to coach. So you need to be really careful that you say it's not a good time. Maybe it's the perfect time because you're experienced and you've been around and maybe you can help. So since that day, when I, I got subtly chewed out by my wife <laughs> for, for pouting, I've really, really tried to get up every day with a purpose and, and try to help somebody during these crazy times coach that's fantastic by the way i think the whole world wishes that we all felt that way it's fantastic that you're in a position to change lives on a very regular basis i think a a, a football coach especially a college coach is one who can be you know very influencing on somebody for the rest of their life for this season and you've been you said your experience maybe sally said your experience maybe this is why you're here to do this what was it like going through a season was it a lot of like um most you know growing as a team as people and and then also football was there or like how do you think it was different than in the years past with everything going on pat the, the biggest thing it was uh, athletes coaches or creatures of, of routine and we had none everything was i'm not sure i don't know are we going to be able to play i'm not sure how can we be in a locker room together i don't know can we actually touch a ball or are we going to get COVID from it? I'm not sure. Um, how can we eat? How do we travel? How, so th there were so many unknowns and that drives you crazy. And especially in a routine business like we're in, but the players were unbelievable. I, I, I said early, we will not let you play if it's not safe. That's a hundred percent. So if you want to play now, you, you've got to, you've got to handle your end. You can't go to parties. You, you can't be regular students. You can't go out and eat. You can't get in big groups. You're going to have to, you, you saw the NBA bubble. You're going to have to be in a bubble here in Chapel Hill. And, and, and to play, that's what you're going to have to do. Is it fun? No. Are you going to have to give up a lot of things to play? Absolutely. If you don't want to play, I'll go play golf and fish. I got it. <laughs> but if you, if you want to play, I'm going to coach you and our coaches are going to coach you. And we're going to coach you hard and we want to win, but you're going to have to give up a lot of who you are and a lot of your individualism for this team, more than the normal team. And they did that, Pat. We had one young person to miss a game this year because of COVID. Just wow. one. It was unbelievable. I'm so proud of these kids. Uh, people were all over the place on spring break a few weeks ago. We get back, we got no positives. And, and we're, we're going to our fourth day of spring practice tomorrow. So I, I know we're, we're still vulnerable. I know it's still out there. I know we could get COVID next week. But so far, our guys have bought in, and I'm so proud of them. And, and they'll have a, a different but a better experience, a harder experience for learning when they get out of here than – than most college students. So they, they know they can do things that are very difficult. And first of all, I do believe your student human athletes of your football team deserve a round of applause. Yeah. I don't even know how that's possible. I don't know how it's even possible. I don't know how it's even possible because a DoorDash delivery person could potentially at one point, we believed at one point, there was a chance they could sneeze on the food and, and get that thing and then you get it five minutes later from time. I mean, incredible work by your team buying in there. Uh, day four of spring practice, uh, how's the team? How are we looking, huh, Coach? How we are we feel good out there? Yeah, you know it's fun. Uh, expectations are higher than two years ago, where we had won two games the previous year and three games the previous year. So we won seven, we won eight. We go to the Orange Bowl. I was really proud that when we lost the Orange Bowl game to 
Texas A&M path, they were, they were devastated. So they didn't go there just to, to play and be proud. They went to win. So that, that's a great sign for me in the locker room. I wanted them to be hurting, and they were. And then we, we had 12 new guys come in that are early enrollees, and we've got a grad transfer and, and um, Ty Chandler from Tennessee that's a really good running back. We had our first day in pads on, thir- on uh, Saturday, and I've never been more excited. We, we got a lot of work to do. We had a bunch of penalties, and we, oh, we had some can't turnovers. Have it. And it, it was an awful first day for me to have so much fun. But I still had a lot of fun because I can see the potential of this team. And people are saying, you know, if you lose any games, they're going to be mad. That's a good thing. I've coached at Texas. I get that theory. I understand <laughs> that you have to win all the games, and that's okay. That's what we want. What a great thing for people to be mad if you ever lose a game. So I, I've told the guys we're, we're working at, uh, at a different standard now than, than we have the previous two years. Yeah, you earn that pressure. Right. That's a, that's mm-hmm. a, that, that's a, that everybody talks about those big pressure moments like, well, you've earned your way to get to this point. Now, how do you handle it? There are people, though, that are OK with expectations not being too high because then you can float under the radar. I think it says a lot more about you if people know you're coming and you can still show up. But now my question for you, coach, you seem like and I might be wrong. I'm not in there day to day, but it feels like you're. A, a leader of the team, like a um, I, I, like a, uh, a setter of the culture almost. You're not offense coordinator, not defense coordinator. It's like, hey, you're the guy. Hey, this is the this is the way we're going to go. This is this whole thing. And in the NFL, there was a a run there where offensive gurus were hired who were potentially in their playbooks and then in their call sheets all day. They weren't really leaders of the team. Now, Motor City, Dan Campbell, Vrabel, there are guys that are viewed as it, whenever you think about coaching and how coach has evolved with, with the role that you currently play were you always like this did you used to be coordinator and then became like just overarching guy like how do you feel is best for the coaching world and do you believe that the just one-sided coach can become the best potential head coach he could be now uh, pat i used to be the offensive coordinator and i called all the plays even as the head coach here at one time i was calling all the plays and I talked to George Welch, who's a Hall of Fame coach from Virginia that we lost a couple of years ago. And, and we were standing out there before the game. He says, you still call the plays, don't you, boy? And I said, yes, sir. And he said, you won't do that much longer. You're going to find out the head coach got a lot more to do than call those plays. And you're going to catch yourself trying to catch up on Friday nights and trying to run and watch video. And, and, I, and, and that did happen. So what I do now, Pat, is, is – uh, I'm very direct. We'll, we'll have a meeting here at, at two o'clock with our, our staff and I'll go over everything I saw that's positive and everything I saw that was a concern on Saturday because I want them to coach. I want them to control their units, uh, but I'm going to be in charge of them. And I don't want them pouting. I want them to grow up. I said, you, you guys criticize your players and you wonder why uh, they can't handle criticism. Heck, you're 50 years old and you can't handle criticism. <laughs> I, said, oh, man. I mean, grow up. We're, we're trying to get, we're trying to win the games. We're, we're not trying to make everybody feel good. This, this isn't the Boy Scout troop. So not everybody gets an award. Not everybody gets a hug. Do your job. Now, Do your job. Bring your unit up. Get better. And if your guys aren't doing better, they're a reflection of you. You all are a reflection of me, but your players are a reflection of you. So if they're offsides every time, man, you're offsides every time. Mm. You're, you're either coaching it or allowing it to happen. Oh. So, so that that's what I do now, and I've been more direct since I came back. I thought at the end at Texas I probably uh, gave them too much latitude, and I let them take too many recruits. I see every recruit. I've got to meet every recruit. I want to talk to every recruit because I've been doing this longer than our guys. And I see the whole picture, and they don't. They see their, their picture. And, and it's really important for me to let them know what I feel. That's um, amazing. Thank you for all that, by the way. That was a great answer there. Whenever you're meeting with recruits, what do you think? What are you trying to find out? What, what are you trying to learn about? Because we're in the middle of this draft world now, and they're talking about, you know, this guy is a good teammate, good culture guy, whatever. And then sometimes there's misses. Sometimes there's hits. Whenever you're meeting with recruits, what are you – what is the – obviously they got to be good at football, but what are you trying to learn about them to see if they'll fit in as a Tar Heel? Well, Pat, they're good at football or they wouldn't be in my office. 
<laughs> because we've, we've already figured out the evaluation. And we have 12 people. We've got Daryl Moody, an ex-pro scout that ran our pro day this morning. We've got Sparky Woods, who was a head coach at three different times. We got a lot of people with eyes on every prospect to see if they think they're good enough to play for us or not. And, and, and that's a, it's, a, it's a really good, thorough process. So I'm not worried about whether they can play or not. So my two things are, are do I like them or not? I was talking to Bo Schimbecker when he, he did an ABC game for us back in the 90s, and I went to dinner with him, and I love Coach. And I said, Coach, how do you tell who to recruit in the end? Let's say you got 12 guys left and you got four scholarships. How do you pick them out? He said, all of them are good enough or you wouldn't be talking about them. Take the ones you like. If you like them, they're going to like you. And in the fourth quarter, if they like you, they're going to play hard for you. And if you don't like them, they're going to know you don't like them and you're going to be miserable and it's not going to work. So number one, take the ones you like. The second thing is I try to put myself in the prospect and, and his parents seats and minds they're smart people so if i was them would i come here and why would i come here and then i, I tell them that you should come here for these reasons if i'm you and, and I, i've told some pat which coaches think i'm crazy when i do that or assistant coaches i said you shouldn't come here <laughs> you, you should go to auburn here's why and they look at me like come on man i said he's not gonna be happy here Transfer portal. We want people here that want to stay. We want people that fit here. So let's get the right ones. Let's go get somebody that looks pretty and then him not be a fit. How do you feel about the transfer portal? That's changing the game completely. It is become, I mean, when it was first introduced, I think there was a lot of skeptics and conversations. But now that we're a couple years into this, it feels like it's a chance for guys to really make a, a, a pretty big decision whenever they want. It was never like that. How are you, how do you deal with that? Do you have to po uh, pocket some scholarships for potential transfer portal players? Or if your guys go in there, how does that whole thing work? And how do you feel about it as an overall concept? Yeah, Pat, it's a great question. Our coaches asked the other day, how do you coach anymore with a transfer portal? And I said, get the right ones and treat them fair. And mm. then they won't want to leave. Mm. And, and that's what we talked about with where should, does that parent think his, his young person should go. Uh, the second thing is I, I think there's some good qualities to the transfer portal. I don't like the fact that you can transfer in May and, and Sam Howell on our team could transfer to Virginia Tech and open up against us. Oh, he in, won't. In the first game. Hopefully he doesn't. By the way. Uh, he, he won't. <laughs> <laughs> he could, though. The rules are in place. And the other thing I don't like, Pat, it, it's giving some young people uh, an easier chance to run away if something happens poorly or they're not playing. They don't have to fight anymore. They don't have to compete. Let's just quit. And only 37% of the people was the stat I got last year found a better place to go in the portal than they had. And we're seeing some young people get left out because some don't get scholarships or they have to drop down a level. And we've got agents and third parties and parents telling them, you're good, man. You shouldn't be a second teamer. You need to be starting somewhere else to leave. And unless they have a place to go, and they're not supposed to, it would be tampering, but unless they have a place to go, a lot of the guys, they, they drop way down to another level and they're just disappointed. So that, and I think over time, that'll probably level out some and fewer people will go into the portal because now we've got over 2,000 football players that are mad and trying to place, find a place to go. Uh, and yes, we, we always keep a couple of scholarships. I'm not a big transfer guy. I'd rather bring a high school player in and let him grow in our system than bring a transfer in. So for us, it would be a stop gap. So if, if we get somebody hurt or we need somebody at one position, like the running back this year, we lose the two great running backs to the draft. We needed an older running back to be in that room. So we took Ty Chandler. But we're not going to be a team that sits around, looks at the portal all the time, and, and make our living with transfers. That's just not who we are. Uh, you're going to do it through the draft. The NFL teams, through the draft or free agency, you're going through the draft. Yeah, you're yeah, going that okay. thing from within, Coach. I can absolutely That's respect. It. Connor, what do you have? Yeah, Coach, you mentioned last season, you know, your players couldn't really be college uh, students and be able to party and stuff like that. Uh, do you see that being the same thing this upcoming season, or do you think there will be a little bit more normalcy uh, to the entire uh, college athletics? Connor, it's another great question. We're sitting here right now trying to decide who should get the vac who 
who will get the vaccine and who will not. I've already had both vaccines. Okay. The, the good news is I, I, I got it early. The bad news is I got it because I was old. <laughs> so, so it's not all good. <laughs> hey, it's better than the alternative, Mac. I mean, yeah, those are facts. Those yeah, are facts. Yeah, so yeah, that's yeah. what we've got. True. So, Connor, what we're hearing right now is if I have the vaccine and everybody on our team has the vaccine, we can go back to normal when we're around each other. No mask, no social distancing, no contract tracing. When we go to the grocery store and we're not sure who's got the vaccine and who hasn't, supposedly we will have to wear a mask again. So our players are eligible to start getting their vaccines here in the next week or so. And I'm constantly talking to them and they're asking me, should I get it? Should I not get it? What if I've already had a positive? Um, and, and what will change for us? So the question, Connor, will be if 50 players get it and 50 players do not get it, the way I understand it, we'll still wear a mask, have social distancing, and have contact tracing. Hmm. If I've got 15 people in the staff meeting and all 15 get the vaccine, we can go back to normal. But hmm. we're not sure what happens if 13 get the vaccine and two do not. Do we have to all wear a mask because those two would not get the vaccine? So I think they're still working through this stuff. But my hope is that all of our staff and all of our players at some point would want the vaccine so we could get back to normal as soon as we can. All of our children are getting it. Uh, my friends are all getting it. So every word I hear uh, from, from doctors and scientists that I trust tell me to get it. So hopefully there'll be some more moments, you know, with you, you know, mm -hmm. maybe dancing, you know what I mean? Doing yeah, those. without a mask. Yeah, with yeah. no mask. Yeah, just doing it. This wouldn't dance. be the same without my great facial expression. <laughs> That's right. I'm dancing. Ty, what do you have? Coach, the last time you were... Win. Hey, it was a great win. Great dance. Let's not oh, get yeah. crazy. <laughs> yeah. Ty, what do you have? Coach, the last time you were on the show, you mentioned that uh, towards the end of your time at Texas, it got to the point where you were just relieved after a win and you were just hoping that you didn't lose. And it's kind of interesting because they haven't had the same type of national success since you left. Uh, so my question is, do you think that the expectations um, are still the same at Texas now as they were when you were the head coach there? Yeah. Was it Tyler? Yeah, close enough. Yeah. Uh, Ty, uh, absolutely. Uh, the expectations at Texas will never change. That That's the people have tremendous pride in that program. They want to win all the games. They expect to win all the games. And, and that's the way it should be. And, and now, like I said, we lose to Florida State last year and Florida State played better than we did on that night. Everybody around here thought it was a disaster. And two years before we'd won two games. So it doesn't take long to change those expectations. <laughs> But uh, they're not going to change it, Texas. That, that, and, and that's a good thing. You got to love it. I used to call it pride instead of pressure because it's the pride of that state in their football program that they, they want to and feel like they should win every game. And, and that's one of the great things about coaching there. Okay, so I don't know when your heart out is, and I appreciate you joining us here. My last question is, and, and it was while you were talking about Texas there, and I'm not sure – if I'm educated on this, is there like a group of people that are in charge there? Like, isn't that what always gets talked about? Is like there's a chancellor's or or there's something like that that you board have to regions. a board, yeah, yeah, some sort of something. Is that is that blown way out of proportion whenever they talk about that Texas job? When you're winning, you're in charge. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but that means you've got to win more than nine. Okay. When you're when you're winning eight and nine, other people get in charge. Okay. And your job at Texas is to make sure you stay in charge. <laughs> okay, and when right. we were winning 10, 11, 12, and 13, I had pretty good control of what was going on. When we got back to eight or nine, I had less control. Let's just put it that way. Okay, all right. <laughs> all right, so a hey, point taken. And uh, so thankful for you joining us. Congrats on the – the turnaround at UNC, I know you saw that as an opportunity to get back into something that you miss alongside a conversation with your wife when you were visiting for a Hall of Fame, I believe. Uh, congrats on all the success, and thank you for your time, Coach. Thank you, Pat. Love being on. You guys do a great job, and, and you all have a wonderful day. Ladies and gentlemen, Mac Brown. Yeah. Yeah. He's a good dude. Yeah. Oh, yeah. He's an absolutely good guy right there. You know, I couldn't say hey, Texas. Yeah, you win, you're okay. <laughs> right. Hey, Lizzie, you start losing, you're going to get a lot of people. Oh, there's going to be a lot of cooks in that kitchen mm -hmm. of yours all of a sudden. And then that's probably when you start looking at the writing that's on the wall, I assume, mm -hmm. at those particular times. 
I mean, we put a Manscaped ad right there on his face. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. come on. That was it. <laughs> yeah, my bad. So, man, my bad. <laughs> that was it. As soon as it happened, I was like, I, like, I looked over. <laughs> because Mac, Mac Brown, potential, you know, actual president, he is oh, a yeah. guy that is just ready to go. That's interesting about the vaccine. Hey, listen, everybody yeah. gets it. You guys can hang out. Okay? A couple people don't. Put the mask on, boys. Two people, those most hated guys oh, in the locker room. Oh my, I'm not doing it. I've heard that it gets you actually sick, mm -hmm. and I'm not doing it. Oh, oh, is that right? So, <laughs> yeah. Is that right? You're not going to do it because that's what it's going to turn into, I assume. Yeah. I assume everybody on every college football team will be vaccinated relatively quickly. You would think. They have to. And by the way, you hang out mostly with your teammates off the field as well. So it's like, hey, we're allowed to go to each other's houses. Okay, potentially, I'm not saying everybody's doing this. We're allowed to pass uh, potential objects yeah. around mm -hmm. together. We are allowed to do, we're allowed to hang out with each other both. Yeah, I would assume this is going to happen relatively quickly for everybody. Either get the vaccine or you can uh, sit alone in your dorm room and All play video yourself. games. Yeah. All by yourself. <laughs> that's that's your the pick. option. Okay. Well, it doesn't feel like that's very fair. Well, no. well we Tough agree. Shit. By this. <laughs> yeah. It's not fair for us either if you're going to fucking. <laughs> what a world we're in. Can we get the vaccine? Ah, uh, yes. soon. We can. Starting right. Wednesday. I can Wednesday. get it. Yeah. 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 I've seen a lot of posts from people. The second one, I guess, is a fucking. Oh, yeah. In Ghana. Yeah. Oh, it is. Big time. I guess Frick the second ass. one brings one. With. Yeah. The first one, I guess, it's like a little bit of an easing. Okay. Mm -hmm. Then that second one is sternum overhand. Bang it. Yeah. That's what I heard. <laughs> a couple of people I follow on the internet got their second one. They're like, but I always feel like the Camry ran you up. <laughs> Just gotten gone, dude. That's hey. <laughs> Stipe is not retiring, by the way. Oh, no. Stipe released a statement on his Instagram basically saying it was going exactly how we thought it was going to go. He was getting tired, and I messed up, basically. Stipe, I think, had a full game plan for this thing. He said he was about to execute it, and he got careless. He ended up getting knocked out, which is a meme anytime you get knocked out on the Internet. But he's, I think he's going to get back in this thing. I think there's going to be a rematch, and it sounds as if this is what Steve Pace says. First and foremost, I'm okay. I know that fall wasn't my most graceful fall, but I was unconscious, so it happened. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> to my family, friends, and fans, especially Croatia and Cleveland, I love you and I'm sorry. I hate letting you down. Oh, man, this is how fighters actually yeah. feel. Mm -hmm. Chill. Yeah, you didn't, you didn't let anybody down, dude. To my team, thank you. I know you feel every loss just as much as I do. We win as a family. We lose as a family. Losses aren't fun. They always sting for a while. But that's the best of this business, the beast of this business. Oh, good writing there. You can't win them all, and it's important to understand that losing is just as much a part of sports and life as winning. Don't ever forget God will always put you where you're meant to be at the exact moment. You can't dwell on what you should have done better, but you can learn and improve from it and come back more prepared next time. <laughs> Unfortunately, I deviated from game plan. I felt great coming into the second round. I saw it was beginning to go as planned. He was getting very winded, and I came in overzealous and unprotected. Fuck, can't do it. I wasn't in a good posture to take that hit. He saw the opening and did what any great fighter would have done. That was my error, and I accept it. It won't happen again. Lastly, I'd like to congratulate Francis Ngannou and his team on a well-earned victory. Saturday night was your night. Enjoy your victory for now. I'm going to enjoy the downtime, spend some time with my family, and welcome our son into the world this summer. Hey, congrats. Yeah. There we go. Stay tuned. God bless. Pray hands. Croatia flag. Hashtag. Oh. Clee till I die. Clay till I die, Cleveland. Mm -hmm. yeah. Till oh. I die, till I. That's MGK, I by the way. Who was there? Yeah, oh, that's right. Yeah, MGK oh, yeah. was there. Also, mm -hmm. uh, Travis Barker. Mm -hmm. Of course. Uh, nice little pop Megan pop Fox. stars watching the fights down there. Uh -huh. Megan Fox. They came in, gave Stipe a hug there. Not retiring. So he's going to get John Bones Jones and Ganu winner. Is that what's going to happen? The Stipe gets it? because John Bones Jones just tweeted out, just release me <laughs> after all day yesterday saying, all Dana's got to do is pay me. Yeah. Dana said, you know, a lot of people say they want to do things and then when it comes in, they don't do it. And John Bones Jones was like, hold the fuck on, pal. Yeah. You pay me, I'll come fight. Now he's saying, just release me. Drama controversy <laughs> happening with Bones Jones and Dana White. But everybody wants to see Bones and gone yep. yeah and then steve is like i'll watch that and then i would like the winner somehow mm -hmm. i'm gonna watch that and go i hope i never ever piss 
any of these men off. Stipe's like, I want whoever wins this one. Don't give me the loser. I want the winner, by the way. That would be massive. I got a chance to see old Bones Jones fight in, uh, in person. Really? In Baltimore. He did the whole Ray Lewis entrance thing. Ooh. It was massive. I, and by the time his fight had started, you know, his fights are like 1 a.m. You had about 80 beers by I that was, point. Yeah, I, was in a pretty good spot. I was in a pretty good spot. And we, AQ and I, it was AQ was playing for the Ravens at the time. We had pretty, and Arthur Jones, who is uh, John's brother, was playing for the Ravens at the time. We had pretty good access to whatever we wanted, basically. Mm -hmm. He was toying with this guy in this fight. He was holding his head, and then bang, the elbow was coming. I think he could have ended it five to six different times. There was a time when John Bones Jones was on a rocket ship up, greatest fighter of all time, most talented fighter of all time, deals with everybody. There was actually a thought by a lot of us, and I'm not just saying I made this up, but a lot of people, that John Bones Jones could potentially start doing what Floyd Mayweather was doing with boxing, where he started putting on his own. He was starting to become the UFC. Yeah. He was so big. Then some situations happened outside the cage, some failed tests happened, then some other things happened. But if John Bones Jones is in great shape, ready to fight, that dude is fucking unbelievable. Yeah. Make it happen. And also, I'd love to see him with like 30 pounds on that frame. Yeah, because he's, he's never fought right? heavyweight. Uh, 205. 205, yeah, he's small. Yeah. And he's a big guy. 6'6 six, yeah. six or whatever. Great dancer, too. Saw him at the after party. Mm -hmm. Ooh. Yeah, I walked into Jimmy's Famous Seafood of course. for the after party. I ordered 100 shots. <laughs> there was only like 35, 40 people at this after party. <laughs> to a piece. Here you go. Here yeah, we, go. Yep. we got after. It was a blast. They were very nice to me. I'm very thankful for that. But I would want to see Ingoyer Burns. Mm -hmm. Make it happen, Dana. We got a six minute break. We're back on the other side. Cheers.
players, throw some bowls to Red Panda, fly back to Indianapolis. Success story, Foxy. What a fucking title. A couple people, one college kid. Took a shot at my swag. Oh, oh yeah. We know. Oh, we know. We don't like that. I don't think a lot of people understand what swag is. You know, some of this younger generation thinks, you know, swag is just like the clothes I wear, or whatever. No, no, no. A swag is a mentality. Yeah. Swag yeah. is a mindset. I tried to tell this to some of the guys in the locker room this week. I said, swagger, which is what swag comes from. Swagger is a mindset. Swagger isn't that you have a supreme backpack on. <laughs> or that you have your shoes, you know, unlaced walking around with, you know, the, the you know, you got your new uh, Louis uh, fanny pack that you, you make sure it's not worn at your waist, it's worn over your shoulder. That's not swag. That's not swagger. That's fashion choices. True swag is owning your inner essence. Mm. It's a mindset. Mm-hmm. And my essence on the field is that I feel like I'm a throwback player really? and I'm a tough guy. What I've played through, how I wear my stuff, you know, I'm kind of a no-nonsense straightforward. To yes. me, that's what swag is all about. You're damn all right. All this like, fake swag out there. I got my special towel. I got this. Or I got that. I got this riding out there. A lot of you guys are just posing. <laughs> The Pat McAfee Show. There will be no rules for our guests, for us, for the things we can talk about. Yes, Speaking his mind. I've never had a problem expressing my opinions or my thoughts or anything like that. While being relatable. I haven't had that manufactured, fake-ass celebrity that a lot of people have whenever they go on those big networks. I've had a chance to really build my crew, build my following, build my audience. And ridiculous. What am I supposed to do? So I'm supposed to look at something that I can definitely afford and say, nah. Nope. Nope. Is that what I'm supposed to do? The Pat McAfee Show starts in three, three two, two, one. Welcome back to that show. Monday, March 29th, 2021 years after the birth of Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, dude. Yeah. Hour three that will feature Sugar Sean O'Malley in yeah. 22 minutes or so. Uh, We'll begin with a man named AJ Hoff joining us. Okay. Wow. Hey, oh, no. Is that your own? Is that your own? What is that? Does that say A for AJ? Uh, I mean, it could for Aaron, my first name, but I guess it's Adidas. Oh. No, Adidas is on the other side. Yeah. 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 Well, I think it's. Oh, that's yeah. not the right. Oh, did yeah, you I put had, that? I had on? a special made, yeah, specially made for myself. Yeah. Did you? Re- is the J below no. it? <laughs> no. Look, this is a patch. I guess you can change it out. I don't know. Look at this. So you? Oh, so you did? Oh, so you, yeah. Nice. So you did? How many letters? No, this you is get? how it was sent to me. Bro, that is so dope and innovative, bro. How is your whole thing yeah. just one of those Velcro things? Like, <laughs> can you put that anywhere? No, it ha- it's like a jumpsuit. It has the matching pants and everything. Can you Ooh. just put that A though, like on your collarbone? If I. If I glued some more Velcro to the different parts of the coat, yeah. Oh, so you glued oh. the Velcro to that so you can no, Velcro that this is too. how it wow. came. I'm sure you can buy it on the Adidas site. <laughs> <laughs> how do you, know, you know you can glue it anyway? <laughs> I mean, what a start. <laughs> As you're waiting to do a read. No, no, no. Ah. There's actually some really good shit going on. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I thought. Oh, I thought this was the good stuff. Not a, well. Sorry to the serious listeners. AJ has a jacket on that's very fast yeah. right now. I just realized it has a patch. That's yeah. Velcro. Boy. We still have ads for that jacket. I have no idea. I think we should think about it, especially if he could put that thing. Imagine if on one he had A and then oh. J. Oh, oh, oh man, God. to the on the front. Oh, Come good. On. let's do it. All right, all right. <laughs> Hugh Jackson. Okay, former head coach. Did you play on a team that Hugh Jackson was a part of? Do you know him personally? Yeah, Hugh was the offensive coordinator during my season in Cincinnati. Okay, so you know Hugh. We know Hugh. Okay, mm-hmm. we love Hugh. Mm-hmm. Hugh's, you all right? 
Yeah, I'm a huge Hugh guy. Hugh's <laughs> appearances on Hard Knocks did not paint him in the greatest light, okay? He, though, since leaving the Cleveland Browns, uh, I think in my eyes, complete rebound on his entire image. I'm a big Hugh Jackson guy now. He's yeah. dominated on our show. He's done very well on our show. He's releasing a book, I guess. He's doing an interview right now with ESPN Cleveland. And at ESPN Cleveland is tweeting out quotes from this interview with Hugh Jackson in Cleveland. You know? Hey, there's some shit going on. He's releasing a book, and there's going to be – I think it's going to be a long book. I think yeah. there's a lot – here's some of the um, – here's some of the quotes. Uh, Hugh Jackson on being blamed for the Browns losing seasons. I think I became the fall guy because that was the narrative. There's no doubt I was lied to by ownership and leadership of the team, says Hugh Jackson. Ooh, wow. Hugh Jackson would go on to say, they were going to be football plus analytics, but it was football versus analytics. Classic battle right now. Uh, after 0-16, and, and no one knows this, I was given a contract extension, Whoa. Hugh Jackson says, in Cleveland. Hugh Jackson would then say... Uh, I got a contract extension at 1-23 and midway through the season. I wanted to go public with it, but the Browns did not. He also would say on the A.J. McCarron trade, the one that famously did not go through because of a faxing issue, they said, I stood there with Jimmy, said, get it done. The owner said, do this, and the paperwork didn't get done. I know the paperwork went from uh brown to chris cooper and it didn't get done he continued to say i took the job on it now that was the uh my vision not through analytics leading the charge uh you think i didn't know who that player was was i happy with that pick absolutely not talking about cody kessler um that's what happens when analytics get involved the browns got better when they brought in real football players once john dorsey became the gm okay on todd haley being the offensive coordinator hugh jackson said on espn cleveland the big show i think it was the biggest mistake I ever made. That was a bad marriage. I never should have done that. I'm excited where the Browns are headed for their fans and players. Um, who am I throwing under the bus? He says, <laughs> this is the truth. In order for any coach to win or succeed, you have to give him the necessary tools to do that. And more and more and more, uh, more and more and more. This book, I think is going to be pretty, pretty deep over there. AJ. It sounds like he's uh, definitely trying to sell some books, but is he still like actively trying to get back into coaching? Do we know? He said it's not about that. He does not care, actually. It was actually well, one of those tweets would, that we skipped over we should have said. Wouldn't you think I, – I would imagine reading these tweets and putting the book out that he's – He's not worried, like, hey, this may keep me from getting another job. Like, he's thinking, this is like my new path. Yeah, it seems like he's past the coaching thing. Yeah. yeah. You know what mm -hmm. I mean? Plus, that tequila is oh, damn good. Yeah. Good business right now. Doesn't he still kind of do something at Arizona State, or was that just last year? Consulting or something? Yeah. He's out there? Because mm -hmm. him and Herm? Right. Good friends. And Marvin. And Marv's there, Marv, too. Yeah. Right. You know, it's like, oh, shit. Anytime you read one of those books, well, okay, let's go back. Anytime somebody writes one of those books, they know that there's a chance on the other end of this thing, there's a firestorm. Mm -hmm. oh, yeah. Like, will the Browns answer any of this, I wonder? And should we have a much different viewpoint of how it went down in Cleveland with you, with, you know, potentially learning behind the scenes? I guess that's why he's writing the book, right? Yeah, he wants to, I guess he wants to let everybody else know what he was dealing with behind the scenes. But, I mean, unfortunately, I don't think he's going to gain a bunch of sympathy. Like, do you think people are going to turn and say, oh, he was right. Like, nobody had a chance there. He, he may be right. Like, any coach that was there at that time, maybe they didn't have a chance. But what, he won one game? Is that it? One in 23 there, mm -hmm. yeah, or one in 32. One in 31, right? Is that what he went in two years? Oh, something along those yeah. lines. It yeah. wasn't good. We know that. Could you imagine how miserable that place was? Oh, my God. And them fighting, and them fighting between the analytics people and then the yeah. coaches and how they scout. Like, I bet that was – I bet they hate each other. Remember, he was not told who they were drafting because the the report oh, was that he would leak it to the media. Yeah. That's what they said. <laughs> he was 336-1 and one over oh. two and a half seasons, I'm getting told in my Damn. Winning percentage of 8.8%. Hey, hey, that's a big percentage, depending oh, wow. upon what other percentages you're <laughs> yeah, doing. That's true. You know what I mean, AJ? So hey, you're telling me the analytics people said, like, we're not going to tell – the head coach, the face of our organization, who we're going to draft because we're worried he will leak this to the press. Like, that's how they thought when he was there. Yeah, allegedly that was the story is Hugh Jackson was leaking the terrible decisions that were being made behind the scenes to the media because I'd assume – now, we don't know if any of this is true or not, by the way. And maybe this will be in the book, but – 
I bet you Browns fans are very thankful that they're at the place that they're currently at. Mm -hmm. How do we think this book will do? Who's going to buy it? Probably a bestseller. I mean, I think I might get it. It sounds like it would be a a quick, entertaining read or listen. Whether uh, Hopefully Hugh actually does the audio book. Are you going to read it? I might I might download and listen to it. Yeah, you do that. You do a lot of listening to books and stuff. Yeah, I enjoy listening to books, especially like something like this. You can listen to pretty quickly and it'll be entertaining. I think. So you put it on like two X or whatever. No, I don't. I don't do that. I'm not trying to. I'm not trying to hack my reading life like the idiots do on the internet. Okay, so oh. <laughs> idiots on the internet Jeez. is. Mm-hmm. I don't mean like I mean when people want to tell you. Haven't you ever had anyone tell you that? Hey, you know what I do? Listen to the book. 2.5. I'm like, okay, cool. Like, what are we trying to do? If I was cramming okay. for a test, maybe, but not when I want to enjoyably listen to something. Yeah, I, I leisurely listen. I understand what you're saying. I'm just telling you, I've never had that conversation because I've never listened to a book in my life. So I'm not <laughs> yeah. sure I've had the interaction, but it sounds in. So what do you do in the morning for your workout? You just put a book in there? That's what you just do? And are the <laughs> authors of the books, are they reading the book themselves? Sometimes I, I think it's best when the author does read the book. Yeah. Do the characters get involved? Do they have different voices too when oh. the characters speak? Uh, the uh, books I have listened to, no, there's really only been one voice. That's you know, usually idea. the author will, if they're playing That's different characters, they change their voice. Like you would be good. If you wrote a book, it would be great to listen to you read it. That would be the first book I've ever read too. In yeah, people, yeah. people would hear me reading my first ever book. <laughs> Why would I say that? Wow, wow that's a pretty good story. <laughs> that, doesn't seem, that doesn't seem right. Yeah, it was actually. I didn't know you were a big book guy. That's. I, I mean, mean I, I wouldn't you. say I'm a big book person, but I enjoy. I, I definitely search them out and like to. I listen to a lot of them. Now it's the problem is when you listen to them, it's harder and harder to actually sit down and actually read legit yeah. old school real book well that's my thing about the whole like movie thing if it's a good book it'll become a movie yeah but the book's better i get it but i got other shit to do I, it's like, usually not it's not how many in what, how many instances is the book better i to be honest i couldn't even tell you once i'm asking ty ty would know ty's read a lot of books <laughs> ty, you read a lot of books yeah i mean there's a there's a couple but any more you know you don't really need to like i i think of the great gatsby i think that oh, book is oh, better than the so movie well, yeah, classic, did not yeah. do it justice american classic oh my god but no, yeah, for the most part. Pulls the book. Yeah. The movie is going to be better than the book. But anyways, I'm not saying you shouldn't read books. I'm just telling you that I've never done it. And it's one of those things where I've gotten, I've gotten where I'm at. I read a lot of the internet. I can read if I have to. But boy. You, read it, you don't have to read books. Haven't you heard anyone says, like, just read anything. If you read a newspaper, you're not, there's no newspapers. But if you read a magazine. It's doing things like that. Nah, I read tweets. Yeah, all Twitter's day. the modern day newspaper. All day, yeah. I just read tweets. My inner monologue has ADD, so like it just gets lost. In the tweets or in, in the book? In books, in general, yeah. Yeah, once I get past, I, I think I've given it a go a couple times, but boy, once I get like a page and a half, two pages in, yeah, like, wow. I really start to wonder about a potential other book that's happening. Yeah. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's why a tweet I'm pretty good at. It's like, uh, you know, some people just watch music videos all day because it's three and a half minutes and mm-hmm. they just move along. You know what I mean? That's kind of, that's where I'm at whenever it comes a book i didn't know that was a thing just sitting watching music videos all day long oh, yeah. yeah i had a roommate uh, he lived at right next door in college played on our team you go into his house guaranteed music videos were on <laughs> nice don't have to pay attention man just turn the page <laughs> <laughs> it was awesome it was fucking awesome i bet you he yeah. still does it to this day he's a grown adult um hey 17 game seasons happening this is something we've talked i I feel like in hour three of the show, you and I have talked about this. We've been talking about this for a long time. Every time somebody gives out a record, like next year they might go 10 and 6, 10 and 7, 10 and 7, or are they going 11 and 6? Two different things. Now that it's becoming a reality here by the end of the week, allegedly, is what's being reported, I think a lot of players are starting to stare down the barrel of what reality is about to be. 17 games is a lot of games. And each player will get a 1 17th of their salary bonus on the date of the 17th game so it'll not affect the salary cap or whatever but this is uh this is a big this is a much bigger deal than it's been i think portrayed right now yeah it is and it's easy to sit there and say what do you mean it's just one more game like what's one more week gonna do but yeah in the grand scheme it it is it's it's a lot more to think of mentally to lean into the season but well how do you think players feel when they see quotes from from bruce arians telling them how camp like hey we're gonna kill these guys in camp like it's gonna be a tough one okay so funny you said that we actually have the clip shout out to um loose cannons the podcast who had bruce arians on the clip goes as such okay our guys know the message and again the leadership shaq's already said it uh he's hungry as hell that when our guys come back and that's my job 
I'm going to beat the shit out of them. <laughs> we're going back to basics, and we're going to have one hell of a training camp and uh, and and know where we what our foundation is. Okay, so shout out to the Loose Cannons yeah. podcast, but that's a notorious thing for Bruce Arian. Bruce Arian's training camps are a motherfucker. Like, that is just something that yeah. is very well known. I have, My sources have told me who have potentially gone through seven of Bruce Arians' training <laughs> camps throughout their career that that is just a very normal thing. That is why I think Bruce is not worried at all if they were to have a terrible year this past year or a Super Bowl winning year this past year. Bruce Arians' training camps are known to be a mother. Like, they are going hard. They're going to the ground in some phases. They're going five, six days full pass straight they're doing that whole thing and then the last week leading up to the season he gives the vets like the week off like hey now you build yourself up here we go but that's kind of like a, a b-a-m-o almost and uh i enjoy the fact that he on loose cannons podcast he was like if they don't know if they're new to the team this is how this is going to go we are going to have a hard ass training camp and i think that's just kind of a normal thing for him yeah, I think it's good, too, for players to have a, a healthy fear. Of it. And Bruce knows by putting it out there that players, they hear that, they instantly, like, it's always in the back of their mind. For the rest of the offseason, then can't, the week leading up to camp, they're like, all right, man, just can't be three any, weeks. Can't just be any worse. Weeks. Can't be any worse than it was last year, right? Can't no. be. Can't be. That, that's the conversation that's happened in my – he can't do anything worse than what we did. Like, no way, right? Allegedly, there was a wedding this past weekend where a member of the Buccaneers was there. And when this statement came out, there was quite a conversation amongst the Buccaneers there. It's like, no way. Like, it can't be, can't be worse. It can't be worse than what it was last year. I guess Bruce Arians, hard training camp. Andy Reid, known difficult training camp. And I guess Harbaugh is also a difficult training camp or whatever. It's kind of like known around there. There was always those rumors that made it their way into like the coach training camp. It was like, do you hear what blah, blah, blah is doing over and blah, blah, blah. It could be much worse. But I guess Andy Reid, uh, BA and Harbaugh do take it to another level. Doesn't, isn't Tomlin known to have a tough camp too? Yeah, it's also up there at St. Vincent's, which is a university around town down there. They get after him. Yeah, training guy. Did you guys have a did you guys have a uh, conditioning test to lead off training camp? Uh, we went through a couple different tests that we had, and then eventually we didn't really have a test. We had like individual specific kind of running. Yeah, we had. I think it was like two years. There was a test or whatever it came out of nowhere. I did not know what to expect. <laughs> Jeez. I did not. It just came out of nowhere. What are you doing? What was the test? Yeah. It was, uh, I think it was 150s. I think it was 150s, I think. I forget. Vinatieri and I wheeled our way into running with the offensive line. So nice. there's smart. no way we we're going to fail that thing. Yeah. But I was smart. watching. I was like, I think I could have went with the mids. I think I could have went with the mids. Mm. I think I could have. I don't have to, but I think next year I could. Then the next year came, we had to do it. I went right back with those offensive lines. Yeah. <laughs> Let's go ahead and just Smart. walk this one. Let's go ahead and walk this one. Those, hey, yeah, go ahead. Do you, do you think about that? So that clip of Bruce Aarons, do you think Roger Goodell and the NFL is actively trying to scrub that from the internet because it doesn't help the whole narrative with the players for the 17-game season? Hey, B.A., we got fucking 17 games. You can't be saying you're going to beat the shit out of these guys. <laughs> okay, B.A., you're the Super Bowl champ now. I mean, you were tampering with free agents at your Super Bowl mm -hmm. parade. I mean, you're like, come on, what's going on? <laughs> Imagine if Roger Goodell was not happy about it at all. 17 games, though, I think we're going to learn a lot about. That's just one more opportunity for a potential key player to have something happen right before the most important. Now, the, the matchups are pretty dope, though. Yeah. AFC versus NFC. Uh, every team, 17th game, is based on the ratings uh, or the rankings within their division from uh, 2019 season, I guess, which is when I think the Patriots were in third place. No, yep. Yeah, third, third place. Division, yep. So they're going against third place in another division. And you got some big-time games. Green Bay and Kansas City are playing. That's huge. It is, um, okay, it, it is huge, but what if both of the – both of them already are locked up, and Aaron and Pat Mahomes don't play. Well, is it necessarily definitely the 18th week? Oh, yeah. Is it? I don't think, right? Well, no, I guess you can shove it in anywhere. Oh, but it yeah. is kind of all laid out right here. Yeah. Mm. AFC so is this the pre-playoffs game? Like, do we already have week 18 already locked in he does say it's the 17th game so it's probably it has to be the no 18th. it just no because that could that be just, one of seven it is one of yeah. 17 but i but when they first were talking about it wasn't that what we thought they were doing is the last week of the season before the playoffs was what these like showcase games yeah yeah huh 
I mean, that would make sense. Imagine the TV money if that was a part of it. That's why it's 11 years, 110 billion. Yeah. Oh, by the way, you, we, yeah, we have Wild Card Weekend, but think about this before then. We got Showcase Weekend. <laughs> what do you mean? Yeah, the AFC's playing the NFC. Yeah. We're having uh, interconference matchups that won't happen or only happen once every five years or something like that. That's right going into Wild Card Weekend, which, by the way, three and three, and then we got another one and then another one. Oh, yeah. And they got Amazon Bezos. He's like, all right, fucking egg. Here. All right. Here's a bazillion dollars. Take it. All right. ESPN's like, here, you got it, bro. Just give us a couple more options, maybe. Boom, boom, boom. What a move by them. And the players are just sitting there getting a 117th bonus. <laughs> That's the funny thing. Like, how does that work out? And also, when are they going to expand the playoffs? Don't you think they're going to add another one? Yeah, because they did last this past year. They did right. Mm -hmm. They I did know. this. I think they're going to expand even more because that's think that's those are the money games. Hey, by the way, Super Wild Card Weekend was oh, oh, man. so sweet. It was so yeah, sweet. Best. Like, are people going to really complain if they add another playoff game? Do you think? Uh the players, the players will. Yeah, right. <laughs> I think, and actually, no, because you get a chance to make the playoffs, so it's a win-win. Yeah. And chat, you get extra money that you weren't counting on. And the fans get another game. Guess what? You get to play in England. This will be called the European playoff game. Oh. It's like a play-in game. You basically get it. They'll oh, man. that would be awesome. Maybe well, a play-in game yeah, in play -in Europe. Game in Europe, and they go back to the top two yeah. teams getting a bye. Yeah, right? and then by the way, move this thing back three more weeks. Do the Super Bowl in March. Yeah. Oh my Here God. We go. March Madness. Oh. oh. Let's get to a break. <laughs> Why are we so fucking ridiculous? Come on. Just have to be. Hey, Sugar Sean's on the other side. Let's go. Awesome. I'm a big fan, man. <laughs> yeah, me too. I think what, he's... What's why that? did you just hit a jumper? Well, he did. Oh, wow. He's so you uh, uh, did watching, you watch, dude? bro? Yeah, I know. I, I, you obviously did not look the same as he did, but okay. Uh, okay. Do a little research here in the next four <laughs> minutes. <laughs> All right, you, you did an MMA show, I think, on Sirius yeah, for a while. Yeah, jeez, dude. Come on. I've never done anything except for lose vast amount of money betting on friends of the show who potentially lose. Yeah. That was a tough way to wake up. I felt so bad for Steve. I man. know. Me too. Seems to be in good spirits, though. He's coming back. Mm -hmm. I'm going to bet on him again, too, by the way. Hell yeah. Sugar Sean O'Malley's on the other side. You got about four minutes. Be a friend. Tell a friend. Cheers. I love Hawaii, man. Every time I go there, now granted, you make a Pro Bowl, you think you're going to Hawaii. Instead, <laughs> we went to the desert in Arizona. And then the next time I made a uh, Pro Bowl, it was in Orlando. I was like, I'm out. I mean, come on. Were you the first group that they stopped doing in Hawaii? Uh, yeah, I think it was like first or second group, of course. Of course. <laughs> Worked my entire life to get to. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's an honor. <laughs> it, it wasn't, though. I, no. I completely understand why guys don't go. It's like uh, Tom Brady sitting out for another Pro Bowl. He's like, yeah, he doesn't want to drive three hours into the desert right now. They'll go practice. <laughs> they go wherever he wants. Yeah, and then the games, they need to make it just a, a bunch of competitions. They need to make it a bunch of contests, mm -hmm. like the 40, everything like that, the bench. Bring back the bench for the offensive linemen. Get an eating contest in there. Mm. Get the kickers to do a kicking contest. Get the punters to do a punting contest. Have that quarterback challenge that I watched on NFL Network just a couple months ago. Have that happen again for the long ball. You get Josh Allen, Patrick Mahomes in there. You get Tom Brady, Aaron Rodgers throwing maybe on an accuracy mm. challenge. I like the little games that they set up for the quarterbacks. By the way, I would have went to the one in Orlando. I actually said I would go if they would have let me compete in the quarterback uh, little carnival thing they had. And they told me no. And I was like, well, I'm not going. There. Who makes that decision, the NFL? Yeah, I got an actual letter that said no. And I was like, well, I retire and I'm not coming. <laughs> we regret to inform you that you are not allowed to participate in the I, quarterback. I think I would do well in that thing, by the way. I think I would do very well in it. Everything is like right in my range. Like the deep ball, I think, is like 40 yards. For me, that's a f literal, that's my actual flick of the wrist. Like, you know how you watch those dude perfect videos? Oh, yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. yeah. And it takes them, I don't know, who, who knows how many Thousands. <laughs> I mean, I'm not going to judge them. A lot of other people do. <laughs> people say it takes them 4,000 attempts. But if you, if you throw the ball as far as you can and it lands, then you just put a trash can there. You're like, all right, I'm just going to throw this as hard as I can again. And then it's like science is basically making you yeah. hit that. Great way to do it. In that particular quarterback carnival that they do, everything is right in my like wheelhouse, like I was built for it. And I told Conte, the Colts PR guy, I had a dislocated kneecap at the time, I was supposed to get surgery. He was like, are you gonna play in the Pro Bowl? Cause I had like a $250,000 bonus on the Pro Bowl or not. I was like, I made the Pro Bowl, I should get my bonus. And he was like, well, technically in your contract, it says you have to play in the Pro Bowl. I'm like, 
am I allowed to do that quarterback challenge? They're like, no. I'm like, no, I'm not doing it. <laughs> <laughs> Jim Irsay still paid me, by the way. What a guy. As he's a good dude. Yeah, as he should, by the way. No, no, I don't think he should. Because the contract technically said, like, people say billionaires stay billionaires because they're stingy with their money. He could have not paid me. He chose to pay me. Mm -hmm. Good guy. That's why I think the Detroit Lions just huh. hated Calvin Johnson. Giving the old white guys something to complain about. It's the Pat McAfee Show. Welcome back to that show. Joining us now is a man who has a 13 and one record fighting other humans. Woo. He's also the host of the Timbo Sugar Show, which is a podcast that you would enjoy the hell out of. In this past weekend, he knocked at another human. Ladies and gentlemen, Sugar Sean O'Malley. Yeah. How are you, man? Dude, I'm I'm doing good. You you miss me? You misspoke. It's thirteen and zero. No, okay, that's on me. Thirteen and zero. That one time yeah. didn't happen. Um, how are you, brother? How are you feeling a couple of days after the fight? What a performance by you! Thank you. I feel good. Um, my hands are a little sore and my shins are a little sore, but other than that, man, I can't complain. Okay, I always wondered with you fighters. Okay, because you know when I'm at a bar. And they have that thing that comes down, tells me how strong my punch is. You know what I mean? Yeah. And, you know, a little intoxicated. And you hit that thing a little bit wrong. You feel like you break something in your hand. You know what I mean? You just feel like the next day you're an idiot. What happened? Oh, I was drunk fighting that thing. I always wondered, how do you, do you make your hands tougher? Is this, you can just punch whatever? You got cinder blocks as hands? Or do you break your hand whenever you're, you know, breaking people's faces professionally? Oh, no. I'm going to... I, I keep cutting in and out. Oh, and no. Gonna, hold on. Hold little, on. Maybe I turn off the Wi-Fi or something. Maybe the internet connection will be better. Hey, we'll call you back. Um, I think we're good. I think we're good now. Let me, are you guys good? Yeah, yeah. Are you yeah. good? Uh, my Dude, it's nice when you, you get a good wrap, though. Before the fight, you wrap your hands, and, uh, you know, that saves it. If we didn't wrap our hands, you know, definitely we'd be, uh, you know, probably breaking more. But, no, honestly, my hands feel really good. Um but yeah, they, they they feel good. Hey, when are we gonna get you a championship? You know, you're you're 13 and 0, undefeated. When are we going for it? Because your clip, uh, your quote after the fight, I only get 15 minutes to perform. I got to do something sweet or something like that. I was like, this guy is maybe my favorite fighter I've ever seen in my entire life. You view it as like, hey, I got to do something sweet. You could have done it a couple times. You knock him out. I want you to be champion. Let's make you the face of UFC here. That's the plan. That's the plan. The, 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 the real thing, the real reason what happened is uh, before the fight, I had undefeated shirts made up that say a right hand, another right hand from Sugarland. So I dropped them in the first round, but I dropped them with a left hand. <laughs> I, wasn't, I wasn't walking away because I didn't, uh, because I thought I'd walk off knocked out. I was walking away to let him back up so I could drop him out with the right hand so I could sell my shirt. <laughs> Which I, which are doing absolutely incredible uh, <laughs> right now. How can I buy that shirt? How can I buy it? Sugarshop.co. Um, merch is merch is a beautiful thing, man. Hey, man. <laughs> hey speaking of merch, are you gonna get uh, Dana White to, to wear one of your shirts? I know he said he called what you did a masterpiece uh, Saturday night, and how does that feel coming from him? 
yeah, it's, it's always fun to, uh, to the, there's only, there's only one person I need in, in the building to perform for and that's Dana. Um, it was nice though, because my last, uh, two fights before that were also in the apex, but there was no, it was like silent when I knocked out Eddie Wineland, it was, it was just like completely silent. And then, uh, when I knocked out him, you know, there was a little bit of a, um, fan reaction. So it felt good to have somewhat fans back, but. I, I need to knock someone out in an arena packed full of people. Okay, so I was about to ask because the UFC and mixed martial arts with no fans, it almost made the viewing experience at home. You know, we got a chance to hear the corner yelling. Every single shot was louder. For you, how you're, you're ready to get back in front of, you know, I think they got like 15,000 down in Jacksonville here yeah. in about a month. It's about to happen. You, you kind of live off of that energy or was it like with no fans, did it affect you at all? Or did, was it just something you're done with? No, I can perform anywhere. I'm a high level performer. That's what I train for. That's what I. That's just what I do. I perform and when when the lights are lights are on and, and that cage is locked. I, I can perform anywhere. But the after the fight, after the after the knockout, that's what I miss when the fans go crazy. Um, you know, I've had two viral knockouts where it's just there hasn't been any any uh, any crate like that. Like I said, that last one there was a little bit more of a reaction. Um, but I want I want the the roof to blow off the place. <sighs> I fucking love you, dude. Yeah. Hey, I, I love that. Like, when you're going into the fight, first of all, you must have felt very confident. You knock him down with a left hand. You're like, whoa, 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 whoa. Fucking merch now, pal. <laughs> yeah. whoa, whoa, whoa. That was supposed to be a setup there. Is that, in that fight, is there a strategy, game plan? What is all, as soon as you get into that cage, is it, is it get slowed down? Do you black out? I guess not because you're trying to sell merch in there. What is the, the mindset before a fight like that? Um, I go into I go into all my fights very calm. I think it's the best way to prepare for, or uh, to prep for war and to get ready to go to war because it really is a, it's a dangerous sport in there. As we saw, I completely murdered that dude. It's kill or be killed. So I'm going in there with a calm mind that I, I you know there's very limited thinking, you know just enough to know I got to sell the merch, but also I'm, in, I'm flowing in there. I'm in there. I'm flowing. That's the that's the highest level of a flow state. I'm in there. I was very confident going into this fight. I knew that kid was um, 20 and four or something like that, and he's a very good striker. And uh, I knew he wasn't going to be able to take me down, so it was going to be a 15-minute kickboxing match. And there's not very many people that can outstrike me. So uh, going into that fight, I was very confident. Um, and once I dropped him, I, you know, I I, I went and rewatched the fight. The commentators were saying it was the biggest mistake of my life, and I'm just this young kid. I'm just I need to mature. I'm 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 not smart enough in there. And I'm thinking I've been doing this for 10 years. I'm pretty mature as far as you know, a professional fighter. Uh, I've been striking for a long time, and I just didn't feel in any danger in there. I didn't. If I wanted to get on him and get a TKO finish, I could have jumped on him and, and, and did that in the first round. That's not what I'm in there for. I'm in there to put people's lights out, and I want to go viral. I, I have, like I said, I have 15 minutes in there. Why why end him in in three minutes in the first round when I can you know I'm still having fun in there I just broke a sweat I'm just starting to have to breathe out of my mouth I was nasal breathing that whole time so I, I need to get in there and, and have some fun um you only get a fight a couple times a year it takes so long it takes eight weeks to get into that good of shape I'm not gonna you know my last three fights were were three first round finishes one of them I got finished but fuck it was still a first round I didn't get a fight you know too long so uh, I was in there trying to bust someone's head up I wish the commentators yeah, I mean, what a moment that would have been. Yeah. I think he's letting him up because <laughs> yeah. the shirt, I mean, if we get technical here, he already has them printed up. Like, what a business. You said I had no fear in there. God, let's put the fucking strap on this guy. Mm -hmm. What do you yes. have, Connor? Yeah, Sean, uh, how long until you get back in the ring? Because you just mentioned it takes about eight weeks to uh, get back into shape. And also, who's next for you? Yeah, that, that's been the question uh you know, the second after you fight, the next question is who's next. And um, a lot of I, – I heard Dominic Cruz mm. text Chael Sonnen saying he wants that fight. Mm. So I don't know if Chael got a, got a prank text from a fake Dom or if that's real. Um, you know, that's, that's a potential matchup. I know Dustin Poirier tweeted the other day, July 10th. So I think, you know, I'm a, pr I'm a pretty good co-main event type dude. So Dustin versus Connor. Sugar versus Dominic. I don't know. That makes sense. That might be it. July, we'll see. Um, 
But yeah, I, I definitely want to get in there a couple more times this year. Let's go. Yeah. Okay, that'll be a huge card, obviously. Uh, in the Sugar Show, by the way, co-main eventing. Oh. oh, for a Connor fight, which is the promos you two motherfuckers would have. <laughs> oh my God, that would be awesome. You've been fighting for 10 years, you said, because you took um, obviously some offense to them saying you're young, you don't know. How did you get to that? Because you debuted in 2017, right? How did you get into the fight game? Were you a wrestler, kickboxer? What were you before you got into mixed martial arts? I, pl I played basketball, football, baseball, soccer from when I was you know, three years old till high school. And then you all have all of a sudden have to start getting good grades to play sports. And I'm like, what the fuck is this? <laughs> and then I found kickboxing where you don't have to get good grades to play school sports. So I started kickboxing um, when I was 16 years old. Had four fights that year, um, kickboxing fights, amateur, and just just fell in love with it. Um, you know, I didn't like jiu-jitsu. I didn't like wrestling at all. I just liked the st the striking aspect of it. Um, I turned 18, had an MMA fight. And, uh, you know, I ended up falling in love with the whole sport of MMA, moved down to Phoenix. And um, when I was 19 years old and I've been here for the last, you know, seven, eight years, just, just grinding two a days, getting better and improving a lot. Will you take a couple of days off now or are you right back in there because potential July 10th around the corner? To my shins are hurt. My shins hurt so bad from kicking him in the head. <laughs> like they, like I, it, I'm wall. I'm like walking. I'm limping around. Um, so I'm gonna have to take a few days off. But you know, I, I eat super clean outside of camp. I have a hot tub, a cold plunge at home. Mm. I literally, and I, I tell people this, they don't understand. I cold plunge. I get in the fucking cold plunge every single night for three minutes, and it's uh, you know, for re I'm recovering every night so I can train again in the morning. Um, but as far as being able to train this week, I don't know. We'll, we'll see how my legs feel. Yeah, that's supposed to flush out all the bad shit, I guess, those cold plunges. It's a a terrible experience. You're doing it every single night. To to toughen up the shins, uh, I've seen movies. You kick bamboo trees, right? That's what you're, oh, supposed yeah. to, you're supposed to kick bamboo trees. Just something to think about. <laughs> I'll have to order a bamboo tree. I don't know if you can do that. <laughs> I'll send it on over, Ty. What do you have? Sean, is there like a method that you prefer to knock a guy out with like you were just talking about your shins and everything like is it more satisfying putting a guy to sleep with your hands or kicking him in the head and knocking him out i've knocked i've knocked a lot of people out in my days with uh i've knocked people out with my feet i've knocked people out with my shins i've knocked people out with uh both my hands i don't think i've ever knocked someone out with uh elbows or mm. knees but um it's just 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 the putting someone's lights out where there's no question that you're the man that you that you dominated the fight that, it, that it's completely over so yes yeah, just knocking them out it doesn't really matter how but not a tko not where the ref stops it and the guy's kind of coming up just i want that dude to be out not not to have any you know to be done no questions asked well, you guys all seem to have this trait inside of you that when it appears as if the other human is dead you know what i mean like it appears as if they are dead on. There's a, this reaction from you guys to kind of, now granted, walk off. You're a walk off hitter, but is that just because there's a chance that that fight is going to continue? Like, why is that? Is that just a natural instinct to get another shot on? Why does that happen? I don't know. Well, I don't know if you're familiar with my fight against Eddie Wineland, are you? Yeah, yeah. No. You, I, I knocked, knocked him out completely cold and I just dipped. I turned around and left. <laughs> was this was last year, July 6th. Oh, yeah, um, I do remember that. I do remember that. I, I hit him, and he, I knew. I felt his soul when I hit his chin. Like, his soul left. So I knew I didn't hit him again. When Thomas, when I hit Thomas with that left hand, and he kind of rolled over, like, he was, I looked in his eyes before I threw that punch, and he was, he was there-ish. He was there enough to look at me to where I knew the ref wasn't going to stop it. He was looking at me, just didn't have any control of anything. Like he just, I knew he was done, but I had to put one more, one more in there. Um, and you know what, it's not even, I didn't, I don't know if I really enjoyed doing that. I do, right after I'm like, damn it, that probably took a couple of years off his life. Um, so it doesn't, I, I don't know, man, it's a sport we're in. I do have compassion right after. I do, I, I legitimately felt bad I, I you know i don't want to it's the game we're in i do love knock people out but i also feel bad it's a weird mix yeah you're not the only one by the way it's the game you're it's literally the sport you're in what do you have aj hey speaking of of uh you know taking somebody's soul were you able to to stay around and, and watch francis and ganu take on stipe and 
how scary is Francis? And do you think he will fight John Jones? Oh my, dude, yeah, Francis, dude, I, I was so nervous going into that fight. Stipe is one of the nicest guys ever. I've only met him a couple times, but just watching him, you know, on the embeddeds and stuff, and and, and meeting him in person, he's so nice. He's a he's a firefighter, and uh, you know, we'll go, he beat Francis once. When I heard they were having a rematch, I was like, God damn it! I just Francis is a scary dude, and um, it, it sucks to see Stipe go out like that, but. Uh, John Jones cl- claims, and I believe him, he says he's not scared of Francis, but I don't know, man, because I'm pretty fucking terrified of Francis. So. <laughs> <laughs> but I'm not John Jones either, so, they're, they're, you know. Is there that, any, that's an interesting fight. Is it when you're fighting, I assume just like, uh, I don't know how much you know about the NFL, Joe Thomas told us that every season, even the one where they won 0 and 16, he thought they were potentially going to win the Super Bowl. You know what I mean? Like he thought we're going to win a Super Bowl. He's bought in as a member of the Cleveland Browns. They're going to win the Super Bowl. For you, at what point do you realize that you have the plan to beat the person? Like, are you watching film on them? Is it early in the, the the training camp? Is it when you see them in the stare down? Whenever you stare through? Them? At what point do you know? Like, okay, I'm going to win. This is a winning fight for me. Um, you know, the, the, that confidence comes from putting in the work in the training camp. So, you know, you name anybody on the roster right now, you tell me I'm fighting them. I'm, I know I can knock them out. Like, I know I have, you know, the, the, pot, the options to knock them out. So, uh, really just with the skills that I have right now, I believe I could knock out anybody in my division. So, but, the, but the real confidence to just be able to, you know, cl- tell people that. A lot of people don't want to say, I'm going to go in there and knock this dude out because they don't want to look stupid. They don't want to end up losing the fight and then have that video out there. You know what I mean? So a lot of people just don't want to look look stupid. Um, But I'm confident in my skills. I I truly believe I could knock out anybody in the division. And I thought I was going to be in the NFL when I was in like sixth grade. So... Hey, I feel like you probably could have made it, man. I feel like you could have made it. (laughs) Yeah, I don't don't know, man. I I didn't grow as much as I thought I would. How tall are you? 5'11". 5'11", and you walk around every day weighing what? Um, 155. How's the cut? Is it tough? Or is that just something you got to know you're used to? Yeah, they're, they're, it's, you know, every single, every, every weight cut's tough. It's, uh, you know, the last 10 pounds are always rough. You know, I always look pretty fucking sucked down when I get on the scale. <laughs> and, uh, but I always fill out really well. I always fill out really well. And, uh, you know, I do it, I do it as much, I do it as, as healthy as I can, uh, it's definitely there's no way your your body feels like you're fucking dying. Your heart beats and then you're just laying there like it's a weird feeling, but it's it's somewhat enjoyable in, in a weird way. Yeah, you accomplish something that is damn near impossible, so that's probably a, a good fulfilling feeling. Uh, when you see the picture of yourself on the scale, you always go, hey, "That guy looks fucking terrible." Is that what you think when you see the photo? <laughs> yeah, I'm like, damn, it's it, it's weird to go because you're only a, I'm only 136 pounds for you know, 45 minutes or, or, or whatever it is. And then, you know, you start you, you sipping your liquids, you start filling out pretty fast, but yeah, it's, it's a, it's weird to look at. Well, we hope we get a chance to see you fight again very soon. Can't wait to see you be the champion. I'm going to listen to the Timbo sugar show because I feel like you're an electrifying human being. It just feels that way. Yeah. The Timbo sugar show, you know, we always get, get in a little bit of trouble. We're a little controversial. Say some, uh, say some, say some juicy things, but <laughs> I don't got. I don't got a boss. I mean, Dan is my boss, but other than that, we don't got. I don't have anyone telling me, "Hey, don't say that." So it's kind of. It's nice. Yeah, it's pretty freeing feeling because as long as you don't piss off Dana, as long as you're performing for that, and you're uh, you stream too, right? You're a big gamer. Yeah, yeah. I hadn't I hadn't streamed like the whole fight camp. I, I you know I really dialed in fight camp, and made sure I was recovering in between training sessions. So I'm actually gonna hop on my stream right after this for the first time in a couple weeks, and it's gonna be uh gonna be a lot of fun. What are we playing? What are we playing? Warzone. I've been, I've been addicted. I get addicted to one game at one game at a time. It was Fortnite for like two years. Now it's a uh, now it's Warzone. Hey, go snipe some folks, huh? Let's yeah. go ahead, Sean. Yeah. Okay, let's knock them out. You know what I mean? Let's knock them out. Let's put on a show, yeah. ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the future champion, UFC bantamweight fighter, Sugar Sean Amato. Yeah. We, we, need, we need the shirts the shirts one more time sugarshop.co sugarshop.co yes sir support the business dude dude fuck yeah thank you I look, appreciate hey, you no, I, th- I throw you on randomly in the morning I'm not, i don't really follow football too much but i just throw you on because you're fucking entertaining and i enjoy your guys' show oh thank hey 
hey, I throw the fights on whenever you're on, and I don't really know what's going on, but you're fucking entertaining in there, man. <laughs> I got I to gotta give him a shout out to my little brother because he's the one that showed me you. He's like, dude, you would love this guy. He's a fucking character. Uh, so shout out to my little brother, Daniel. He's shout out. Watching right shout out, Daniel. Uh, shout out. Hey, Ballin, was that the fadeaway? Oh, I had to hit him with the Kobe. Oh, Kobe. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. There, was a, there was a full conversation on whether or not it was Kobe or just Ballin because you just knocked out another human. Uh, Sugarshop.co, we appreciate you, ladies and gentlemen. Sean O'Malley. Yeah. Yeah. Put the fucking belt on that guy. Yeah, immediately. Can we please get him at a press conference? Imagine him sitting in one thing, and then Connor sitting on one side, and then uh, Poirier and Dom or whatever on yeah. the other side. Oh my God. Heels, baby faces, let's just let this be had. Mm -hmm. Oh, that'd be amazing for the UFC. I hope it happens. Yeah, it should. I mean, it should happen. It's It's gotta be freeing, like you said, he's, oh, I don't have a boss. Well, I guess Dana is my boss. Well, you look at your boss and see, that guy doesn't seem to uh, have any issue with free speech, so you can pretty much say what you want. I don't know what you could say to anger Dana. I mean, maybe something financial-wise, but that's it. So I knocked him down my left, and I thought, well, oh, another man. right hand from Sugarland for the merch. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you hope. You hope. Oh, we're going to get it right for that, for sure. No, it was a gif. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It was a gif. We're yeah. allowed to use gifs. Yeah, yeah. Sure. We rolled the dice right there. <laughs> Him going, yeah, you know, I didn't love to do it. You know, take a few years, years off, off that guy's life. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus. Awesome. Did you see my fight against, uh, what? I was like, uh, I don't know. <laughs> I knocked him out and then I dipped. Yeah. And that was when he did this thing, yeah. right? I think he did the uh -huh. whole dance. Oh my God, what a legend. All right, let's go to some phone calls here before we wrap up today. Big shout out to Sugar. Yeah. Sugar Thank Thank you, you, Sugar. That was awesome. Uh, let's go to Noah in California. What's going on, Noah? Howdy, Pat and the boys. Hey, AJ, how y'all doing? Hey, not too shabby. Who's your favorite character in the Bible? In the Bible. Noah, obviously. Okay, yeah. Yeah. all right. <laughs> all right, namesake. What do you want to talk about? Um, First with NCDC being the head coach up there right now and Luke Heakley just being retired for maybe a little over a year at this point, do you think NCDC might try and recruit Luke Heakley into maybe like a defensive corner since he could read an offensive line like the ABCs just that easily? Oh, okay. I get what you're saying, Noah. Yeah, he's, he does have a lot of ex-players coach up there. Is Keekley coaching with Carolina? I, I, yeah, I thought he had some so. sort of scouting role with in, inside the organization. Hey, Keekley retiring came out of nowhere. Oh, absolutely it did. And he was obviously at the like the peak of his career still, I felt like. It was all it's all concussion related, right? Mm -hmm. He was a guy who flipped a switch. He, he oh, was yeah. Oh, yeah. he was awesome. I got a chance to meet him at the Pro Bowl. <clears throat> no big deal. I met him <laughs> and I said, Hey, how you doing? You know, he had glasses on, had like a button down on. Super yeah. nice. How you doing, sir? How you how, how's it going? Luke, don't please don't do that to me ever again. Then as soon as the games go on, he's just poof, and a maniac. Absolute maniac. Smack. Faster, smarter, more athletic than you. Flying around like Erlacher and Paul Amalu had a kid. Mm -hmm. Luke Keekley. Could crush a golf ball, too. Oh, Swat yeah, that's right. Yeah. A golf ball. <laughs> Let's go to Dakota, down here in Georgia. What's going on, Dakota? How you doing, Pat and the boys? How's everybody doing today? Hey, not too shabby, all right? Uh, first, just want to say go dogs. But hey, 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 dogs there. Uh, main question is, with March Madness and everything going on, if you had to build a starting five with your past Colts and WVU teammates, mm. who would you pick? Okay, I appreciate that, Dakota. I'm putting Darius Butler on the team. Mm -hmm. um, Jarrett Brown was quarterback for WVU, also played for WVU basketball. Damn. I'm going to be shooting. Uh, I assume we'll put Peyton in there somewhere just because yeah. – Andrew Luck, I'm not sure how he is as a basketball player. We'll put him in there. Costanzo at the five. Costanzo oh. will play somewhere. <laughs> Six-man Vinny. Austin Colley had a great jumper. Put Austin Colley in there maybe. Yeah, I mean, there's a lot of guys. I, I think we'd be about 25, 30 deep out there. <laughs> Hell yeah. We'd have to rotate too because we'd all get very tired mm -hmm. if we were to be playing pickup right now. Did you ever go – like, okay, pre-COVID, did you ever go to the rec and just jump in, like, pick up games? Yeah, I did. When we did the uh, – when we got locked out, I did a lot of that. Really? I travel around LA Fitnesses to play. I'm happy in some Strong places. Court. They had no idea who I was. 
it was great. I got shook sometimes in there, and I was like, well, I'm going to walk out of here. There was a lot of times I was potentially the only Caucasian in the entire gym or whatever, and I was like, this, this is how we, hey, this is what we came to do. And I would, all right, all right, I'm going to go ahead and hey, Thanks, sub guys. out. Sub out, I'm going to get out of here. There's a couple times I got out there, yeah. I used to do that a little bit. I haven't in a long time. We went and played at the Y. I almost puked. We are playing against these college kids. <laughs> yeah. I almost puked. It's tough to do nowadays. These kids are good. They will get uh, you, too. Well, especially when like, I see people playing full court, too. Like, Can you imagine playing a full court game like on the actual main court? Oh, uh, I did. And uh, in the middle of the game, it was maybe three to one or something like that. <laughs> uh, one person on our team was asked, is this to seven or to 11? And he slapped the floor and said, 11, what are you talking about? And I almost slapped him right in the fucking face. Yeah, and then I slapped the floor again. He said, no, fucking 15. Yeah. We're going to 15, yeah, boys. That's that's team we're by two. So, like, Connor was in a big marathon kick that he was yeah. Running at night, you remember he was running, uh, and he was like, "No, we're gonna play to 15 or whatever." I'm like, "Bro, <laughs> we are done at five almost." <laughs> a lot of all-time defense after that. <laughs> hey, we we almost won that game. Though. Oh yeah. yeah! If we were so tired, we would have won. We should not have won any been anywhere near that game. There oh. was kids that were either going to JUCOs or coming out of JUCOs. Yeah. There was this kid that was like six foot six that was running underneath there. Those are the type of kids that are at the Y all day looking yeah. for pickup games. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they were waiting on us. big perk. <laughs> didn't, didn't even have our <laughs> shoes. <laughs> Let's go to Joe in Green Bay. What's going on, Joe? Hey, Pat, how's it going? Hey, not too shabby. Joe, how are you? Uh, doing all right. I got my second vaccine dose this huh. past week. Hey, I think you can go hang out with the University of North Carolina Tar Heels football team. Yeah, oh, me and Mac will get along. Yeah, I think so. It sounds, yeah, sounds like it. the same thing. That's good news. Congrats, by the way. How do you feel? Um, day after I got it, fever, chills. Oh. Um, it put me on my butt for a day. But one of the things I heard was I got it both shots in my left arm. Oh. I heard if you get one in the left and you get the second one in the right yeah. or oh. vice versa, right, right. that helps. Okay, Joe. Thank you, Joe. It's good to know. Thanks, Joe. Did you hear that Mac Brown said, AJ? If everybody has a vaccine, both of them, you're allowed to do whatever you want. If somebody doesn't, we got to do stuff, uh, other stuff. Can't imagine anybody's not getting a vaccine down there. He, he, he said that to his players? No, I guess that's the rules. They, they, they're living by all these rules. I guess the rules are if everybody on your team has both vaccines, you guys can go about business. Mm -hmm. If some people don't, if half the people don't, they got to continue to wear masks and do their whole thing. It's very, I think that's basically if all yeah. our coaches, we can go back to having meetings. If not, we still got to do what we got to do. Mm -hmm. It feels like there's not going to be a lot of people that are like, no, nope, can't do it. So I think everybody has to get it in college athletics. Yeah, like even if 13 of the 15 coaches have it and two don't, they all still have to wear masks, even though majority obviously is good. There's going to be a lot of, uh, hey, fucking go. Yeah. Okay, I heard you're going to puke for a day, two days. Mm -hmm. But then guess what? We're all allowed to do whatever we want again. Worth it. Fascinating. Did Man, you? That's going to be like college teams have like 100 players on the team too. That's going to be tough. I think they're just going to – it seems like they're available. I don't know. I, don't I know, guess, though, it, being, like, at a college facility, they're going to line them up and all come into the facility and get them, I guess. Is but it are just you going like to get drive through 100 like, players probably, to agree? Yeah. Like a choo-choo train guy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and then turn a corner. <laughs> other arm. Pim, 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 pim. Take it off. Celebrate. We're back. Mm -hmm. We beat COVID. Uh, uh, we beat meeting oh, yeah. until it's over. Oh, yeah. We're back in faces. Uh, uh, in different places. Uh, uh, and see the spaces. Because uh, uh, we got vaccinated. A fauci ouchie, if you will. <laughs> Shout out, Frat in Pittsburgh. What's going on, Braxton in Colorado? What's up, doggy? Hey, just chilling. How you doing? Hey, Pat, AJ, boys. Hope you guys are doing all right. Yeah, hey, we're not doing hey, too shabby. Off. Thanks for asking. How are you? Doing all right. Man, dude, I went to high right. school with Pat White, man. When are you going to get him on the show? Daphne, he's been on the show a couple times. Thanks for listening. What do you want to talk oh, about? I listen every day. I'm sorry. I missed you. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Don't worry about it. And hey man, after your Najee interview and then Derrick mm -hmm. Henry was on another show, they both said that Alabama practice was harder than the game. Do you think any NFL coaches threaten sending their guys down to Alabama for a week if they're playing like shit? Okay. Let's go to Big T in West Coast. Big T, what's going on? Not much. I mean 
Just uh, happy to be on the show. Love you guys. Confused. Hold on, Big T. We got to wrap up something that just happened over there. <laughs> he said that he he was wondering if NFL teams would send their players down to Alabama practice to punish them for a week because mm-hmm. practice is much harder in the games. That's right. Well, I'll tell you what. I respect that Alabama is a seems to be a breeding ground for the NFL and its tough practices. I don't know if the NFL is worried at all about what's going on in Alabama practices. Nope. It's like Urban Meyer getting introduced to the NFL, by the way. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I watched Tom Brady run an offensive meeting room. I came back and told my players, oh, this is what Tom Brady's doing. <laughs> Happens a lot in the NFL. This is, uh, it's men's league. These are the two different mm-hmm. things. Although I do appreciate the fact that Najee Harris said he went to Alabama for the competition. That's the type of guy you want in your NFL team. But this is the men's league. Let's not ever fucking forget it. What do you want to talk about, pal? Big T? Yeah, first off, shout out to all you guys. Love the show. And uh, I just want to share an idea that's been stuck in my head with you guys. This will be good. Uh, the quad box, I got an idea for a quad box for the NFL replay. If they synced up numerous cameras and tied them all in together and give us like four at once, I think it really speed up the replay and also make it more accurate. Too much. Too I much agree. Guys. I agree, Big T. Thank you for that, Big T. Let's hope Roger Goodell heard that. Good yeah. call. I'm not sure what he said. He's basically saying all four angles in a quad box for a replay. They kind of do that, though, right? They yeah, just run it back to yeah, back to back. Yeah. Because if it's in the four quadrants, you're not know zoomed in. Isn't that a big part of a replay is zooming in? Yeah. Also, even if they're all showing all four at once, you got to watch one yeah. at a time. Correct? Your eyes yeah, can't you can't physically handle it. Well, I do believe there's people that are speed readers like AJ, and they can read two different pages at yeah. one time. Oh, yeah. Oh. Maybe those are the people we need doing reviews. 2.2 2 AJ. Show's wrapping up here. Um, hey, we, we, don't, we don't know exactly what they're looking at, though, when they look in their, their little monitor. And maybe it is split up for them. Well, maybe we should change it. <laughs> yeah, Too maybe go to one. Yeah, Shout yeah. out to Big T. Uh, AJ, anything you say to the serious listeners? We've got about 10 seconds here. No, I'm good, man. Uh, Chris Mad Dog. <laughs> Mad Dog on the, <laughs> be on the other side of this six-minute break. His show will be much better than ours. This guy, big personality. Uh-huh. is incredible yeah. what he does. Juice. This has been Monday. We'll be back tomorrow with a big show. Be your friend, tell a friend. <laughs> What were you? What did you? What did you say? You know, that the, the the refs look at a quad box now. That's what you were saying. They do. Now? I, I, we don't know. Like, are we? We don't get to see exactly what they're looking at. They show replays on the network camera, but we don't know exactly what the ref is is checking out with the people in New York. Don't the commentators sometimes say like you're looking at what they we're seeing what they're seeing? Because I think the TV, the NFL relies on the TV people for this. Well, that's yeah, because the the TV people bring the cameras, so that's why sometimes for bigger games you'll have a lot more cameras than. For a normal game that's happened like in the regular season so yeah they they count on the nfl for the angles but we don't know how the nfl is putting them together for the review process and we don't know what the review and it doesn't it doesn't even matter though like a quad you're, you can only look at one thing at a time connor's right yeah but we debunked that theory immediately after he said it speed readers uh-huh. speed readers read two pages one time that's, not, think yeah, about that's right it. yeah think about but it but they're yeah, that's not exactly the same thing. So your idea. left eye and your right eye are just going. <laughs> they do. I don't yeah, know. They split, and then they're just <laughs> both rolling down the rolling down the page. And then yeah. they look at the like how many pages, and they just divide it by two. Yeah, See, that's too much. Oh, look at that fifty-five page book. That's easy. <laughs> that's way too much. Oh wow, <laughs> pretty good book. I wonder if they ever miss like very important parts no no they don't miss a thing are you sure yeah pause. somebody will put out a long tweet and i almost fuck up and miss a part of it you mm-hmm. know what i mean by reading the whole thing i couldn't even imagine reading a page per eye like those speed readers well, especially like missing a paragraph or something yeah because what if it's a pretty <laughs> important error. paragraph yeah well, and they can put the story together just in one too because yeah. what happens on this page affects this page but they at the same time are reading and putting it together that's good they probably play a lot of chess huh because that's a, a big long See, play. They, play, yeah. they play multiple games of chess too probably usually at least three games oh know? i've seen that Beth oh, Harmon played Harman. eight games or whatever. Yeah. Exactly. She won all the all money. Nine, including the one on the roof. Yeah, I forgot about that one. Close Sicilian's real son of a bitch. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Look hey, out. Hey, when you start playing with the pawns and not the ponies, oh. Whoa, it's a whole game. You're screwed. You ever play chess, dude? No, I don't. I do not know how to play. Do you know how to play? Nope. <laughs> You act like you did. Well, I, I watched a documentary about it yeah. one time. It was kind of written as a uh, sitcom or whatever the fuck it was. What is Beth Harmon? <laughs> docu-series? Yeah, drama series. Limited yeah. series, yeah. yeah. They should bring that back, huh? Yes, they did. should make a second one, but... COVID. Unfortunately, I do think that was one and done. Well, you know, at the end, she's playing chess there in that Russian park. With the old dudes? 
she could definitely get beat by somebody that's younger, right? And then that yeah. becomes just the season two. I don't know now if anyone's back. beating Harmon. Yeah, there's another one. Beth Harmon, too. Just think about the NFL, dude. Yeah. You're a piece of gum. Once your flavor runs out, there's another piece of gum coming. Beth Harmon knows there's another phenom coming behind. Yeah, yeah. Lizzie Harmon. Yeah. Uh, it might be my uh, long lost sister. What if yeah. it's a dude? You're yeah. about maybe it's a dude. Oh. Igor Stravinsky or something. Lenny Harmon. Yeah. yeah, like the <laughs> cowboy guy. The super cool guy. Yeah. That was the guy. Of course. Until he wasn't the guy. Mm-hmm. Yeah. He actually lost in his own apartment. Mm-hmm. That's right. Let's go to Randy in Indiana. What's going on, Randy? Hey, not much, Pat. AJ, rest of the fellas, what's up? Hey, just hanging oh, out, Randy. Up, what do you want to talk about? Um, You know, I've heard you talk about Gregson and, you know, guys didn't really get along that well. He was kind of just a dickhead, but <laughs> as good of a punter as you were and Thank you know, you could uh, you could punt the ball like forever. from the end zone, forever. and the dude that you would always put the other team in the worst field position. Forever. Like, you were the best. thank you, Randy. I That's appreciate that. that you a really were, man. man. I don't thank understand you. why you didn't go to another team. Oh, right, because that's interesting. Uh, I did not expect that. <laughs> <laughs> I did not expect that out of Randy. Randy, like, hey, listen, man, you were good. Just get the fuck out of here. You don't like it. Interesting. Um, yeah, I could have. I did. I never wanted uh, to go. To, I liked my network I had built here and what I had going on off the field and the uh, community. I was a big fan of what was going on in Indy. But there was many a times where I thought, like, maybe I go somewhere else. Maybe we see how this whole thing goes. You know, AJ? Well, sometimes I think it's it's hard to put, like, rational thought behind sometimes, like, irrational behavior that some people make. Like, if you're thinking, like, let's say Grigson sees all that you can do, like, why would he – why would he ever not just be happy that you're there and deal with whatever off the field tweets or whatever you do because you produce on the field? That would make like, sense, yeah. But he's pro- like a lot of times there's irrational people in high places. I'm not saying I don't know him personally at all, but I just know that happens all the time. Yeah, I mean, either. we're past it. You know, I, I yeah, I, you I, definitely are. You don't hold anything. No, yeah. I am. I actually am because I mean, I signed you know, a couple contracts since then that have been worth more than what I would have made punting. So ultimately everybody knows I was right the entire time, which is good for me yeah. to kind of have that feeling about that whole thing. There was a couple of times where I was thinking like, you know, I get to decide how the best person at my position acts. Like, I, like you know what I mean? I feel like there's always a thought like, oh, uh, I wish that I was a certain different way. And it was like, that's just not how it goes, but it's kind of, this is who I am or whatever. And we're past it. We've moved along, but the thought of leaving has never really, that was never really something I thought of. There are some people in this office though, on some cold, windy days that have actually said out loud that they wish the fucking dolphins would have drafted you. <laughs> you know, it would have been nice if the fucking dolphins would have drafted you, uh, you know, whenever the sun doesn't come out for four straight months here in Indiana once in a while. Chilly. Well, Joey. Mr. Well, it's been weird though. Don't you think it would have been weird if your whole operation was based in somewhere like Miami? Mm. Well, it'd be sunny. I'd, I'd be very burnt. I mean, I don't know yeah. how I would survived in Miami. A lot of options down there for a young me. <laughs> I don't know if I would have made it. <laughs> Vontae Davis, whenever he got traded to Indiana, was like, "This was big for me." <laughs> hey, dog, this is big. <laughs> Call my grandma. <laughs> hey, dog. <laughs> I fucking love Vontae. But he was like, he needed to get out of Miami. You know, he needed to get to Indiana. It was a big deal for him. Mm -hmm. I I don't know how I would have fared in Miami every day with a potential more money than I've ever had in my entire life. Would have been fun, probably. Yeah, I don't know how how far the balls would have continued to go. (laughs) Let's go to Zach in Pennsylvania. What's going on, Zach? Hey, Pat. I'm flying high on cloud 45, as you would say. Nice. Uh, Shout out to the boys. This guy's smoking dope. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Dope, eh? How are you doing today, Pat? Hey, not too shabby, Zach. Uh, similar environment as you, I think. What do you want to talk about? Well, um, if my math is right, I think this is the tenth time I've been on the show. Oh, Zach, welcome mm-hmm. back. Great wow. to have you. Uh, nice I knew that. Me on again, guys. Yeah. I said, welcome back. Welcome back. Welcome, Zach. Zach. Welcome, Zach. That's what we were thinking. This guy's been on before. Welcome, Zach. Hey, guys. Hey, great to have you back. Uh, Hey, Uh, is Diggs there today? Nah, Diggs is on uh, vacation this week. By the way, I think two weeks. Ah, well, well, I hope he's enjoying it. Uh, I got a bone to pick with him, though. I wish he was there today. 
I realized that. Uh, yeah. Didn't so he? The last, when I was. Some of the last two times I called. We will miss um, things. I mentioned this is that round two. two. <laughs> we would probably reach out with, with, uh, with the Steelers. He deserves to die. That's some bitch works. I just wanted to call and say I told Legit. you so. No, but... Okay. Welcome, Zach, dude. Yeah. Welcome, Welcome, Zach. Welcome, Zach. Well, okay. Good call. <laughs> Good call, Zach. I was trying to. I was hoping you were going to try to find a way to put together what his question was. He was. Uh, he wanted to rub it in Diggs's face. I think that Juju came back because he had potentially, in one of his first nine calls, had talked about that whole thing. And Zach, <laughs> I do appreciate the hell out of that. But as soon as you brought up Diggs, we, it immediately yeah. brought up. <laughs> it immediately yeah. brought up. Diggs is on vacation right now, living his. But I thought to myself, wait, didn't he? Whenever I went, didn't he? He did, right? I thought of that this weekend. Because I sent a question over to Diggs. Does a lot of shit behind the scenes, by the way. I sent a question over to Diggs. He answered that immediately. He was like, wait, he's off this week. And I was like, wait. Yeah, he is. But I thought. He's the best, dude. <laughs> Diggs is going to come back with such a good tan. Oh, yeah. He's going to have, I bet you he has new jewelry when he comes back. He had back. a hell of a spray tan yesterday. I FaceTimed hey, him. He was glowing. You need to whenever you're going down there. Yeah. Because when you're a white, by the way, you don't want to turn instantly red. You know, that, that's kind of what happens. Been there, not fun. Yeah, you look, you look <laughs> like you took a trip to the sun after going down to the Bahamas. <laughs> yeah. We will miss Diggs. Nick also on a trip this week, by the way. Hey, Frank. Wait, does if you get spray tan, does that keep you from getting burnt? No, no, no. It just covers it up a little bit. Huh. Oh, so you'll still get fried. It just won't look, look as bad. And that's the game we're playing. Yeah, yeah. There you go. You never spray tanned? No, I have. I just didn't. I didn't think it protects you from the actual sun. No, it doesn't. Well, nothing does. Yeah, the sun actually undefeated. Yeah, yeah. yeah. A long, long time. Uh -huh. That sun never it's lost. Alaska. It's nowhere near there, though, because the equator's so far away. That's like a super away game. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Plus, some of Alaska, the sun Cause... dominates it for six months out of the year. And then six months Once it's gone, it. though. Yeah. yeah, it's quite a Stalemate. kind of a polar relationship. But with... the sun reflects off the moon, so the moon dominates Alaska, too, for six months. So you could say... That sun... secondhand sun is still showing up. Exactly. Yeah. The B team. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Do they yeah. get moon tans down there? Or up there? You could. I don't oh. think so. No? I think the moon does eat the UVs. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. I think so. Oh, it gets lost in the reflection. Well, that's it's like solar powered. That's right. So the moon is solar powered. Uh -huh. mm -hmm. it, it is the biggest solar powered thing <laughs> in, the, in the universe. What's it powering? Ever. Huh? Alaska. What's it powering? Well, it's powering a lot what of things. You you know? Every place that doesn't have light. The yeah. entire yeah. earth. And also, <laughs> when it hits your eye, oh, yeah. like a big... Pizza, pizza pie, pie. Yeah. that that <laughs> is much that's a moon that's, right. that's a moon not to mention it helps the tides well you know the tides that come and go but the mistakes they'll stick around oh, that's right <laughs> <laughs> this is awesome <laughs> 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 what is happening? Ball! Dude, we just learned. <laughs> we just, we <laughs> just, I mean, we literally just put the dots. The moon is the biggest solar powered thing yeah. ever. 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 By far. No sun, no moon. That's just how it goes. Uh huh. Mm -hmm. You know? I got some solar powered lights outside of the house. They're finally coming back oh, to life. Nice. scared the fuck out of me. <laughs> really? Yeah, I thought there was somebody walking around my yard with a goddamn uh, cell phone oh, flashlight. Mm. I was like, oh, it's solar powered lights. The sun hasn't been here in four months. They're just waking back up like Jesus coming out of the cave. Yeah. We're back. Shout out to them. Solar Shout power. Out. Good timing, man. Easter's right around the corner. So, Easter. Mm -hmm. You, you. Uh... Here we go. Here we go. <laughs> What's up? Does the Easter Bunny come to the Hawk house? The Easter Bunny does. Oh, the Hawks eat the Easter Bunny. Now, does the Easter Bunny leave like a treasure hunt type thing? Uh, we've we've hidden eggs before, yeah, around. Uh, and usually, you know, kids will make a little Easter basket for them with some candy and whatever. Oh, just Reese's Easter eggs? Is that all you do? No. Just I mean, give them a no. thousand You kind of individualize which each kid kind of, what they're doing, what oh, they like. A thousand time. bucks. You That's have a nice. kid that doesn't like the Reese's Easter eggs? Are you worried about him or her? No, I, I think they all... Will enjoy those. They're yeah. like, the, yeah, thank That's you. That's an every That's basket. That's what we're saying. Yeah. That's what yeah. we're saying. But though. different M and M's. Yeah. 
Oh, the peanut M and M's. Oh, different color peeps. I'm out on the pretzel. Really? Oh, you don't like the pretzel M and M's? Give me the peanut. I did try. You forced me to try. Of course, I the did. peanuts are better, but the pretzels are still nothing to mess with. It's pot. a quite delicacy. You're saying it's like a, a quite, quite delicacy? delicacy? <laughs> yeah. Are you talking about an acquired taste? Yes. No, okay, yeah. a quite delicacy <laughs> and a quiet delicacy. All right, let's get to another phone call. <laughs> what are you doing for Easter? I know Sam always makes things special. Sam does make things special. Hey. Yeah, the Easter bunny does come to the house. Ooh, Easter egg hunt? I do believe, yeah. Let's go. I'm doing it back this year, though. What? Yeah, she did one last year. The Easter Bunny did one last year. Yeah. So, you know, it took me a while to find a couple of these things, and I was being mocked and ridiculed. Whoa. So this year, the Easter Bunny's also coming in a different fashion mm -hmm. for the wife to potentially uh, do it as well. Look out. Oh, I have a cool idea. Maybe right. we have a egg that has chips in it. And you gotta go around with your phone and like find them that way. Oh, so it's like Pokemon Go. Yeah, but without the Pokemon Go. Easter hunt. Because we don't want to get sued, right? Yeah. Hmm. Maybe a Charizard will come. Let's go to Todd <laughs> in Arkansas. What's going on, Todd? Patty, Dad of the Year, AJ, boys, what's going on, fellas? Hanging out. How are you, Todd? Hey, doing fantastic here in Arkansas, man. Woo Pig Suey. Woo yeah. Pig Suey! Woo -pig -suey. Woo Yes, sir. We got our hogs in the Elite Eight. Mm. Hey, got to know, are y'all on the must bus? <laughs> the must bus. The what? The must bus. Our coach, Eric Musselman, baby, all aboard the must bus. <laughs> are you on the must bus over there? Were you on the must oh bus? My God. I'm driving the must bus, baby. Yeah. Were Everybody's you on the must bus on. before this, or, or did you guys know you potentially had a good team? Oh, man, we've honestly, last year I, we were going to win. But with COVID, he killed us. And so this year, I might as well just win it this year, you know? Hey, yes. Pat, is yeah. he a... Is he aware? Wasn't uh, wasn't it your coach Musselman who went after uh, some other reporter a little bit ago? Like, how do you feel about that? The must bus ran over a reporter. Whoa! Well, you love to see it. Bayon? You love to get out of the way, or it's coming straight over you. <laughs> Todd, <laughs> what happened with the must bus, AJ? What were you referring to? Of course, by the way, you would know something terrible about somebody that we're speaking no, of. Never would have missed. It's not terrible. I, I'm sure the caller can. It knows a lot more than I do, but I know in like his post game press conference he started off i think by singling out some guys i'm a man bad about him. i'm yeah. 40 like, like that like that i don't know if he was that animated but yeah what does is the caller still there does he know no i i hung up the must bus driver because he had to get back to the road i room. believe it was todd Furman. who todd Furman. he's on the uh that the betting show with clay travis and uncle oh, sal yeah, 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 and, yeah, yeah, you know yeah. uh but yeah he basically said like it whatever game it was like the coaching matchup was a major mismatch and i think muscleman basically was just like yeah this guy didn't know shit from apple butter i like that <laughs> i like that he saw that somebody said this guy isn't a good coach and after the game he was like you know normally we tell our kids to not read the uh the headlines or whatever i heard what you said of Fuck you. I like mm -hmm. yeah. I like that the must bus potentially goes off road in a little bit. Yeah. Uh, yeah. He goes off course a little bit. I like that the must bus is flying around. I found out when they were playing that he's the guy from that meme who goes, Let's go that coach. Oh, while they're oh, running out. While yeah. they're running out. That's him. That's the must bus? <laughs> yeah, that's oh, must oh bus. my god. Woohoo! Pig yeah. Suey. Let's go. <laughs> The must bus, dude. How about Mick Cronin, guy for UCLA, immediately after the game, he goes, I got some guys that are playing much bigger than they actually are. Basically saying, <laughs> these kids stink. I don't know yeah. how they're playing well, as well. It's a true testament to his coaching, you know, that they're yeah. still here and still Ooh. being oh, successful. That's 100%. That that's like a coach saying we didn't execute. Like, oh, game plan was great. We just didn't execute. I like that UCLA point guard, though. I'm a big mm -hmm. fan yeah. of that kid. He, he's... He's got good swag. Oh, Wu Pig Suey's got Baylor on yeah. the rise. Unfortunately oh. for Must Boss, Baylor is an absolute wagon. Oh, <laughs> so you're saying no. the, the wagon will take down the bus potentially. Absolutely. Oh, no. Not as big of a wagon as Gonzaga. Yeah. No hey, way. the wagon they got going on down there playing basketball, they look like they're having a shoot around against these teams. Yeah. They haven't even been tested. It was quite a nap yesterday yeah. Yeah, they're when they were playing. They're on, did you get a chance to watch any of this March napness yesterday? Yeah, I got to see some of it. But does that, does Gonzaga have any NBA players right now that are starting? Yeah. yeah. Yes. How many? Like, two? It seems like that every year they seem to do it, but I don't see, like, do they have these breakout superstars? I think they have two NBA guys on their team. Definitely Suggs, the point guard. Yeah. A thousand yeah. percent. He's a projected high lottery pick. He's high socks guy? Ooh, I thought that was the uh, shooting guard. Maybe. Yeah. High socks guy, I want him on the Pacers. Because he's got the high socks on. Probably. <laughs> Give me the high socks. And then guy. they got Timmy, obviously. Yeah, Timmy's going to. 
Timmy said, everybody said, we're starting to win. Can't shave the Fu Manchu. Mm-hmm. Got to keep it. Hey, when's Indiana going to be back? <laughs> well, they just hired a new coach from the Knicks, and everybody's really pumped about yeah. it. Yeah. Here we go. Mr. Wilson. Mm-hmm. Mike Wilson. Mike, Mike there it Wilson. Is. Yeah. Mike Wilson, New York Knicks assistant. Mike Woodson <laughs> is <laughs> expected to accept the all to become the next head coach of Indiana University. Shout out Coach Woodson. Shout out to Coach Woodson. Shout, Shout, out, Shout, out, Shout out Sean Sharania breaking that news. Coach Woodson, deeply respected by all the players he's ever coached. I saw a lot of photos of people saying congratulations. If it's anything like Coach Howard up there in Michigan, if Woods can turn around the Hoosiers, this state would be much happier because old Archie, Arch Madness down here, was one of a lot of losing. And yeah. uh, they got rid of Tom Crean. And I think this place is ready for a winner. Hopefully, Coach Woodson's the guy to do that, AJ. Well, I think Indiana, like when it comes to college basketball, people probably don't, that are younger than me, don't know, but Indiana was like, it's like a storied institution when it comes to college basketball. The state of Indiana loves basketball because of the IU Hoosiers basketball team. Like it is, you know, Bobby Knight used to throw chairs around down there. That's right. right. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. They used to win basketball games. Uh Mm -hmm. They played like Loyola on defense. Yeah. Oh, really? They slapped the floor. They oh, played. Yeah. Dan Dockage held Michael Jordan to like seven points or something like that. That's right. Wow. Yeah, that's how good that that mm. legit that good Hoosier boy, team. Danny. And since then they kind of lost their way. We need to get back to relevancy. I think I think Woodson maybe does it. You know, I know nothing about the guy. I know former nothing. Indiana great himself. Oh, right. so he's got a little he's coming pride. home. Mm-hmm. So it is like so Juwan is. Howard. He's gonna turn around. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Okay. Futures bet Hoosiers. If I had any money left in my FanDuel account, I'd hammer that thing right now. <laughs> hammer it. The over. Would you? Would you lose on the most this weekend? Well, you know, big wig over points. Okay, so I won on the. Um, the under for Oregon State in the first half, which was 26 and a half. They had three points eight minutes into the game. Felt pretty good about it. And then they kind of got hot at the end. I was like, yeah. whoa, 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 whoa. Hold. 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 So I won pretty big on that. Everybody thought I was really smart. But also in that game, I bet on Loyola to cover and also uh, the over for points for the big wig. And also the player performance over for him to score 20 plus points plus Loyola to win, which was like plus 250. I hammered that very heavy. Yeah. He did not score. They <laughs> lost. They did not. I mean, it was it was a downward spiral from that point on. Then I was like, no worries. I'm going to get back. So I say, Stipe, my dude, here we go. And I go, he's a firefighter. He's yeah, a firefighter. Come on. This guy's going to show. And I wake up the next morning, we're dying, and we're dying and out. And then it just compounded into yesterday. It just continued. So, I mean, it was a few thousands of dollars down, you know, a mm-hmm. few thousands. Yeah. Aren't you going to make uh, just make it back tonight? You know, I, I thought about giving it up betting on these kids. <laughs> really? Absolutely. I have no idea what these kids are doing out there. No idea. No. Thank you, Foxy. No <laughs> idea. I mean, does anybody, though, awesome. look at everybody's bracket? Isn't everybody's bracket terrible? I, there's my brother. Jay McAfee, yeah. He's like top 50 or something like that in our, in our poll. I'm 150th right now, but. Oh, oh okay. Wow. Got him. 56,000. I'm, t- I'm 34,000th, I think. Mm-hmm. That's an I need to check. If I could ever get into it, I want to check. I picked Baylor to win it all. I know that much. I don't know who else I have. It feels like the people that are high up in those things, uh, what did they know? How? Well, it's actually their like fourth or fifth bracket yeah. that they made for it. Yeah. So, you know, they just I'm have that. they're cheating. Well, you know, maybe it's just their random one. That's they just get lucky. You're I mean, you got to get lucky, too. Yeah, like, for instance, West Virginia was my team that was going to make a miraculous run. you got to guess on what team's going to make a miraculous run because mm-hmm. the amount of points you're going to get for that team going is huge. Right. Go. Well, that was Silver Fox. He was at it again last night. The he ref? Had, he absolutely buried Oregon last oh, night. Oh, this son of a bitch. He stinks. He's the worst ref I've ever seen in basketball <laughs> in my life. He's buried two teams now that I love. Can't win with it. Can't win Bullshit. with it. Let's go to Kevin in Texas. Let's keep an eye on when that guy's reffing a game. Yeah. Yeah. Kevin, what's going on, Don? Just, just pick the team that he that's gonna hey, pick the team that he goes for. How do you know? Well, it's hard to know. How the that's hell the do man knows that? one side. I mean you can't say he's the worst rep because the other team, those other two teams love him, probably. I have what we're saying is we don't. Well, yeah, if you, but if you bet on the team that won, you would have loved him. Probably. Yeah, last night it would have been the team he was having the nice meeting with, having a chuckle at center court at halftime. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> see, these are things we need inside information, which we could have, by the way, because it's in Indiana. Mm-hmm. A lot of commitment, though, traveling around to all these places. Oh, yeah. Just watching it at home on TV. What's going on, Kevin? 
Hey, I just want to say, man, I'm a frontline worker. I work in the kitchen industry. I actually lost my job because I got COVID. But y'all's show has been a big part of getting me through COVID, man. I just want to say thank you for everything y'all do. Y'all put out a great show to us hardworking Americans. Like, y'all are too. Well, thank you. broke as fuck. Thank you, Kevin. Oh, yeah. thank, thank you. you Kevin. No, it's my day off. I'm high as fuck. Nice. Playing that... tennis. Oh. Listening to the best radio show. Seems like he just... There it is. Hey, well, we appreciate that, Kevin. Uh, we can't thank you enough, pal. Hopefully the tennis match goes well. Uh, Advidot Kevin, obviously, in uh, the, the love of 30, Oh, 40, nice. Of course. Yep. Of course. Advidot. That's the... Uh, and they get, what oh, they yeah. Get? 10, 15, 55, uh-huh. 60. Love. Advid- uh, love is zero, right? Yep. how they fucking do that? 15, 30, Yeah, how did, how'd they get to that? How did they get to that? Because it was it. some sophisticated person, right, that created that. I assume tennis has always been a high brow, yeah. a little bit of a snotty sport. Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. Do you think they did the scoring to help keep us out of it? Is that why they did that? I don't know. Maybe maybe like the hour, you know, every 15 minutes once you get. To yeah, but then 40, it goes to 40. 45, I thought. No, 15, 30, 40. And then oh. if you both have four, you're a deuce. Advidot. Yeah. And then Advidot happens. <laughs> mm-hmm. The origins Advantage. of this is medieval French. A fucking French. That's right. Yeah. Knew it. Knew it. Shout out to them. They could rip. You should have seen the way they were hitting that fucking tennis ball back in the day. Oh, oh man. yeah. Oh, my God. They were swinging. You good at tennis? I, I assume you're a tennis player. Can't hold the racket. Yeah, what do you mean? <laughs> I, I used to, uh, there was a park not too far from our house, and my brother, we used to go play at, at times. So I haven't played in a long time. I'm decent, probably like ping pong. Mm. Uh, it's going to be hard to get back to real ping pong, by the way, after this virtual reality ping pong. Yeah, seriously. I mean, you're just, you're just literally swinging as hard as you can at these balls, and if they miss and go flying elsewhere, well, just press this button. Here's another ball. <laughs> yeah. Bang, we're back. I don't know. Yeah. Hey, me and Gumpy got into it. Yesterday, oh really? Hey. I was hey, that was the Wimbledon of ping pong. That, <laughs> was, that was a battle for the ages. Gumpy has a new apartment or whatever, mm-hmm. so he had a new guardian. I think that had a little bit more space. Wow. I was playing in an away guardian. It was in my wife's guardian out near the kitchen because uh. that's where we were all hanging out at. I have busted hand on chairs out there. Ooh. I mean, it's not as deep as yeah. a guardian as that whole thing, but I found a nice space. Gumpy was playing yesterday, right? Yeah. Nadal like on this wow. thing. Jeez. Is he up in the power rankings? What's that? Is he up in the power rankings? I'd assume he, if they see how he played yesterday, I'd assume they give him a lot of points. Yeah, we fucking got ass sweating, full sweat. Oh, wow. We're talking getting after it in there yesterday. Best of five. Yeah, I gotta get I after even it. last game I went up for a set and then I fucking melted. Of, I was losing it, screaming at myself. A lot of talking, <laughs> a lot of talking out of gump, by the don't way. Don't melt. Oh, don't really? Do this. really? Don't a, lot melt. Of, a lot of this is the one, too. Like, you know, before that last game, this is the one. You can't feed Pat uh, yeah, that you can't This is the worst one. Mistake. This is the one he was saying. I was like, wait a minute. Is that here. right? Is the, this, be- the best is when you could see somebody turn around and you just get the back of their head oh, in that avatar. And, you know? and their eyeballs. Gumpy does a full Gumpy's a very animated <laughs> Gumpy's a very animated Like when something goes wrong I mean he is full on Come on You know what I mean And then he's like Yeah let's go Let's get back to it It is It's fantastic in there I'm not playing against randoms anymore Because The Which I will open up I think I had to get my game right I, I changed my style Yeah I'm a little bit different player now Because I wanted to beat The higher end Ping pong players on there so I had to get a little bit off the table more mm-hmm. so I could play against high, which takes away from the dominant. Sure. Yeah. The, you know what I mean? So I had to play a little bit different style. I think I'll open it back up. But they need to have an option, a setting where I can just mute. Like, I don't want to hear from you, and I don't want you to hear me either. That's like, crazy. Before I even that. get into the thing. Once you get in there, you can mute the microphone and mute theirs. But I, it's awkward to me if something is said, and then I mute. You know no, what I mean? Go. Just turn the volume down on your thing so you can't hear anything and it's like yeah yeah but a lot of people are on there because of us right. you know what i mean so like yeah. i feel bad but really just make a burner why don't you make a burner oculus account oh fuck you you know what i want to i want to do a full ass fuck can't get it kid yeah gotcha bitch <laughs> yeah but then when they're beating me too i don't want them to know it's me <laughs> yeah you know what i mean like yeah. I, I need not know you know what i mean it's a tough day tough thing mm. they're having tournaments in there though now mm-hmm. come on full tournaments really? sign up and everything i said like, like online Sign up when you play against other people and you just keep advancing? Yeah, I was oh, like, yeah. can I host one of these? Can I put up like a cash prize for this thing? Can we get one of these things? It would be awesome if yeah. we could. We should be able you know to stream you, that too. Yeah, oh, yeah. You, you talk about the tennis scoring. Yeah, it doesn't make any sense, but is it is it any dumber than the soccer 
like clock situation where nobody knows how much time is left in the game. Yeah, you're right. It, it, but that whoa, is part of the whoa. that is part of the subtle beauty Makes of the no beautiful sense. game. Yeah. Zero right, sense. It's the beautiful game, AJ. The ref calculates how much time has been wasted for it to be a fair match. Now, if you want to st uh, start burying, Just stop things, the clock. Stop the clock if someone flops in the lane. On the that high. happens in lower levels, but at the in the prestigious game, in the highest level, you got to have a little bit of respect for the ref deciding what's fair or not. How about if we're gonna start bashing things? that are stupid strike zones dumb hate it Whoa. put the box out there no just that. let the electronic people figure it out <laughs> if it's a if it's a ball or a strike i don't need bozo ump stooge fucking backer with his his glasses getting fogged up calling balls in a world series when it was clearly a strike it's part of the game you gotta let guys paint the corners just yeah. like the refs extending games <laughs> we, got, we got opening day on deck boys well, let's go <laughs> Baseball's happening. Hell Here yeah. we go. Do we lift the ban before baseball? <sighs> no way. Oh. You know, because there is Fuel, a baseball. No Fuel no way. Jet. Nah. You Technically, no if we get way. Jet on, oh, yeah, we he's not an ESPN employee. Huh? If we get Jet on, he's not an ESPN employee. Jet we get, passing? If we get Jeff on, he yeah, is but, an ESPN But everybody employee. will know. No. no. Yeah. We got other baseball guys. We don't need you. Euclid. Yeah. yeah. Sean you. The mayor. He was electric. Oh, yeah. yeah. Pittsburgh guy. Yeah. Like Sosa. Stick to him like bees. Pop out. Pop out. Nice. Great. <laughs> Did you ever have Sammy, Sammy Sosa on here? <laughs> what do you. <laughs> Should call what? Sosa. Should what do you think, AJ? Call. I don't know. Zito mentioned him. I thought he might he'd be a great. I, I would just say it'd be a good idea. He would be a friend. Hey, we love Sam Sosa to be a friend <laughs> yeah. of the show. Popped on. Get him and McGuire on. Oh my God! Imagine me getting BP from Sammy and Mark live. Yeah. Oh. So elbow up, Don up, Don. <laughs> what am I looking for? Wait, creatine did what? Okay, <laughs> here we go. You know what I mean? That'd be a good. Yeah. What was that called? The, when baseball was good, is that what the documentary was called? Uh, the summer Bash Brothers. Slam or like the Boys of Summer. Uh, boys of Summer. Baseball yeah. is entertaining and relevant. Is yeah. that what it was called? Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. What? 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 The summer uh, of Juice. What? 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 This one's called The Scientists Inject Horse Animal Shit into Humans of Summer. Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah, Ozzy Guillen back up. Bro, they, he was on. He, but he, I sent a message. He said, nah. Oh, Ozzy? Fuck you. I think it was his son's number, maybe. Yeah. yeah. Ain't no answer. I already get it. Damn. It'd be cool to hit a home run, wouldn't it? I mean, that'd be a pretty cool thing. That guy, um, that Jet did a story on. He's doing. He's in a camp right now. Oh yeah. He's in a spring training right now. Minnesota. Mm -hmm. Should we lift the ban for Jet? Nah. You make that poll. Tomorrow. All right, let's vote. Let's vote. <laughs> Those okay. in favor of lifting the ban for Jet passing because baseball is around and we know nothing about it. Say aye. Wow, that's wow. tough. And Jack. I love Jet. I love Jet. Big Jet guy. Hey, by the way, AJ didn't say a single thing. Wow. Yeah, yeah. He's out. Yeah. He's out wow. too. Jet. I mean, nothing against Jet, but yeah, I'm I'm with the boys. Yeah. Hey, Jet was awesome for oh, us. Yeah. Yeah. Oh yeah. He's a good guy. It's not Jet's hey. fault. Jet's just just No, it's definitely not. But you know who I like uh took a shot at guessing the stack of papers, uh Rappaport. Oh, Rappaport did? Yeah, I saw him. He he took a shot. He, he threw a number out there with the hat, what the Parma Parma Show Lee or whatever we had. On, this. Parma Fisho. Yeah. I like that people started going after the people that tweeted Parma Fisho. You don't even know how to spell his fucking name. Yeah, no, appreciate it. It's like no, they're actually bigger fans than you are. There. Well, I mean, that's why I like that Ian did it because Ian's with NFL Network. Oh yeah, because Ian's throwing a little. Ha, gotcha. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I like Ian. Has he given us any broken news or anything like that? Uh, Not yet, he, he hasn't. He's Always on there 15 for minutes Dewey. after. Why is he, he teases it? Why, is he why would he? Why would he ever give it to anybody but himself and his Twitter account? Mm, I mean, good call. But at least he could be on the show, tweet it himself, then we'll bring the tweet in. Yeah. We yeah. did you get him mean? when he was receiving news, which was pretty sweet. We did get him some news. Yeah. From what mm. I've been told. Allegedly, my sources have told me that he got his sources because of the show. Yeah. Yeah. Pretty cool. Hmm. I think that deserves at least one news break. Yeah, he'll just start back. I don't follow him on Twitter, though. True. Yeah. He doesn't follow me. Do you make sure that before you follow someone, do you make sure that they follow you? Well, I just want to see, you know. Yeah, I do a full investigation. <laughs> Got to make sure. I'll do a census, too. You know, I'll go back through and see. Huh. Who thought they could just sneak on by? Yeah. Mm, that's huh. interesting. I'll block you, too, by the way. No one will ever come back. Which, another reason, jet passing. Just reinforces shouldn't be on the show. I follow Jet though now. Oh, okay, now. Because there was a time where. Had to. Yeah. 
It's an interesting game we play on here. Now. Oh, yeah, I'm surprised you didn't have old uh, Ariel on here today to talk about the fights. Yeah, right. Friday would have been Hiawani's day. Mm -hmm. yeah. Very interesting. That's why we can't have Jet. Can't do both. Because if we set a standard now, mm -hmm. it's kind of over. Yeah. What do we? St if you stand for nothing, you fall for anything. Exactly. Boom. Amen. Well said. Yep. Bingo. Yep. Who said that? Gandhi. Yes. Yeah. Curtis. Mm -hmm. Curtis? So who? No, that's Brutus. Who? Fifty Brutus. Cent. Curtis said that. Fifty, 50 <laughs> Cent said that. No, I thought it was Brutus from uh, old Roman times. Fifty Cent did say he got hit like I got hit, but he ain't yeah. fucking breathing. Ah. Many men. Many, 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 many men. We might get a strike because we sound so much like. That was actually very good, guys. Yeah, we did good. I'll cry no more. No, Don't no, look to the sky no more. No, have no, mercy no, on me. Many men. Have mercy hey, best, on my... best rap album of all time. Hell yeah. Get rich or die trying. Mm. Bang. Stamp oh, it in there. Hey, who, who do you think will be the first ESPN employee to kind of cross the line and be the first guest back? Well, see, that's not their decision, right? Yeah. Nope. That's, what, that's why I asked you. It's your decision. It was close to silly. You know, I'm playing. Mm -hmm. you Can you explain your, that to me? I don't really understand. Well, that's you when you put that? your horse out and I bring my pawns to the party. Yeah. You know, you know what I mean? I didn't know we were doing that thing, but I guess we're walking in L's now. Mm -hmm. So that's kind of what they got going. Yeah, it's chestnut checkers. Yeah, exactly. Bingo. I don't know. To be honest, I'm a pretty stubborn human, and this might just go forever. You know what I mean? Wait till they retire from ESPN. Yeah, maybe. I mean, Ariel sounded like, I don't know what his contract situation looks like, but you you definitely throw it out at him enough that he's not on ESPN. He's on ESPN Plus, and they never give him enough airtime. He would be so good in that coverage, by the way. Yeah. I watch it, and I'm thinking to myself, like, if we had Heel Wani on this, it would be. I think it'd be good. Yeah. Like, very, very good. Instead, it's everybody he works with. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Poor guy. It's his fault. Yeah, it is. I don't know if it is actually. I have no idea Me about neither. the story. Me neither. But I'm gonna put it on Heel Wani. Yeah, and then Orlovsky too. Very nice. He does a lot of very nice things. Great guy. It's I miss conversations with Orlovsky. Mm -hmm. He has said a few things that we would have enjoyed. Oh yeah. Doing oh reallys too. Is that right, Dave? Oh, is that is that right, Dave? This is what you said. You really mean it. Would have been good, but can't do it. It's too bad. What does he think about uh, the 49ers trading up? Um, he loves Mac Jones right now. I think yeah. he likes Tua. His big thing was about Tua. During that trade, I think his big takeaway was the the Tua thing. Love Zach Wilson. Yeah, he's a big Zach Wilson guy. Mm -hmm. Hey, that throw was filthy. Yeah. I mean, his whole workout, yeah, he, he looks legit. He's got, like, that little hitch athletic move. Like, uh, Pat Mahomes, obviously, people compared it to. I mean, Aaron throws the same. Like, at times, you know how Aaron can throw without his feet being set and oh, just yeah. across his body? He can do all that stuff. Yeah, it's a lot of this move. Mm -hmm. He has a lot of this guy here. Normally, it's the uh, – the really good baseball people that do that, right? That's yeah. kind of like the thing. Cause, snap of the wrist. Yeah, because it's one of those things. Mm -hmm. Russell Wilson also. I mean, he's Ooh, Yankee, man. obviously, you know. Mm -hmm. but, hey, he's potentially not a Seahawk, AJ. Woo. You don't think? <laughs> I, I don't know what to think anymore. I do know that I've stirred the pot enough with the Seahawks <laughs> fans, though. I'm just telling you, that conversation has not stopped. There's a reason it hasn't stopped. Nobody's come out and said anything. That's why. Yeah, that's what I'm saying, though. Yeah, it's like it's it's out there for a reason. If if they wanted to stop it, both sides, Pete or Russell, could stop it. Do a joint Zoom. Let's go to Lucas in Wisconsin. What's going on, Lucas? They should do a joint Zoom. Put a cool background in there, mm -hmm. like space. It does seem Lucas just hung up as soon as we yeah, put him on. on. That kid was on hold for a long time. And then as soon as you picked up, oh fuck. <laughs> Lucas, call back again, pal. We'll talk to you soon. Let's go to Solly Diner in West Virginia. Last call. What's going on, Solly? Uh, not too much. How you guys doing today? My Solly and Fitz Donner are doing a thing. Everything's good, pal. What do you want to talk about? Yeah, I was on Twitter this weekend and saw someone made a graphic about the most oh, famous yeah. people to attend FBS schools. I saw that. And uh, guess who won? Yeah, well, Solly, I appreciate you bringing that up. It's great chatting with you again. They put me on there as most famous alumni from West Virginia. All that started was an onslaught of how I am not. And that was, yeah. I really appreciate them fucking setting me up for disaster in my mentions <laughs> after that. I, I did not put me on there. I do not believe I should be on there. But it was interesting to kind of look at that graphic or whatever. Did you see this floating around the internet, AJ? I, unfortunately, I did not see it. But who else was up for this? 
Well, like, who it, would you be competing against? Um, you know, Jerry fucking West, the logo. Wow. Yeah. He's. I don't think most people don't know that. Like, well, he's a West Virginia guy. By the way, the people that love Jerry West are on Twitter. They came after me very <laughs> strong. I mean, they came after me very. I believe Barney Fife is also. Don West Knotts. I think Barney. So. I think he's West Virginia. I believe Steve Harvey potentially. No. Ooh, he's Mountaineer. I don't know. Really? Kevin Pitsnoggle. Pit Snoggle just showed up in uh, a suggestion tab for somewhere for some, one of the social media apps. Never been more happy in my time. Oh. Never been more. He walked into this one club I was in with a tall T whenever they're going through their run. We did a, ch we, we, he's seven foot tall. Yeah. We did a toast and a cheers. He was a good dude, old Pit Snoggle. He got drafted to Celtics or some team. They told him he's going to play in Europe. And he said, no, I'm not. <laughs> no, I am not, pal. I'm playing right the fuck here. It never worked out, but Pitstone was a legend. Yeah, he, he should have been on there above me. There's a lot of people. Let's not get crazy, but I didn't like the fact that they put me on there because then it immediately became like, but, fuck, but whoa, this, he's hey, a fucking punter. You know, though, if they didn't put you at number one, you would be pissed. No, I would not. That is not true. You wouldn't publicly be pissed and say, no, this should be me, but in your brain, you would hold a grudge against him. Jerry wow. West, good guy. Would not have, would not in a million years at all. Yeah, that, you wouldn't fight if it was Jerry West, but if it was more of a current, person or player i think you may have struggled with it no i think you're wrong i think you're wrong there All depending right. upon I, who it is geno smith that's what i'm saying depends who it is he's one of the best coin toss people in the history of the nfl <laughs> yeah. oh fucking billy mays well Bingo. wow now we're talking see mm -hmm. morgantown got to billy mays a little bit yeah i think so <laughs> <laughs> what's that he sold the shit out of stuff oh, oh yeah. yeah that blue shirt uh-huh mm -hmm. fucking ready for it you know who else the uh, Sham Wild guy? Vince. He could sell. Mm -hmm. yeah. He got his face bitten off by a prostitute or something. Excuse me? Yeah, he did. Yeah. Come on. Great Sham Wild moment. Yeah, yeah. he did it. Mm -hmm. Helped him out, actually. Sham Wild was unbelievable, by the way, when that thing came through. How'd that not get created? How did that get created, actually? Sure. It seemed like it was just like a microfiber cloth that kind of... Yeah. Revolutionized everything. Yeah. Got everything. It was like those swimmers and divers. They have those little towels that they dry off and then they dry again. Mm -hmm. It's like, why the fuck do I have a goddamn big cotton thing that doesn't work at all? And they got these little tiny little things that are just better yeah. than everything. It's good question. Why? And then you watch a, a documentary on how they make those pans nonstick. Uh -huh. The entire states are dying. Because yeah. yeah, what cost? Mm -hmm. you know? It's like the movie Envy, you know, Vaporizer. That's right. There it is. And so in uh, Fuqua, director of training day, went to West Virginia. That's what I'm talking about. Should have won that thing over me. Instead, Who the I got hell is that guy? He's director, director of training day. Have some respect. Day, Let's go Mountaineers. What has he done in the last 20 years? Yeah, fucking does, doesn't Shooter? matter. Shooter? The show or the movie? Movie. The movie. Nice. Equalizer. He's done a couple things. This guy's you got know it. this guy. Oh yeah, Antoine Fuqua. Yeah, for sure. Equalizer with uh, Denzel. Denzel. Oh. Him and Denzel have it. No, no, not, not, not Queen. Queen Latifah's. <laughs> he might be an executive producer on it, though. I don't know. Fifty oh, million the TV viewers. Show? Fifty million. Is that right? Fifty million what viewers. Fifty million what? Viewers. For Queen Latifah's show? Yeah. 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 Is that CBS? Because they promote it. It's on there. I see the commercials all the time. Yeah, yeah. That's, right how, that's how I found out about 50 million viewers, by the mm -hmm. way. Yeah. Came on immediately. I mean, that sounds like that's more than Young Rock. There's no way that's possible. Oh, well, whoa, whoa, they're whoa, kind whoa, of, whoa. it was immediately after the Super Bowl, if you do recall. Yeah. There's no reason to bury Young Rock, though, like that. It's actually getting pretty good. Oh, yeah. Is it? Is that right? Yeah. Last app was a good app. He has, like, a lot of Sugar Sean in him. You know, he wants to yeah. he get out there and rough some people up. Mm -hmm. Huh. Almost had a heart attack in the Oculus yesterday. Gosh. <laughs> what happened? I, 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 I threw in the towel myself in the uh, Oculus. Really? Yeah, I've been trying to lose weight fast. Mm -hmm. You know, it's kind of what I do. I go through these stages and then I try to <clears throat> as quick as possible. So I've been boxing like four or five people every morning. Okay. Yesterday, after what I ate, first day of Mar our Sweet 16, mm -hmm. I tried to get in there. Felt the, felt the chest get tight. Sure. Mm -hmm. Had to actually sit down in between rounds, you know. Got back up for round two. Mm -hmm. Oh, had to tap out. I just yeah. let the guy knock me out, and I fucking laid on the floor. My wife found me almost dead. <laughs> but I got back in there this morning. Don't you worry about it. I fucking swung some haymakers this morning. Yeah, yeah. You know what I mean, That's what it's all about. I need to, I'm, yeah. I see my, it's plugged in in my closet. I need to actually get back in there someday. Well, you have kids and a life and everything like that. Let's get out of here. I got to piss. We'll read that tomorrow. We owe candidates.
Sounds good. It's way too late. Mm-hmm. They're good, though. Can Delicious. It's opening day. Canlift. CBD.com forward slash opening day and enter to win now. Oh, shit. They're giving away a PS5. Yeah. Whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. We should talk about this. No, we'll do it tomorrow. Yeah. All right. It's a big giveaway, though. You go to CanDipCBD.com forward slash opening day. And yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. We'll do it tomorrow. Okay. It's a good tease. Professional tease. I fucking think I want to go take some BP, huh? Oh, oh yeah. Ages? The thought of baseball coming back has made me excited. Maybe I am a lefty. You know Let's I mean? do it. We still got the hockey balls out there. <laughs> Just bash them. Get a couple hacks in. That did prepare me for my professional baseball debut. Yeah. Nobody talks about that enough. No. Because no. it was just a little glimpse in the documentary mm-hmm. of it. Yep. yep. You almost Ty, killed Ty like three times. Ty was fucking throwing his arm out with these yeah. hockey balls. They're taking BP three, four hours a day uh, in here. I want to see the ball. No screen for <laughs> Ty either. Let's see the ball. All right, AJ. We'll see you tomorrow, dude. That's the show. We'll see you, Mignogna. Can't thank you. A big show tomorrow. Huge, Huge show tomorrow. Hey, big, big show tomorrow, AJ. You know that? Yeah, I can't wait. You already, I don't know what I'm going to do. I'm not going to be able to sleep with this can of dips uh, tease you just gave us. Well, why don't you get in the Oculus and I'll fucking ambient you. Oh, Well, we got to mute it first. We don't want to hear each other. True. That's the show.